Barcelona. Jason Mercier, he went with his instincts, he made yeah. the call. There's the professional level, and there's the Ivy League. Double! Sebastian Pauli coming to terms with what he has just achieved. Nicky Curran has done it! Two main event titles! Sebastian Mallets has gone from poker fanboy to poker champion. This is why people love the EDT. Hello once again, welcome to Monaco and the PokerStars European Poker Tour presented by Monte Carlo Casino, where today we have the final table of the biggest buy-in event on the schedule. It's the 100K Super High Roller. Seven players remain, only six will make the money. That's right, we're on the bubble in the Super High Roller. We'll follow this down to its conclusion today. We'll crown a champion, we'll present a trophy, we'll pay out 1.2 million euros, and then we're going to shift to the main event. World famous bubble coverage of that one tomorrow, following it all the way through to the final table on Saturday, May 6th. From tomorrow, we're live at 12.30 local time every day, apart from the FT, which will be live at 1 p.m. CEST. I am James Hartigan, joined by Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And for this Super High Roller final table, we are joined by Sam Grafton. Hi, hey guys. You know, Sam, I don't want to say Monaco's expensive, but they only have one food stamp, and it's the Upside Down Jenny. <laughs> there he is. You get a, that Wiki reference? a Wikipedia joke, if ever I heard one. <laughs> <laughs> So, of course, over the course of today and, of course, over the course of the next five days, we love to hear from you. Questions and comments are welcome. The armchair analysis, eh, not so much. Use the live chat on Twitch, the live chat on YouTube, hashtag PokerStarsTV on Twitter if you haven't abandoned that platform already. Facebook and Instagram, they're still things as well. So, Sam, I know you are excited about this final table. I know you love covering the Super High Roller. And we do have this interesting dynamic. Coming back with seven players, they didn't make it into the money last night. Yeah, and that's an absolute treat for us as viewers. Uh, the, the bubble, such a big event, is uh, a tense moment, an exciting moment, with lots of amazing strategies on display. Going to be really, really exciting to watch these guys make their way into the money and see if someone can push their way into a big chip lead. Yeah, I mean, no big chip leader at the moment. Relatively shallow and three super short stacks, Heath, Savannah, and Mateos. And I guess that handcuffs the action to a certain degree. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you've got a sort of tale of two cities. Heath, yeah. Santosh, and Adrian all battling to survive, eke into the money, whereas Alex, Makita, and Arta, and to a lesser extent, Orpum, will be trying to take advantage of that situation and build their stacks. So there were 37 entries in this 100K, 29 unique players, a prize pool of three and a half million euros, close to 3.6 million. We've established that seventh gets nothing. Then everyone locks up more than a quarter of a million euros. 323 for fifth, 412 for fourth, more than half a million for third, more than 800K for the runner up, and more than a million, seven figure score, 1,238,000, 440 euros for the winner, plus the Super High Roller Trophy. Worth highlighting that Adrian Mateos is the defending champion. He lifted the trophy here in Monaco last year, looking to go back to back. So a reminder, one player will leave with nothing. Then everyone else will lock up sums of money. Um, and I guess, Sam, we do need to see some consolidation. We do need to see some bust outs so that we can kind of open up the play a little bit. Although, generally speaking, these super high rollers do tend to play around a 30 big blind average. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's, you know, you've got guys like Makita and particularly Kulev and Arta, who are very aggressive players. They're going to try and take advantage of this situation. So they are going to be pushing the action right from the word go. It's definitely going to be uh, an exciting uh, final table. Now, this is a player I was not familiar with until he came here to Monte Carlo. Santos Shivana, I know he's been on the Triton circuit, a Dubai-based entrepreneur who mainly plays high-stakes PLO. Um, Orpen kisses a cog loop, super high roller reg, Sam. Yeah, one of my favorite, favorite people. Obviously, someone that's gone from being an amateur and probably a, a, a decent dog in these fields to one of the most elite poker players in the world. Oh God, Someone that executes on final tables as, as good as anyone. So excited to see him. I don't action. want to hear that story. <laughs> Adrian Mateos, he is certainly elite, as is Arta yeah, Martirosian, Mar Arthur online. 
Yeah, of course, who we saw on the PCA final table. Saw a lot of coverage of him and know how dangerous he is. And here's the up-and-comer, uh, the young gun, Alex Kulev, one of the world's top online players, trying to make his mark on the Super High Roller scene. Future of me online. Mikita Bolsikovsky has been at every Super High Roller final table we've covered in, like, the last three years. Barcelona champion. Won the event in Barcelona last year. And looks like we are ready to go. Kicking things <laughs> off at the start of level 19 of this 100k buy-in event. 30,000, 60,000 blinds with a 60k big blind ante. And I'm sure after yesterday's action, everyone delighted to see that the shot clock is on the table. Yes, the shot clock is in play in the super high roller. Ooh, new slim down shot clock too. I love it. Yeah, and this is close spot for Makita. Obviously, he, it, one thing that's interesting is these three big stacks are all in a row. Arta has to open into Alex and Makita, who are big stacks. Alex opening into Makita. So Makita really with a, a favorable table draw here on the final table. Obviously, I don't think there was a redraw from yesterday, but mm. it'd be interesting to see how that dynamic plays out. Makita going to be in a spot to really, really take advantage of this big stack. And Arta and Alex going to have to be a little bit more careful. So a walk for Alex Kulev, the chip leader, on the first hand of this FT. Yeah. And He's already <laughs> bossing the bubble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and just to, you know, not that this final needs any more hype, but, you know, to give a, a sense of how important this bubble is and how the dynamic will play out. See, this min cash, it's very sizable. Two and a half um, X the buy in 251K. To put that into perspective, to make another, the next 251, uh, the only pay jump bigger than 250K is between third and second. So this is the most meaningful pay jump until we get three-handed. Wow. So really real severe ICM on these shorter stacks. And everyone's going to have to tread very, very carefully while putting their tournament life at risk. So hand number two. On top of the hill. She folded to Adrian Mateos. Queen four in the cutoff. Sam, please don't roast me if this is a very obvious question, but let's say you're under the gun. You have 10 big blinds. Do you want a good hand or a bad hand? <laughs> there it is. Um, I mean, actually, uh, on final tables, you make money by folding. You know, you, yeah, want, we right. call you it, want a bad you know, hand. You want a little phrase, a little bit of phraseology? Please. Collision effect. You know, if you fold, there can be a, a collision between a shorter stack and a bigger stack. And that's opportunity to, uh, to uh, move up the ladder. So for these short stacks, definitely incentivized to play on the tighter side. And here we have exactly this um, constellation I was talking about. Yeah. Um, Archipelago. Art, yeah, exactly. Arta with a sizable stack, third in chips, opening into two covering stacks. So the raise is to 140,000. Alex Kulev with Queen 10 of Diamonds in the small blind. And that is a call. Bodjakovsky is in the big blind. Folds, so we're going to go heads up to the first flop of the day. And two of the bigger stacks. Yeah, just two of the world's best going to a flop. And it's King 6 3, top pair for Martirosian. Kulev whiffs. Action has been checked to Martirosian. these final tables with your Mickey Mouse t-shirts. Yeah, and just a, a sort of genuine tank on, on what he wants to do. I think this would be, you know, if we were just playing for chips, that would just be a continuation bet every time. But really incentivized to just play a smaller pot versus a covering stack. Doesn't want to get check raised and be forced into bluff catching mode. Doesn't want to tip off his hand and... Um, you know, then it, there's a board pair face aggression. And Kulev obviously turns an open-ended yes. straight draw here. Th this is a pretty big turn card, actually. Obviously, Marta, um, Marta Rosian improving to top two pair, but Alex with these, you know, quite nutty outs now. Obviously, Broadway, as we see, gonna hit the small blind range very, very hard. Gonna have a lot of Queen Jack, Queen 10, King Queen type holdings, pocket sixes, pocket threes perhaps in there. So Kulev taking the lead. So here's my turn to ask the stupid question, Sam. Is this a raising spot for Martirosian ever to protect? No, it's just, uh, again, you just have to play a little bit more passively, uh, less raises, uh, less aggression. 
when you're covered. And what wow. a river card there. Kulov for... gets the... So why don't you bet the flop again? <laughs> like, <laughs> 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 yes, and, and just, like just this is the power game. of the big stack. Just get to realize equity. And what sizing now will Kulev go? The three clubs will <laughs> slow him down just a tad. Yeah, so see, there's so much he can get called by that is worse. Unblocking all the pairs. 440,000. Yeah. 440 into 660. And we don't see a snap from Arta, but he will be calling. Yeah. Two, top two, too good. Oh, Very unfortunate run out. Not happy. <laughs> and that's going to see Martirosian drop down to 17 big blinds. He's now closer to the short stacks than he is to the big boys. And you talked at the start, Sam, about a potential big chip leader emerging. Kulev now uh, around 50 big blinds. Yeah, and that's what makes these final tables and this bubble spot so exciting. That swing, uh, just two streets of value from Kulev, means massive separation. He now well covers Makita. Arta drops down into the pack. You're going to have to play even tighter, even more cautious. And, and you know, for poker fans, particularly online poker fans, um, you know, to see Alex Kulev, someone, you know, a young talent in the game now with the chip lead, it'll be really exciting to see how he puts these chips to work. Yeah, you referenced that Artem Martirosian was at the final table of the PCA main event. Alex Kulev also cashed that event, 37th place. Right. Yeah, and what, what a river card as well. I mean, it, let's say it comes an eight. Uh, Alex going to be there with Queen High, pretty incentivized to bluff. Would have been a swing in potentially in Arta's direction. And instead, the nine, the off suit nine coming off. And Kulev with nearly 3 million chips now, 50 big blinds. Ace eight for Martirosian in the cutoff. Yeah, and Ace, of course, very powerful card, particularly at finals. And yes, you see this now because of he's because he's opening into Kulev and Makita, just relinquishing uh, Ace Eight, which of course for chips would be an open. And we could dwell a minute on Alex here. Um, you know, obviously someone who has outstanding online results, and you know a lot of gamble, a lot of heart stepped up and started playing in these really, really tough tournaments. And a delicate situation now for Makita in the small blind. 30-odd big blinds. Deciding how he wants to proceed. Will be V-pipping this hand versus a button open. Is it a three bet? Is it a shove? Is it a call? And goes for the call. Again something you know you wouldn't do were this in the early stages of the tournament <coughs> meaning it's going to be a three bet a lot of the time yes exactly yes. just beats a button opening range you can just three bet Ooh. wow call the police nine 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 nine, nine. nine, nine. <laughs> Ace high still ahead. Action is on Bodzikowski. A lot of debate, yeah. Sam, going on in both chats on Twitch and on YouTube about the pros and cons of the shot clock. Mort 730 observing that 30 seconds isn't a lot of time to make these high-end decisions. Yeah, I mean, this is this is one of the very challenging things about playing super high rollers. You're playing a huge bubble um, against elite poker players and under a shot clock, and now you're on television. I mean, just remarkable. And Kulev putting out a little bit of money. Very small bet. Has probably more nines. Has a lot more junk and a lot more air. Obviously has the, the stronger hands as well. And keeping his options open and his range wide and I mean I, I, I hope for for people at home this is a treat this is just very exciting to see <laughs> you know one of the established greats and someone who's trying to make his name go head to head and a brick four See, Alex is going to have a lot worse hands than this to start emptying the clip with. He had sort of 
a 5-6, trying to fold out an ace-5 or an ace-8 or some such hand. King-Jack, not ideal to be bluffing with, but yeah, Alex just covering. 225? Yeah, he just, he don't care. Wowee. And now just imagine yourself in Makita's <laughs> spot here. No thanks. Ace-Jack, you just know, is going to be the best hand very often here. But what are you going to do on a whole host of rivers? Are you just drawing dead to a nine? Are your outs live? What are you going to do on a brick? What sorts of hands does Bajikowski think Kulev has that are beating him right now? Yeah, I mean, or is it I sixes mean, and sevens continue to play well, this he, way? He, he could have king four, you know. Uh, he obviously opens. Huh. <laughs> and king four, no good. <laughs> We're not going to see anything real weird here, are we? I mean, Makita could put out one big blind. Yeah. On occasion. Not that weird. I don't think he will. In general, it's Kulev who's who's polarized in the spot and he's condensed. Oh, I heard something. I heard a number. 90,000, I believe. Yeah, the leads the 10%. And now Kulev has to decide, I mean, how he wants to go. Does he want to just call and chop this up? Or does he want to pressurize? Oh, fault. There was another option. I assume you were getting to that. Oh, I assume wow. you were getting. Wow. And, and, you know, I'm someone that really doesn't like to predict the action, but I'm a little bit surprised at that from Kulo. I'm disappointed because I love it when Sam is forced to sing the chop pot song. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and Makita actually finding a way to win that hand outright so what's he putting them on there a, a pair higher than fours obviously there could be could be sixes sevens yeah, um, occasionally a, a, an ace nine uh, who who uh, who knows but i think for 10 percent i'm a i'm i'm a little bit surprised it was 10 percent bet right yeah yeah very interesting was it nine million instead of nine ninety <laughs> thousand yes, nine hundred thousand maybe uh, and so Makita pulling level with Kulev, yeah. very significant pot yet again. Um, and these two, that isn't the last confrontation we're gonna see between those two. That I do, as a man that doesn't like to predict the action, that I do guarantee. Well, Kulev back in action, opening from the cutoff with pocket sevens, makes it 120K. Bontiakovsky is on the button. Yeah, and I don't wanna be like, poor me, you've got the chip lead, but I, I've been in this spot on, on a very few occasions, but but certainly a lot of occasions online. And actually, it's very demanding. You're forced mm. to V-pip more than anyone else. You've got the potential to play each and every hand. We'll see in a moment what Makita has. The suited ace, um, again, going for the flat. Not incentivized to three bet very often. His value range for three bet calling, very restricted. And therefore, going to play a lot more flats and less three bet bluffs. You have to play a lot of hands as the chip leader, and yes. you're not allowed to look that stressed out about it. Yeah, and Savana, who has eight bigs behind, king, queen. Yeah, and Santos is going to be the least experienced tournament player here, and it's a very difficult spot. May elect to jam here. King, queen, obviously just two powerful Broadway cards. Anything could happen here with... Savan obviously don't have a strong sense of how he's going to approach a big final table like this. Certainly someone that plays a lot of cards, four cards, five cards, uh, tournaments, cash games, but not, yes, and does shove. So here's the question. Can Kulev call this with Bodjakovsky still to act behind? Yeah, I think if this was heads up, Kulev would certainly call. Again, he's going to have played with uh, Santosh yesterday. It depends how Savannah was approaching things there. And then right. He's going to have a, a sense of how seriously uh, Savannah is taking this bubble. Oh. He calls. Oh. does call. And Bojikovsky yeah. will fold the A6. So we're off to the races. Yeah, and Adrian, yeah. Ben, 
Um, Arta all going to be hoping that <laughs> sevens hold here and Including eliminate Kings, right? Santosh. As our only out-and-out -out amateur, I would love to see Sivana survive and double up. Good luck. Like basic versus mid. One of these two if things has a slight mid, mathematical advantage. Today's a new life. Huh? Yeah, Alex all <laughs> smiles and jokes as the chip leader. Santosh a little bit more nervous. A flop. It's queen high, it's top pair for Sivana, set for the double up, unless it is always coming seven. <laughs> and look at this, I mean, it's, you can see how meaningful it is to Santosh. No seven on the turn. Sivana just has to fade two cards on the river. Let's see a, a board pair here for the amateur. No seven, it does Come pair on. the board, <laughs> and Savannah gets the double up. <laughs> and a smile Eight and left. laugh of yes. relief. <laughs> so Savannah, no longer in the danger zone, now hovering around 23 <laughs> big blinds. <laughs> that means we now have two short stacks, Mateos and Heath. It also means, with Kulev losing that all-in, Sam, that Mikita Bozikovsky's just taken the chip lead. Yeah, I mean, these final tables and, and bubble spots, so oh, dynamic you as you're winning all-ins. All and yeah, bubble still on. Still not in the money. Six places paid, seven players remaining. Pressure on Ben Heath and Adrian Mateos. Yeah, and, and one thing I'd say as well, you can see that from Santosh's reaction, the, the laugh and, and, and the joke. Just a really, really nice guy. Um, and we actually became a little bit friendly. We, we got it all in with Ace Queen and Ace Queen and, and both outdrew Kings <coughs> together. Had a little <laughs> high five and a, a, a hug in, in quite a big tournament. And he's someone that plays poker, plays cards a, a lot and always, as far as I've seen, with a smile on his face. So very easy, you know, despite the fact that, actually I probably know everyone on the table a little bit better than him. Very easy person to root for. And, and you know, incredibly plucky to, to pull up uh, I think actually multiple 100Ks, uh, maybe three bullets uh, to, to be here and in the mix. Would love to see, uh, a, you know, a sort of improbable story of, uh, of uh, Savannah making it deep in this, even deeper in this tournament. Otikovsky, king 10 of clubs. Action's been folded to him in the cutoff. Yeah, Nikita, he's dialed in. Um, See, knows that he's going to open, but just making a, a ready ass assessment of the stacks and covering Santosh and open just shoves ability to fold out superior hands. And I think for most of the table, the fives would be a fold here. Yeah, but Sant I sucked in air because for him, who knows? Yes, exactly. I mean, Santos might just want to play for the win, um, you know could be against an ace three suited. He could be against pocket fours. He is flipping very, very often. And, and this, this is a genuine decision for Santos. You can see this. This isn't Hollywood or, yeah, he lays it down. And I do believe that that, you know, by the book, yeah. as it were, is the correct decision. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it made me nervous. <laughs> Even if I have a good one, I don't want to put it against you. Okay, fine, same for <laughs> Too many lives you have. <laughs> I wish I could tell, tell Santosh not to, not to tell him. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I wish I could put my arm around him and just say, bro, don't. no need to give Nikita Badjukowski more information about how you're playing. Really no need. <laughs> so worth highlighting that uh, Santosh Sivana, who's now third in chips, is playing this as a 300k buy-in event because he is on his third bullet. So. Actually, not only does he need to survive the bubble, he needs to cash fifth or better to show a profit. Sure, I think he'll, he, he'll be... Don't worry, responsible gaming. Of, he's got a good credit line, don't worry. Yeah. He's, 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 he can afford it. And uh, Makita, again, considering whether to just open the bear blocker, how much will Adrian be defending? A lot of these stacks are going to just play shove or fold versus him. And deciding, this is why he balances uh, when he's got the easier decisions and will open the queen seven. And this is this is just chip leader stuff. You're not going to get flatted very, very often. Um, Adrian really the only person that's playing uh, a calling range from the big blind. 
he will get good pot odds. Mm. And he will be able to realize his equity well, but King five off may not make the cut. A lot of money out there, right? Where it's BB 60K, 270K in the pot. And Nikita getting it through. <coughs> Adrian, a severe short stack. Yeah, down to seven big blinds. It's the seventh hand. He's got seven big blinds. It's always coming seven. Are you saying it's always coming seventh place? Oh, wow. This could be it. The ultimate sevens meme. Fish 2000, what is he, 2013? Fish yes. 2013 in boss mode. Obviously, as we said about the fact no one's flatting, you'd really rather have actually the queen seven off in some ways. Just a blocker to the to the queens, to the ace queen, to the king queen suited, etc. But we'll open the 5 4 suited. Um, actually, with Arta in the big blind, going to be defended against a little bit more than. Against other people. Well, I don't know actually. Maybe Arta will fold more as a bit mid stack. And again, Santosh with a hand that might ordinarily be a reshove on a wide opening range. Don't think we want to have pocket. He's just gonna he's just gonna <laughs> let's go. Let's go, let's go a little set mine, Santosh. Wow eh. Let's have a little set mine. Let's, let's have a little deuce of club. It's deuce. not often I can relate to a super high roller, but I can relate to That's this. Fine. He's just he's ready to play. He's folded the fives. Come on. Deuce of, two, three, ten. Oof. Two strawberries on the flop. Flush draw for Budzikovsky. I mean, look, the set's clean at least. Yeah, and <laughs> Santos just has way, way the stronger range here than Makita. Uh, no, Nikita can't necessarily think that twos is in his range. But as you said, those two strawberries, very, very appealing. Could maybe, let's suppose we were to bet now, we could force out a king jack of clubs, a, uh, a, a king, a king queen of diamonds type holding. And we have backing into the wheel, backing into the flush, fold out pocket sixes right now. And we put out a little, you know, just a 20% bet to kind of, perhaps make a few combos indifferent. And again, Santos could, could do anything. Could call, could raise, he could fold. It's just very nice to have a wild card in the mix. Deuces well, does on. not lose. Oh my goodness. It's just, wow. Oh. I mean, by the way, a two would bring a wheel drop. Go on, put two of clubs. Instead, it's the four of it's spades. It's just a sick out draw. Yeah, so Bodzikowski hits one of his outs and now has a 95% advantage. Yeah, I mean... And, and, and this also means he can... If he were to face a bet, he could check call, but he might just start ramping up the pressure now. Obviously, the thing you're really scared of, of as Makita is eights and nines, right? Sort of unbluffable holdings. I think checks and Santosh gonna have to put a lot of money out there to get the job done here wow this is how do you this is how do you poker. find this is like showdown at the OK Corral right yeah <laughs> I mean Santosh with 19 bigs yeah I mean it's the size of bet it was gonna take there just two pair. Everything's funner. Yeah. Not that he needed to go run around. It's yeah, still fun, though. And this is really nice for Makita. Obviously, we can see Savannah with the pocket twos, but outdrawing ace jack, ace ten, ace queen off, if Santos were to have checked those back. Really, really nice, deceptive holding to go for value with. And he goes big. Bet 
We don't need another hero. Yes, and obviously we know that Makita opened Queen Seven off the hand before. Now, you know Santos is not necessarily gonna gonna know that, but th there's plenty of bluffs that Makita could have, and Santos just laying down the deuces. Much better to have any piece of the board, of course, than twos, which sort of blocks bluffs. So I. I've noted several viewers have observed the lack of time bank cards on the final table. And that is because, as we've just discovered, time bank cards have been replaced by time bank chips. Those white chips that you see there next to Mikita Bozikovsky's stack, which are slightly bigger than standard poker chips. That's what they're using now to monitor how many time banks players have. Yeah, just waiting for a, a Sam Soverall incident to occur with one of these <laughs> giant chips. But yes, um, actually, I, I found that I used them uh, for the for the mystery bounty and it seemed to work really well. Actually, it, they they are they are a, a, di a significantly different size. You can't, perhaps can't tell from here, but you know. People now I know to look out for them. It's fine, but the problem we always had was when you have a time bank chip. You can't tell if someone's betting or buying more time. And the problem we always had with the time bank cards <laughs> yeah. is it looked like people were folding. So you can't win. Yes, that's true, yes. I mean, actually, someone slammed in the whole stack, and that was Ant Marta Rosian. Oh, boy. With ace, queen, off. Against a very wide opening range. Perhaps with the offsuit hand. We just want to far. That's a stack. The money in. Right, 530,000 stack. Yeah, and Bajikowski mm -hmm. with a decision. He, you know, you've got to remember, Makita, Arta knows that Makita's opening exceptionally wide in the spot. You know, he's just opened queen seven off, five four high. So seven's mm -hmm. much, much higher in his range than, you know, an ordinary UTG seven opening range, right? Um, but Arta also not incentivized to put his life at risk lightly. And for that reason, Makita forced to fold the sevens. Also, perhaps doesn't want to you know, relinquish this chip lead, which has sort of future game implications. 2.7 million, covering everyone comfortably, shove opportunities, just wants to, to, to maintain this big stack, doesn't need to uh, risk doubling up uh, a strong <coughs> player and switching positions with them. Carlos says, time for the time bank triangles. No, 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 because then we get confused with the player being all in. I've got a suggestion. Uh, this is a great one. Uh, I think it's both Soda Cream and Puzzle Dan have suggested balls. Time bank balls. That's kind of similar to what I was going to say, which is uh, time bank salami. <laughs> and that way, if you don't want to use them, you can eat them. <laughs> Open just staying out the way. Yes, and Mateos, shortest stack. Well under 10 big blinds. Ace nine off, three players to go through. 150k in the middle could be go time. Buenos the dias, <laughs> Adrian. Yeah. 350. He's got a lot of time banks. And we'll get it through unless Makita wakes up with something. Yeah, and. Um, <laughs> someone uh, snap six, asking the short stack. Adrian just pushing himself ahead of the great Ben Heen. Uh, ben on eight big blinds, and of course the big blind ante when it comes around is very significant. Forced to put two big blinds, so in Ben's case, that's a quarter of his stack into the middle blind. Uh, you know, very significant dent in Ben Heen's stack. Time bank balloons, and when you use them, they, they're popped by the dealer, so you know oh, your 30 seconds is up because you hear good. a loud bang. I like that. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we like that for that so Or you could do it yourself and you, and you go, time, please. <laughs> no, you can't put helium in the balloons. It'll be floating on the ceiling. No, you, you have them attached to you. Yeah, and McKee are going to have pretty much any two shove spot here against Ben Heath. Queen high going to be more than good enough. 
love to see Ben wake up with a big hand here. Obviously, someone I'm very close with uh, doesn't have a snap fold, it seems. Mm. Wow, and he's in very good shape if he can make this call. Right on the cusp for Ben Heath. It's a genuine, not incentivized to waste any time here. This seems very, very close. Perhaps Queen 10 of Diamonds, he would be calling. Queen 10 off. Ten. A King 10, an Ace mm. 10, he would call. And lets it go and can't know. You know, one of, one of the problems there is you're against any two cards. So you're just not dot. It's not like, oh, I'm dominating this part of his range. He's going to shove 10, 9, 10. No, he's shoving four, five off, which is actually sort of bad for you in this instance. Uh, very, very close spot, though, I guess. And Ben folding and will stay afloat with seven big blinds, preferring to just be in a spot where maybe he gets to open shove. Yeah, still on the bubble in this super high roller. Mateos playing 10 bigs, Ben Heath playing seven bigs. Still half an hour to go until the blinds go up. And yeah, we're workshopping this, everyone. Visor says, have the time bank balloons attached to the back of your seat. Yes. Your opponents can clearly see all time banks left, and then you basically just cut one off as it's used, and it floats up to the ceiling. I mean, taking the final table of a 100K buy-in event with a 1.2 million euro first prize and turning it into a circus game, who wouldn't be for that? I, I mean, I, I, for the record, I would be for that. I don't know if I need to make that clear. Yeah, and Makita, wow, really nice hand to pick up as the big stack on the button. Wow. This, this could be shove, this could be flat, this could be three bet. Uh, Makita will know this spot well. It's very annoying to be flatted by a big stack. I think it could be just go time. <sighs> there he goes. Putting those chips to work. <coughs> Just a powerful, powerful nice. position to be in as the chip leader. And, 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 you know, it's nice to pick up hands like this, um, you know, a little bit easier with the suited ace, but, you know, just f fearsome person to have the chip lead. Uh, 50 big blinds. Big, you know, obviously we, we started very bunched together, or pretty yeah. bunched together. Nikita with that big separation over Kulev. Two and a half X, the third in chips uh, as well. That ace jack hand, very, very significant as it turns out. Uh, and Ben Heath right down the bottom with seven big blinds. Uh, forcing Santosh and Adrian to stay in line. Another thing for, for Ben, is that, you know, if perhaps Santosh is going to make inverted commas a mistake, mm. you know, a, a by the book mistake. There's one player and, here that hasn't studied every single spot. Yes, it, it might incentivize you to just pass up on close spots. Adrian with eights under the gun. Snowman's Ocho Ocho. This isn't a fun hand to raise. No blockers to raise. Four twenty five to call off and so for that reason we'll just open shove doesn't want to get put to the test by an ace three uh, suited uh, in a spot where you know he's calling off and going to bust 30 percent of the time okie dokie yeah and again bad news for ben heath adrian separating himself a little bit further obviously he'll now put those a couple of the big blinds he well essentially he, the majority of the chips he won one 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 uh going back into the middle but uh staying afloat and keeping that distance from ben heath oh boy honestly this is more like rich people throwing around money than professional poker huh. well i mean of course you banned. Sorry, go on, Sam. <laughs> well, n not only is it big, big money up top for, you know, certainly for all the professional poker players, very significant. But, uh, you know, I, I actually, if I can get, 
seems like I'm just getting in a brag, but you know, I played Sam Greenwood heads up earlier in the week. And let me tell you, you can it wasn't a big tournament necessarily for Sam. You could feel the competitive spirit, you know, uh, energy uh, fr from that man. All of these guys would love, love to win uh, EPT High Roller yes. tournament. Be very, very significant. You know, Ben, Orpen don't have EPT High Roller, you know, 100K titles anyway. And ben he... has a decision here because Bodzikovsky is bet enough to put the rest of the table all in. And Ben Heath has got pocket tens. Yeah, and this is a big moment for Ben Heath. Uh, gonna, See at the river. Yeah, going to have a big portion of Makita's range completely dominated. Uh, and for that reason, I think Ben will be putting it in here. Just going to be an occasional 10-9 suited. And a lot of these spots with just one overcard. And we'll call all in. And here we go. This could be the moment that the bubble bursts if we see some nastiness. But right now, Ben Heath gets it in as the favorite. 251K or zero for the next player eliminated. Like 500 or like? Smirk starting to appear now that the decision part's Not over. Yeah. You do, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, and these guys have been in this spot before. They they realize, <laughs> look at this, Ben have knows a couple how extra lives in here, so. <laughs> ben knows how much mo money it is, and Makita recognizing it's more significant for Ben than for him. King 4-4, four, four. so far so good for the tens. Ben Heath now an 86% favorite to double up. Bodzikovsky looking for an ace. No diamond, no straight draw, the bare ace. So Barry Greenstein required to send Ben Heath to the rail with zero euros. Call for a diamond. It's a 10. It's a full house for Heath. He doubles up. And that's going to see Ben Heath up to 17 big blinds, leaving Adrian Mateos as the very clear single short stack. Ben Heath now fourth in chips. Bodjakovsky's still chip leader, but down to 42 bigs. Yeah, and, and look what a big swing that is. Ben pull, goes to fourth in chips, only one big blind less than Orpen. I mean, it's very, very significant pot for everyone at the table. Arta plunged to down to right. second bottom. Yeah, here we can see it. Um, Arta with a million. Uh, okay, Santosh right with a million. And Mateus, the significant short step. Sam, obviously, uh, there's a, a ton of skill. Mm -hmm. right at this stage of the tournament knowing how to play this stage knowing what to do pre-flop all of that but fewer decisions it seems like than at other points in the tournament where you're focusing not just on pre-flop but on the flop on the turn on the river right there's there's it's a bit of a shorter game now yes it, uh, just more of the decisions on the final like this particularly on a bubble are pre-flop decisions yeah right and so you know because for instance Alex picking up pocket queens under the gun. You're just incentivized to V-pip a lot less. So yeah. you're, you're just entering the pot way, way less. But obviously they, these pre-flop decisions, you know, another way of looking at it is everything that you do day to day, the normal opening ranges go, go, out, go out the window and you've got a bespoke, you've got to, you know, you've got to, you've got to constantly adjust to your stack size and the stack sizes around you. So it's very dynamic. And Santosh, we've seen him get attached to the pocket twos. He should recognize the under the gun open going to be that bit stronger. But Alex, you know, he's, he's not a tight player by any stretch of the imagination. This could be real trouble, yeah. He's announced call. All right, so that's mine with deuces. Yeah, I mean, we just got to hope for Santoshi's sake. It's not a low, low flop. Unless it's a low one with a seven. Little, again, little unorthodox. Don't think anyone else would be playing this hand in this manner. So Kulev's. That's a pretty good board for the Queens. Over pair to the board, open-ended straight draw, nine to one favorite. Yes, and obviously that gut shot to the straight gonna be no good for no. Santosh. You don't love making that gut shot anyway, do you? <laughs> no, okay. well, I don't, right. but you know. A person, yeah. sorry. Yeah. And 400,000. Just goes for pot. Hoping that Santosh has got an ace jack 
a King Jack, which he doesn't feel he can release. Always going to have equity, going to have, you know, 10 outs if, if he's against pocket nines. And just wanting to play for stacks on this board right now. And Savannah doesn't immediately release. Little surprised by this sizing, but will get out the way. So Kulev chips up there to just over 2 million. Wojciechowski is still chip leader. Santos Sivana second from the bottom. Well, we saw Ben Heath double up a short while ago. We spoke to him before the start of play about the bubble dynamic at this final table. Coming back today, still with seven players. I think I've been to Monte Carlo maybe, I want to say six or seven times. It's hard to know. Pretty much every time. I've come every year and there was like a break for COVID. Uh, yeah, I always love it here. Yeah, play was good yesterday. Uh, I lost a big one to Alex near the end, but I played with him a lot recently. Uh, yeah, played with him in Prague in the 25k. Feel good going into this. Uh, it's been a good tournament so far. A little, uh, you know, usually when you come into these final days, it's already in the money, so it's a little different today being on the bubble. But uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Pretty weird he uh, talked about coming to Monte Carlo so many times. Didn't mention my mom. Took my mom to Ez last year. It didn't make your highlight reel, Ben? Big time. Big time, Ben Heath. I forgot we had your mum on the rail of the main event last year. That was Sleeping a highlight on the rail. for me. <laughs> I'm not going to do a railing your mum joke. So. Yeah, I think you've, I think you've I thread the needle perfectly I wouldn't do that. It's a classy show, guys. It's a classy you, show. Th there's no need for that. Yeah, I think you thread the needle perfectly there. Um, yeah, and Kulev. A little unsure to make what to make of Savannah's range. Covering stack feels like perhaps he's the stronger, well, he feels like he's the stronger player for sure. Uh, will go to a flop. I love having a player at the table, by the way, that doesn't, that just doesn't believe they're in ICM jail. It's just like, ah, I'm good. No, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna walk around freely. Unfortunately for Savannah, he is the victim of domination rotation as Kulev pairs his jack and checks this flop. Sivana Seabats for 80k. Yeah, and the Eight of Hearts is, is, is nice here as well. Might go into That's the stack of 20, right? Yeah. 500. Yeah. Into the check call range. But the SBR is low. Might want to just put it in now. Fold out over cards. Fold out any difficult decisions. We shall see. And just elects to call. Can always lead on a board pair or a low card, perhaps. Well, it's the six of diamonds pairing the board. Kulev now a 95% favorite. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Santos going to know that is a very bad card for him. Just uh, doesn't open that much 6x. Kulev condensed around the board. And, yeah, you, look at, you, can, you can almost see it a little in Santos's face. 150. I think this is something of a standard play. You can protect the jack. And obviously, when you have the actual six, you can build the pot to make sure you're all in. Yeah, and you know, Savannah, very frustrating. Hopefully, his ego won't come into play here. Ego in poker, <laughs> ego broke. See, Kulev can have a six here. Throws out a time chip, trying to figure, can he find a way to win this hand? Is he just against a 7-8, seven, 7-9, seven, 3-4? See, you just, you know, you could have the best hand here. That that's just definitely is the case. This is still going to take some getting used to, by the way. It's taken me at least three to four years to identify time bank cards from playing cards. Now I have to get used to identifying time bank chips from actual gaming chips. Yeah, and this is kind of unfortunate here for Santos. Obviously, he's he's played the he's played the sevens and lost. He's played the twos and lost. He's played the ace eight suited. You know, he's 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 running a little bit bad in a way. Um, he's trying to stay in the mix, trying to see flops, and kind of you know, obviously we know he hasn't really been outplayed 
in any of these. Everyone has had a better hand than him. Had pocket queens, had two pair, had top pair. But little, you know. Might it's hard be... not to think you're being outplayed, though. Yes, yes. It seems like everything's going against you. So I guess the question I was leading to before, by the way, Sam, when I said, you know, it's a little bit more of a pre-flop It's game definitely at the a pre-flop game, yeah. So are you meant to prove yourself on the other streets earlier in the tournament? And is this, and it's like you only get to this stage because you are so yeah, skilled I mean, at I, playing turns and rivers? I mean, the reason everyone, we love tournament poker is, you know, you, and the reason it's so hard to compete in these fields is you start day 1A, 200 big blinds deep, and you've got to compete with the best cash game players some of in the world, some of whom play these tournaments. Yeah. 150 big blinds deep, 200 big blinds deep. And then you have to play five big blinds really well, six big blinds. You have to decide whether to call off queen 10 off against any two cards with seven big blinds. These are very, very difficult decisions as well. So, you know, this is just, it's, it's, it's dynamic across the days and it's you know it's dynamic as as ben he doubles up and you go from being second bottom to bottom stack what what does that not right. mean it's dynamic when you have a wild card on your left it's dynamic when you're opening it but your there are parts trips. of this tournament where if you're not good on all the oh, streets that you're not going to make it to this point oh no, of course right. absolutely absolutely so kulov completes in the small bodzikovsky with the option in the big and he raises 190,000. These two pretty much tied at the top right now. So what's Alex's plan with limping the ace to begin with? Well, he, he, he wants to play small pots out of position against another big stack. So it might be that he limps his entire range. So he's going to have some limp re-raises here, some limp calls, and some, and some limp folds, basically. Um, you know, he needs to be in the mix because of the, the size of the answer. 550,000. Oh, oh, yeah, baby. Have some of that, mate. Yeah, and he's using the ace blocker just as a sort of bluff um, because hands like 9-4 off just, I mean, they, we can see they just have equity versus ace twos off. So he's using this to balance with the times. He's got it stronger holding. And look, it's very small size. 360 to win 800K in the middle. Um, 360k more for Badikowski. Yeah. But when he's raising this sort of polarized range, I mean, he's raising some, some middle strength hands and very nice. There, uh, there it is. James, with that hand, Alex Kulev cracks my top five Bulgarian players. He moves up. Fantastic. Yeah. You love to see it. Yeah. Number four, Anyang Dimov. Number three, Simeon Nidenov. Number two, Ruman Nanev. And number one, he's been number one for the last three or four months now. There hasn't been a lot of movement in number one and number two uh, since the start of the year. Slavin Popov. I need to know, who has Alex Kulev knocked out of the fifth spot? Is there a sixth Bulgarian player? Danchev. Bro. Oh, sure. Come Demeter. On. Demeter Danchev. He's, he's eighth, believe the it kid. or not. Wow. I'm just leaving some room in six and seven. He's got to win the PCA again <laughs> to get in top five. By the way, Birdie watching on YouTube says throwing a chip in can mean calling an all-in. So if you throw a time bank chip, is that calling an all-in or giving you more time? If it's not a gaming chip, it can't go as a call. It would be interesting, though, if someone flicked a time bank chip in and then their uh, all-in player tables their I, hand. I could see that happening. But as I said, it's it's if you use the time bank cards, Sorry. people could mistake them for playing cards. If you use the chips, exactly the fact idea. that they're so really distinct, blind. this white and black color scheme, the fact they're larger than any of the chips, hopefully no one will make that mistake. Yeah, and Makita going to put Ben to the test again. Really nice to have an ace in hand when making this play, but gonna do it exceptionally wide. Again, maybe almost at any two card spots, uh, a few a few raises uh, as well as shoves. And In my mind, I'd like to think that Ben didn't look at his hand. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Just, just That's forward. why you don't look. That's exactly what I was talking about. Just don't look. If you can't call King Queen fold. Yeah. Well, Groovy Giraffe has a question on Twitch. What do you guys think about four colored decks? Yay or nay? Nay, thank you for your question. <laughs> still seven-handed, still on the bubble, and it is Santos Shivana and Adrian Mateos pretty much tied at the bottom right now. Ten big blinds each. Sivana will actually be in the big blind this hand, so he will yeah. actually be posting 120K. And, and obviously it's, it's somewhat card distribution, but if you want an example of, of what it means to be a mid-stack here and, and sort of handcuff, we actually haven't seen open player hands since this uh, table began, 18 hands in. Um, 
pocket sevens under the gun may not qualify either. You see, it knows these final tables really, really well. Can't open, um, you know, sort of a low pair or a mid pair like that into covering stacks. And Makita, again, with a hand he can consider shoving. Just suited blocker seems like a good candidate to just put this big stack to work. Even if we suspect Santos might call a little wider than, you know, the rules may say. ICM, of course, just created to keep keep poor people down. Keep keep the mid the mid level. Isn't it a great allegory, place. Sam? Isn't it? <laughs> if you if you're poor, you better not get out of line. Ooh. Wow. Ace Queen for Ben Heath. All into call. Heath is third in chips with fifteen big blinds. Yikes. This is just unpleasant spot we could see that he is in great great shape again the, his fear is 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 the eight nine suited the six seven suited the uh the king five of diamonds yeah and he's having a think about what he wants to do what does it mean as well then i'll be thinking if i double up to 30 big blinds how significant is that do i now get to open more you know is that is that double up going to compound on itself how wide is makita shoving in this instance would you agree with intruder on the board who says easy call <laughs> definitely not look this is one of the world's top play poker players in the tank his face going red with the difficulty of the decision oh! and he will let it go for the second time having makita very very dominated yeah and that is the power of the big stack that is the ICM handcuffs in full effect. I mean, look at the chip distribution right now. Still seven-handed on the bubble. 42 bigs for the two big stacks. Makichi Bodziakovsky and Alex Kulev. Orpen Kistakoglu, 16 bigs. Ben Heath, 15. Artem Artarosian, 15. Mateos, 10. Suvana, 8. And, and one way to, to help you picture this spot is if Ben is all in, let's say, even against Queen 4, Sue did and will be eliminated one in four times. Adrian makes money, Santosh makes money, Arta makes money, because one in four times they will get 250k. So where does that money that they're making come from? Well, actually, it, it comes from Ben Heath, right? <laughs> and so I'm not, I'm not certain whether Ben got that. What I do know is Ben Heath is one of the top, top tournament players in the world. And if he feels that is a fault, it very, very likely nah, is. I, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm looking at the live chat, Sam, on Twitch and yeah, YouTube. Ben's and wrong. Everyone is saying that Ben Heath is a terrible poker player. And these people clearly it's know possible. what they're talking about. It's possible. I'll, I'll, I'm putting him on swap probation next time we play a tournament. <laughs> sorry, Ben. Yeah. And, and with no suit and just the blocker, Deciding just to come in for a raise. Mixing it up between shove. Now this this open a little bit more polarized uh, between offsuit combos like that and, and the very, very strong hands. Hey, hey Sam, Victor on uh, YouTube says, scared money don't make money. Of this <laughs> of this field of people who spent 100,000 euros to enter, how many of them would you say, I don't know, just take a stab, like what percentage <laughs> scared. is scared money, yeah, you think? Definitely, definitely not. I, all you know, I some <laughs> satellite winners in there, some scared money. No, I no, no, no. don't care <laughs> if the sentiment is inaccurate. It's just a great line. So Victor wins the internet. <laughs> Still, whoever calls all in on this bubble, I hope they, they announce scared money don't make money before, <laughs> yeah, yeah. before popping in the chips. <laughs> um, six minutes. Just under seven minutes, actually, and then we will roll into the next blind level. Are we actually going to play a full hour seven-handed without losing a player? Are we going to go into level 20 still on the bubble? I mean, this is why you stop last night and come back today, right? Yeah, like, agreed. Arta tanking to make sure he gets, what, the button on the on the next level? So little wrinkles. They're thinking of everything, these guys. Yeah, and, and you know, they, again, uh, uh, let's, let's just re-emphasize this. Open, not VPIP to single hand at this final table. Makita in each and every hand. Pedal to the metal. Uh, Kulev with Makita acting after him. Forced to, you know, just stay in his lane a little bit more. And open now. Folding. 
and Adrian as well. Just getting it through. How shallow is this going to be in five minutes' time? Yeah, I, the, the next blind jump. And I've got to say, I mean, it, I, I, it's worth, worth reiterating. It was these guys' decision not to play on into the money. Yes. But I do think it actually has, has make, is making for great television. Not, not that I can think of that I've seen a bubble of this size uh, broadcast uh, for a while. And really interesting to see the dynamics at work. And, and of course, Makita, one of the great exponents of, of tournament poker, um, you know, navigating this chip lead. I mean, John on YouTube says it'll be a very different game once the bubble bursts. I mean, is it going to be carnage still? I mean, there, there are ladders to consider. It's not like everyone's going to suddenly play an all loosey-goosey. Yeah, as I say, though, we go from a, a 250k pay jump. The next pay jump will be 70,000 euros. So okay. Again, that's just, just want to really keep reiterating. When you see these very tight open here with the opportunity to make his first VP of the day, Ace King, very, very powerful. Kulev, of course, opening somewhat wide under the gun. Just taking his time for when he has tough decisions, but obviously just, I mean, it seems silly to call Ace-King blockers. But, you know, just having the Ace and King in hand. I mean, you have to get pretty unlucky just to even get called here. Taking the lay of the land. Does he want a half stack? Does he just go all in? A little bit of, of maybe some real real decision making, but also, no, but there he goes. Just keeps a little bit back. Yeah, and Open, of course, already won a 25K high roller title at EBT Monaco. Oh. Um, Arthur, just going to knows he's going to be in the small blind. So this is just a bit of Hollywood to run down his 32nd, I do believe, uh, which is understandable. Um, but yeah, I mean, Auburn, by the way, just on a big, big super high roller heater. Uh, someone that if they, if they do get chips will be very much in contention for this title. Um, you know, someone who's really dedicated themselves to uh, the art of tournament poker. <laughs> Good one, and art. And, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, and, uh, no. as I said, w w one of the most accomplished exponents of, 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 of Final Table and ICM poker, uh, you know, in the world. Savage. Savage shove with the Ace King. I know Hollywood from Alex releases. I mean, and 20 big blinds is huge. Yeah. So, time's just gone, 2 p.m., local time. That means we've got just over an hour to go until the first mini EPT Monte Carlo event of the day. This is the online series that runs alongside the live series in Monaco. Three low buy-in tournaments every single day for you to play while watching the streams. First event today, which is at 3.15 CEST, is a $3.30 deep stack. A reminder, there are scoop tickets added to the prize pool of every single mini EPT tournament. We see Bodjakovsky open under the gun. This is hand 22 of the final table, still on the bubble. 120K. Mateos, ace nine. Lee short a stack. Not going to lose any chips to this hand. Martirosian has the bond. 7 5 of spades. Straight flush potential. I mean, you know, it's it's almost sort of redundant to go through the CVs of these guys, but Adrian, back to back, would be a <laughs> remarkable achievement. I mean, it's hard, you know, to eat, for him to even have more highlights, you know, from this city even. <laughs> yeah, in in his in his sort of the the career, the dazzling career that he that he has, the dazzling tapestry of of Mateus's career. But you know, retaining. 
a super high roller title is not easily done. I don't even know whether it's been accomplished in the history of the EBT. Not that sort of jeweling in the crown of the, the super, super high roller title. It would be remarkable. So this will be the last hand of this blind level. Yeah, and these guys, you know, it's, I, I hate to say it, but they're, they're, they're kind of stalled a little bit to make sure the blinds go up on Ben mm -hmm. Heath's big blind. Like that is actually, you know, the, the level of attention that they're putting to it. Santos with the ace and a deuce from under the gun one. Can like I said, you'd rather have a bad hand. He's <laughs> got a blocker. He yeah. will no. fold. No. Teos, ace, nine. Yeah. Blocking. Pocket nines. And have two overs. If he, he gets unlucky, he gets called by eights. Just the ace, very, very powerful. We'll put it in. And looks like everyone else has folded. So that is going to bring us to the end of that level. Blinds will now be 40,000, 80,000 with an 80K big blind ante. Yeah, and Ben, yep. he's putting in uh, how much of his stack? I mean, 160K here blind out of 750K. Um, you know, this is another sort of form of variance on this final table. The blind's going up on him. Quick reminder of the dates for Scoop. Starts Sunday, May 7th, runs till the 31st. 120 events over 25 days. And I just referenced the mini EPT Monte Carlo online series. Scoop tickets added to the prize pool of every single EPT Monte Carlo mini event that is running online over the course of the next six days. And of course, we'll bring you live streams, cards up coverage of selected Scoop events. Straight off the back of our live stream from EPT Monte Carlo. Well, action continues on the bubble in the super high roller. So what have we got now? Martirosian and Ben Heath with nine bigs. Mateos with seven. Sivana with six. The chip lead has got 35 bigs. It has got shallow. It's shallower than the pool at Hezbollah's house. I didn't get it. Did you, Hartigan? Give him a chuckle at least, please. Can we get a laughter soundtrack? I can just press. Someone laugh. Yeah, and Santosh here with very strong pocket nines. Um, even for, you know, with six big blinds and two and a half big blinds out there. Um, nice to see him just balancing his timing here and will put it into the middle again. Wow. Oh, Mateos with ace jack suited. <laughs> I think closing the action, Adrian would always call that. Our players to act behind who could wake up with something really big. If they were both eliminated, he would get the pay jump, which is somewhat significant. But, but again, this is just Adrian Mateus in the tank as to what to do. It is nice to sort of clash with another short stack where if you win the hands, you also go up, the bubble bursts and, and you make the money. Wow, it's just a very tough decision. Tr going through everything he knows about Savannah up to this point. Has he seen any wild shoves in this kind of situation before? This, this, the yeah. call from Mateos. Yeah, this is a little bit nicer because this is not going to be any two cards. Often you're going to be dominating, but we know this is a big flip between the reigning champion and the only sort of out and out amateur in the field. Savannah at risk, but ahead right now with nines. If Mateos loses, he'll be left with 100k, just over a single big blind. Like memes versus gifs. That would be sharp to take nines, but... <laughs> the flop. Has a jack on it. And an ace. Top two for Mateo. Sivana now drawing to a nine. 
The bubble is about to burst in the 100k super high roller. There is a 91% chance, make that a 95% chance, that Santos Sivana is the last player to leave with nothing. The river card Good is game. not a nine. Brutal. And we lose Santos Sivana in seventh place. Everyone else is now cashed and has guaranteed themselves a quarter of a million. And oh, look at this. What a what a delightful fella. Yeah, absolutely lovely. And you see that big smile and fist pump for the guys over to his rail. I mean, just a, a guy that plays the game in absolutely the right spirit with a smile on his face, camaraderie, and, you know, can hold his head very high. Didn't run well on the final. Got it in as a small favorite. Big flip to essentially burst the bubble and have a stack to fight on with. Eliminated on the bubble and all the rest of the guys in the money. Takes us down like to the final ball. six. <laughs> and it will see Adrian Mateos actually move into third place on the leaderboard. However, before you get too excited, Mateos only has 16 big blinds. Uh, ben Heath is now the shortest stack with eight bigs. Martirosian, nine bigs. <laughs> Orpen Kistakoglu, 13 bigs. Kulev, 28 so bigs. Bodzikovsky, 35. Yeah, anyway, it is a shallow <laughs> final table. We expect to see some chip consolidation, i.e. some more bust-outs now that we're in the money. Ah. Nah. We don't care about that. By the way, that <laughs> smile on his face Bob, was bubbled. One three bullets. Yeah, Not just a bullet. Big legend. Big legend of the game. I mean, you can never, despite the fact that it was a massive bubble and it was a, I'm sure that amount of money stings anyone, whether they can afford it or not. Uh, he, for the rest of his life, can say he final tabled a super high roller. Yeah, I mean, he gave, a, he acquitted himself very, very well. <coughs> See, no, no shame in that. You know, let me just tell you, as a, as a, a seasoned professional, you know, I've played the game 13 years. I find these finals tough, intimidating, playing under the lights, playing under shot clock being put under pressure, close, close decisions. You know, it's very, very challenging intellectually and emotionally. And to do that when it's not your job, when you, you know, you, you know, it's very, very brave. Yeah, and, it's quite uh, intimidating. Yeah, and as I said, I, I, you know, I don't, Santos played a lot of cards, probably plays cards <laughs> more often and, or, or more regularly than me, but certainly not. You know, this is very, very specific and very technical Even game. Santos couldn't pay for it. High praise from a seasoned pro like Sam Grafton. And it's what they call like old guys in hockey with no teeth and, you know, it's make a Grizzled, yeah. I like that you said, I mean, it's even tougher for Sam to be seasoned. He's from England. They hate seasoning. I guess he played final table here twice and one boss time. Yeah. Damn. A boiled pro. Can I get a picture? <laughs> With my third trophy, yeah. Ooh, spicy. <laughs> spicy. Oh, there we go. Speaking of spice, Alex Kulev, ace queen. One sixty. You see the tensions drop just, just a, a yeah. little bit. This guy's able to have a, you know, a little few jokes. Let's see. They say comedy is the release of tension, and people are chuckling a little bit right now. So, yeah. Ben, he's very, very pleased for this ordeal to be over. Oh, speak! Didn't you just talk about Ace Queen versus Ace Queen? You and uh, was it Orpi? Yeah, yeah. No, me and me and Santosh. I, I, yeah, Santosh. I, yeah, I think uh, Orpen versus Alex's opening range is going to perhaps want to put this in. It's just especially make, post bubble. Yes, the the, the 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 you know. I mean, on the other hand, Alex isn't going to open quite so so often, um, and he's actually. Yeah, just, just putting it all in except a few chips. And is there a name for that yet? Uh, de de what do they call it? A, 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 de a, a demi stack or something like this? A, de no, a demi shove? Yeah, a demi shove, yeah. yeah. Orpen, you have 200 behind? 160. Thank you. That's what we have. And that is 900? Yeah, Kula, no, no incentive to act quickly oh, here. Well, we'll, we'll put the money in. Uh, neither of them's going to be too Boring. disappointed. I never know. <laughs> I'm so, 
A couple of flush draws are live. <laughs> well, only one flush draw for, for Orpen. Yeah, just one for Orpen. 2% versus 1%. Very Huge favorite, by the way. Twice, twice, twice as, as much, much equity. <laughs> He's Owen. We are um, going to help you out. We're not is Owen. calling for any flushes here, by the way. I, I would not feel good about that. I, mean, uh, I might have to take the rest of the day off, honestly, if that happens. Just going to warn you guys now. Me? No. And that is a three-suited flop. So this pot can only go one way. And Sam, if you leave me hanging here, it's going to be very obvious. Because Harding's got a sandwich in his mouth. Seems like a pretty good outcome for you. So you ready? Okay. This hand ends in a chop. And you know what they say? What do they say? Everyone loves a chop pot. Wow, he, he went all over Nobody the place, and I had to follow him. I'm saying off peak, confirm by how much it was. like two minutes from Yeah, and it, it, it's funny because, of course, actually there's been a lot of chat about this in, in, in the wonderful world that is Poker Twitter. like five minutes. About the, the, the sort of severity of these finals and this for you. the staring and, and, and lack of smiling. And, and it, what's, what's funny is actually in these tournaments, there is an incredible amount of camaraderie. Everyone knows each other very, very well. Uh, everyone sort of bust and doubled through and put bad beats and swapped or played heads up in finals. So, you know, actually they're played in great spirits with a lot of sort of laughter and familiarity. And of, of course, playing for such big money when under the lights, everyone's very serious because they don't want to make a mistake and, and are facing yes. very difficult decisions all the time in very close spots. Um, but, you know, it's nice to see those lighter moments and they are typical of what we see at, uh, at on the high roller scene in EPT high rollers. And Ben here with eight big blinds, pocket fives on the cutoff, a lot of money out there. I had the, uh, the opportunity to see that firsthand actually on um, Ben all in uh, when this tournament started off and everyone was just sort of gathering around there. Everyone comes on time for the rake reduction. Yes. And everyone's just like hanging out, coffee housing, chatting with each other. Uh, very, like any other job before your shift starts, right? <laughs> Just like hanging out in the break room. Before you punch in. <laughs> yeah, before you clock in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, and I was actually chatting with Ben, and I was like, it's pretty wild how like, Everyone's just like super, not that I expect people to be um, antagonistic toward each other, but like everyone's very just friendly and having fun with their friends. And then the second they're like, all right, let's deal. Now they have to battle each other. Yeah, and that sort of, that immediate flip, mm -hmm. it's so weird that they're capable of the first part. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, take, take for instance, Ben and Open, two, two incredibly close friends, spend a lot of time together away from the table and, and you know, now really trying to hurt each other in the here and now. Ben ditches this one, king nine off, eight five suited for Orpen, out. Jack nine for Adrian on the button. And Adrian, who has been that, oh, actually it's Arta, who is the shortest stack out of nowhere. Didn't, lost that significant pot with the, with the two pair versus straight. Tried to get the raise through with king queen, didn't work out. And now shortest stack in the money. Our tour, 10-5 suited. And we'll just give the walk. Oh. <laughs> the hammer. Yeah. Very tough opponent. Um, Arta, Arta Rosian. Sam, did you win a mystery bounty tournament this week? Yes, and Arta was on the final table, actually, and gave me quite some headaches. Really? <laughs> yes. We played some silly hand on 5-5-10, five, five, where he check-raised me on the flop and then check-raised me on the turn. And then, yeah. He, you didn't let him get the triple check raise in? No, because he put me all in on the river and I folded like a <laughs> win. So it was very, it was very, I thought, how did I get myself in this spot? Why did, I thought, why did I bet the flop? And then I bet the turn and he check raised me again. I thought, why did I bet the turn? <laughs> if only I could remember my lesson from one minute ago. Uh, yes, exactly. So, uh, open with a decision whether to shove or come in for a raise here. I think we might want to go for a raise here. Um, we'll be opening into Makita in the big blind, who's the chip leader, who can defend that bit wider. I don't think we want to play too many shoves. Just a tight opening strategy that can't be messed with too much. <coughs> and 
not quite as good as a suited ace having a suited king. Kulev is out with the suited king. And Makita folds three high. All right, so talk to me about our turret Monterosian a little bit. And you don't have to go deep into this answer. Is his choice of clothing ironic? No, no. No. I think, I think you know, I, I think it's, cool. well, it's fun. Like, uh, of course, there's a lot of the guys who are flexing a little bit. You know, they're young lads. They got a bit of dough. And they like to, uh, you know, they got some okay, swag. So he's for the clubs, for the he's for peacocking the, a little bit. Yeah, he's okay. peacocking around, you know. And uh, oh. obviously, it's Nicole? it's yeah, yeah it's because if I wore a five hundred dollar Mickey Mouse shirt, I would be doing it ironically. Sure. Well, you wouldn't spend five hundred dollars on irony, I don't think, Joe. But uh, of course I would. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, of course I would. That's yeah. why I don't have $500. Yeah. The, 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 these guys, uh, yeah. Having fun. I think it's, I think it's nice to see. I think it's nice to see. It's not, it's not my style, but... I also forget that Arthur Martirosian's like 22 years old and, and not, you know, older, I'll say. Yeah, he's been on the scene a long time. I know what you're saying. Young lad, EPT champion, no less as well. The only EPT... Oh, him and Adrian, both main event winners as well as Super High Roller superstars. And is this a don't think you can. shove again on Ben Heath? <laughs> yeah, probably can. Been oh. a feature of this final. It will be unfortunate. Yeah, despite having doubled up not that long ago, Ben's back <laughs> below like 10 bigs. Yeah. We don't get to see him folding ace-queen this time. It's not, he's doing, he's not, showing, the, he's not showing the whole cards right. anymore. You've really hurt his feelings. No more. You don't. You lost privileges on Ben Heath's whole cards, old yeah, cards. And, and, and also, one thing about doubling up now for for Ben um, is, you know, it, it doesn't really change his position in the tournament either. Um, sort of going to 16 big blinds doesn't mean he gets to open march or or, or do that much. Of course, he'd love to double up, but uh, kind of restricted in that respect. Also, not picking up anything. Kulev, Jack Eight off into the muck. And once again, we're on Makita with another very shovable hand. Mm -hmm. Very juicy hand. You fold out better. Really good equity when called. Suited and straightening properties is what you want. And yeah. And, and this is this is just a form of, of variance as well. I mean, it's not like he's picked up aces or ace king, but having Jack Nine suited rather than Jack Two off is 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 really, really nice in the in when you've got this big chip lead. For what reasons is it nice? Like, if you happen to get called, you can... Well, it's, it's just a hand that is a very comfortable shot there. Mm -hmm. It's just a that It's a sort of automatic decision. There are other hands where it's like, oh, is this... A, do I get to raise this? Do I want to min raise? It seems a bit too bad to shove. Like your king sevens and stuff yeah, like yeah. that? Well, actually, I think a high card is, is good. Any actually. high card at this yeah, point. Yeah, okay. a, a king. Having an over card to the jacks, kings, queens is, is, is nice as well. Okay. Yeah, and, and again, I you know I, I don't want to. Well, Kulev with queens. Kulev. One sixty. With the queens. Same queens he had earlier, I think. And a pulls from open. Mm -hmm. Not someone that hot waste want wastes time for. For, for camera time, what's he picked up here? Nah. We'll just fold. There goes Adrian. Matthias as well. Into the muck. He's going to pick it up. Uh, Kulev, like second in the, chips, 30 bigs. Are we missing the whole oh, card? 34 the time bigs. Here? It could be that the hand just ending before the computer has a chance to sure, of pop them in. Andy Max asks, Year of Romania? Yes, of course it is. Thank you for your question. So Arthur, now the shortest stack at the table, four big blinds, and is in the big blind here. Yeah, and he, he can now, well, defend is not really the word when you've got four big blinds, but you can see a flop kind of wide. It might be that Makita opens bigger, or you right. want to open to two and a half big blinds and just make sure he's like, all in or... It has to be. Yeah, it might, it might be that you want a 3x here or 2.5x. 
might even be that he, he could even jam. I, I'm not, not quite sure of the exact distribution. Uh, and again, with Kulev having folded, there. Yeah, exactly. The next biggest stack is Orpin with 14 bigs. Yeah, and you see why it's an advantage to be acting, sort of, Makita uh, acting after Kulev. And Adrian will release. Wow, poor old Arta in the big blinds with the 10 8 off. Didn't want to do it. Yeah, and we're sort of seeing, you know, uh, uh, again, some of these decisions are a little automatic. But nonetheless, we're seeing yet again sort of the Makita show. This is very similar to how we saw the EPT Barcelona final play out. He won that big, big hand, bluff catching. Mike Watson propelled him into a big chip lead and then really <laughs> ran the show. And we're just seeing this again from Makita. You see he's observing Ben Stack all the time, being aware of the exact constellation behind him, who's under pressure, what what can he, what does he want to shove and picking up the blocker. Wow. Makita gonna be able to keep his foot on the gas. Ace nine off. Raise. And all eyes on Artur. Nope, not this one. Has a round now before he's forced to commit chips again. Yeah. And it's a round in which Ben, Adrian, and Orpen got to wind the neck in. <laughs> I was about to say, keep their head down. Yeah. And those are the actual number of chips each player has. It's 41 bigs, 32, 14, 11, 8, and 4. Yeah, and obviously the big, big blind ante is significant here in that you get sort of free hands as the short stack. And Ben Heath, ace queen, suited. Yeah, and I, th uh, and I, th I think. No, you could play opens here, but maybe with the severity of the situation with Arta, so, so short, maybe it's a shove situation for Ben, despite how tight you're going to be playing. Um, it is Makita's big blind. All in. Yeah. Just don't want to allow Makita to peel and put you in an uncomfortable position on low boards, straightening boards, monotone boards. Anything that doesn't have an ace or queen. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, you, you know, you, you, you're playing incredibly tight. You can have aces and kings and stuff but when you open, but um, yeah, just playing the <clears throat> shove range, I think. And, you know, picking up two and a half big blinds, significant, although, of course, got to put two of those back into the pot now. Yep. Then in the big blind. And with, with stacks this short, despite the, the talent and skill on display, just getting dealt some cards is is a big deal, you know? Um, Arta has been somewhat card dead and now in this precarious position. Ooh. King four suited. Yeah, and it's nice to sort of shove into Ben, I think, who, who, who can't just sort of call off willy-nilly would swap places if he were to make a loose call in the big blind. Like, oh boy, well, we're not going to probably be worrying about Can Ben too much. Future of me, Alex Kulev on the button with Ace Jack. Trying to navigate the players still to act behind. Certainly has no issues going all in against Great. Marta Rosian. Does it click it or just, yeah, just just calls. Uh, Nikita out the way. 70K. So oh. the blinds have folded. It is going to be uh, a little fist bump between two buddies. A run it out situation. Hmm? You can play with Marta Rosian at like risk. <laughs> it's my favorite card. Whose favorite one ace versus King Four? Oof. King Four, I think. Yeah, <laughs> must be. <laughs> Does need to hit to survive. Eight, six, <clears throat> deuce. Some straights, possibly. A five might be nice. No heart 
out there. Both hands unpaired. Turn card is a seven. So that straight Sam mentioned is a potential. Fives now outs. Wow, standing up. Bye, guys. But yeah. most of the deck is going to make that buy, guys, completely true. <laughs> the four is doubled. Is one happened. of them. Breaking out the... Isn't one of them. Isn't one of the cards. Even the old school tricks. And right there, he's wearing it on his shirt. Boom. Drills the pair of fours. Double up Martyrosian. Yeah, and of course, bad news for Alex Kulev, who... who that separation to Makita and Gross. Uh, bad news for Open, Adrian, yeah. and Ben Heath. You don't get the ladder. Day with 1.4. Yeah. So. I did quite well, yeah. Given right. the circumstances. So, yeah, still six-handed at the super high roll-up final table here <laughs> right. in Monte Carlo. Monsikovsky still holding on to the chip lead. One point two mil up top. Very nice indeed. Most of the table in the proverbial danger zone right now. Actually, we played a little televised cash game, and we each, me, Maria, Tonka, and Kowalski, all picked a player. I picked Ben Heath. We picked two players each. Uh, I think Tonka picked Orpen as one of his two. And once again, familiar sight. Makita, the covering stack, putting the chips to work. Just putting it all in and saying, can you find a hand to call? Rizla98 watching on Twitch says, what are the black and white chips? As we learned today, these have replaced the time bank cards. These are the new time bank chips. Work the same way. You need extra thinking time. You play one of those chips, you get an additional 30 seconds on the clock. Was it ever in EP EPTs that you used to play with plaques for a little bit? Yeah, or was yep. EPT Deauville had the plaques, which were actual gaming chips, not... They, yeah, M Monte Carlo they did, surely, no? no? I've never seen the plaques in Monte Carlo. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite, quite crazy. But Deauville, they were definitely a thing. Deauville and Casino Royale, that's pretty much it. I feel like we got plaques one other place besides Deauville. Yeah, and Arta with also. a very nice hand to pick up here under the gun with 11 big blinds. 11 a little bit awkward. Do want to play most, like quite a lot of raises, I guess, here, but I think he may just shove. 160. Ah, yeah, it does, does go for the open. I think this is, you know, Kulev and Makita, a little bit handcuffed uh, with players to act behind and facing an undergun open. Adrian not incentivized to call too much out of the big blind. Ben Heath seems to have found himself a hand. Folding the suited ace. Makes sense that I think with the 11 to, to, to play our opening range. Just playing so, so tight. Can't be messed with when uh, you know, you're sort of just opening suited aces, big pairs, and a, and, a, and a few Broadway. Can you remember, Sam, the first time you ever played a poker game that had a time bank chip? That's a good question. It would have been maybe Barcelona 10K at some point. No, I'm saying specifically a time bank chip. Oh, I don't know, probably on, probably on Monday. <laughs> probably last week, I don't know. Wrong. The first time you played with a time bank chip was Shark Cage. <laughs> I still have two of the original time bank chips from that show. Well, you're going to open a museum one day. I'll uh, tell you what, I've got the bluff and value cards as well, mate. I'm holding on to them in case you ever bring it back. There was actually a, a, a minute from that, or like a few seconds that was on my reel for a long time. It was someone from Shark Cage going, how much time do I have? And there's a gigantic green screen clock right behind them. I think it was Duffy. Three eight. Three eight. First in chips against second in chips. 
Makita leveraging his stack in a way we haven't seen up to now. We've seen the big open shoves. Kulev with a very legitimate open, very beautiful hand, but what are you doing now with the suited queen jack? Under the gun versus under the gun one. Sometimes the bluffs here also sort of dominate queen jacks. So it doesn't make it very enticing to peel. It's one of the problems. Um, and this is, again, just a, a legitimate tank from Kulev. Working through, do we want to shove this blocking queens and jacks? And, yeah. okay, sometimes we get called by ace king. We don't really get called by ace jack. Do we want to flat ever? As I said, there's some downsides to that. Not, not a situation where we're supposed to peel too much. Can we just spin this and move on? We continue to play our tight strategy. Really don't know how this great online player proceeds. And he does, does go for a call. I like it. We're going to see a flop. Just a very beautiful <laughs> hand. Uh, plenty of chips behind. And the rest of the table hoping for some unnecessary, ridiculous collision between these two. Yeah, and Makita not excited about that. Obviously, the ace eight off, not too playable. But he does flop a toppest pair. Indeed. Meanwhile, Kulo flops second pair. So there is the potential for more chips to go in now. Yeah, and obviously we can see Makita way, way out in front with the top pair. Won't be overvaluing this ace eight. The kicker not gonna, you know, not gonna win a big pot versus a worse ace very often. May want to just put a small bet out in the here and now. Not gonna get check raised too often, but it's also possible to check back. Yeah, I think this is, this makes some sense. And it, ah, wow. Take it away, Joe. The flush draw on the turn for Kulev. Yes, very nice card for Kulev. Obviously, it doesn't change much in terms of his actual hand strength here on the turn. Going to be ahead of jacks or tens very occasionally uh, and behind the ace. Don't think we necessarily want to bet out. Just makes it an easier oh, check oh, call if Makita that's starts that's applying that's pressure. That's a small village under here. Yeah. We have a hotel and on the night. Uh, Even no. nice. And on the double check, does Makita want to protect his hand and try and get value? Or are we going to just check back again and play our hand for one street? Does check back again. Still worried about ace jack, ace ten and the like, and it bricks off. What does Kulev beat here? Does tens get three bet? I'm so glad that was rhetorical. No, it's... it's I didn't have an answer. No. <laughs> you know, is, is he just against kings? Do we want to we wanna put out 10% and get called by a crying call from 9-8 suited? Potentially not. Checks again to Makita. Do we ever get check jammed on here? What do we do if we get raised? Are there any slow plays in Kulev's range? And we'll just check down. Happy to take the money in the middle. And that will see Makishi Bozikovsky extend his advantage at this final table. Now playing 4 million chips, now playing a 50 big blind stack. Alex Kulev dropping down to 22 big blinds. Everyone else is a sub-15 big blind stack. Mateus and Heath are the two shortest on nine and eight big blinds, respectively. 26 minutes till the blinds go up. Sam, you want to do a little uh, a little trivia? Sure. Do your best now to rank these players as far as Hend and Mob live earnings are concerned in ascending order. So ascending would be bottom to top. Correct. I, 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 I could start with which, the top. Oh, sorry, which, these players? Yeah, these six players. Um, it's quite close between Makita and Adrian, right? I would go Makita. Yeah, see, that's why I would start at the top. Well, it's descending it's... order, but fine. It doesn't matter which way you get okay. it. We're going to start with descending order then. Oh, okay. So Makita top, Adrian second. I would agree with that. Um, 
Ben third, Open fourth, Arta fifth, Alex sixth. In actuality, it is Makita, Adrian, Ben, Orpen, Arter, Alex. I got it right, yeah? You nailed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six for six. I'm a poker fan, bro. Super <laughs> big poker fan. Alex Kulev, 1.5 million only in live earnings. Yeah, That's okay. going up today. I mean, it's going up in the, in the future of, of him anyway. This is this is this is someone that has come <laughs> Very nice. and 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 fought uh, and you know who who you, know, you, you could you could win. I won the one with Angel. <laughs> you could, hey, I'm no, I love it when Makita starts indulging yeah, us with a little something. bit of chat. You know, you you can t you could take your winnings and have a great time in Dublin. Put it this way: this kid could just sit back and enjoy himself. And he's chosen to come and play against the best in the world mm -hmm. and fight for glory, fight for titles and. And you know, he, he at, at some point he's going to get it done. Very talented individual. I have two follow-up questions, Joe. Yeah, what is Bodjakovsky's number? Because I imagine he's pretty high on the all-time money list. P must be top ten, right? He's top top. He's definitely number one Belarusian. Yes, thirty-eight point eight. Okay, so and Mateos is. I was going to say, how how much ahead of Adrian is he? Adrian is 32 points. Okay, so, so they are quite close. Million. But, but, but reasonably close, both above 30. Yeah, I mean, it's also, I mean, I actually remember playing with Nikita when he just started tournaments in, um, in Aussie Millions. And we were like, oh, he's not good live. He's a good cash game guy. You know, the, some of the tourney regs were like frowning. He's not going to make tournaments are different, blah, blah, blah. And when he was just starting out, and he, and he got a win at that Aussie Million in a, in a very sh small 100K, you know, as in only a few runners, and, and obviously just ascended to, to, the, to the highest of heights in the game. So confirmation, Bodjakovsky is in the top 10 on the all-time money list. He is ranked ninth. Mateos ranked 16th. 16th, what an embarrassment. Get your act together, Adrian. Maybe we should go and tell him to power him up. Whisper in his ear. You can tell him. You're six million behind. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, and look at this. You know, you see, again, you just see the power of the big stack lurking behind Kulev, suited queen on the butt into the muck, and Makita with, again, another very nice shove spot. Ben Heath must be getting tired of this. Can he? <laughs> Not even a question. Straight into the muck. Well, good fold, Ben. Yeah, jeez. How does he know? What a read. It's tough from those seats, too. Yeah. Yeah. Looking right through the dealer. <laughs> the great Ben Heath. One of the, uh, one of the best people in the game. So, in 22 minutes, we'll have the first break of the day. I fully expected us to burst the bubble during the session, Sam. But yes. I also kind of didn't think we'd be coming back with six players for the second session. I, I think someone might may well go in the, in this 20 minutes. I yeah. Think, I think that's more than possible. Just eventually, Makita, you know, gonna gonna be shoving and, and someone will find something. Kulev here with the king-queen off. And we've seen how difficult Makita's making things for him. One, six, eight. Obviously, with the button as well, can... can employ a lot of flats, not just the three bets and shoves. Let's see what Makita gets dealt. Nine, six off, doesn't make the cut. Just a hand that he can't beep it. Well, we've been in this situation before, and in fact, I think Orpen and Kulev were the two players in the hand when it was ace-queen. Yeah, thanks. Again, we don't want to defend too often here. I want to play quite a few shoves, but King Queen is a hand where flatting is just nice. You just dominate uh, a lot of holdings. I really don't know which way Orpunt is going to go. As I said, someone that worked really, really hard on their final table game, and you know, yeah, what, what does he want to do? Call or jam? What's the play from? Again, number one on Turkey's full-time money list. And we'll just put it into the middle. And actually asking a question of Kulev now. 
this is a significant amount of Kulev's stack, right? If he were to call and lose and be dominated, they would swi switch position and Kulev would plunge for the first time to second shortest stack. And in the battle of the King Queens, Orpen comes out on top. And it's very close now between Kulev and Kisikoglu. I mean, look, not much is separating three players. Kulev, Kisikoglu, Martirosian. And Kulev has dropped below 20 big blinds. Bojikovsky now has a phenomenal chip lead. Better than a two-to-one advantage over Kulev, who sits in second place. Yeah, and I mean, you know, one thing that's nice about the, the shorter stacks is every pot is significant. Every yeah. pot is very, very significant. Just a little bit of breathing room open for open, so we can sort of wait out Ben and Adrian as the shortest stacks sort of stay afloat and, and wait for them to bust and then be ready to put his chips to work. And Kulev, for the third time on this final, picking up Carl Wiens. 160. Back in the saddle. Hmm. 14 big blinds and the suited ace. No flats here really for open. Do we have three bet folds? Do we have shoves with this hand? Just elects to pass. You see how One point. good his timing is. Five Doesn't overcommit. You know, Alex seems like he's playing a little bit looser than he is. Obviously, we know that King Queen very legitimate raise. And Mateus will defend off the short stack. We can see that King High would be very, very good for Adrian. And 10 High would be a disaster. Jack 5 4. Mateos misses the flop. Kulev. Better than a four to one favorite with the Queens. Yeah, very good flop for the pocket Queens, of course. Don't want to see the overcard. Kulev continues. It's 80K into 440K. The tails were just king high. Yeah, and Adrian frustrated to miss the flop. We can see that could have been much, much worse for the great Spaniard. And now, though, Ben and Adrian really, really short. Of course, Ben will pass through the blinds before Adrian. So six and five big blinds, respectively, for Heath and Mateos. Sam, I have a question. I need you to verify my mathematics. I think I'm right, but on the other hand, I can't believe I can be. Average stack right now is 1.5 million. Mm -hmm. In 17 minutes time, the blinds go to 50, 100,000. If we are somehow still six-handed at the start of level 21, they're gonna be playing a 15 big blind average stack? Yeah, I mean, it's just, the, I mean, the thing about the modern game and with these great players is, is they play the short stack so skillfully. You see, you know, uh, Ben being forced to fold on the bubble, really, really strong holdings and you know, no one sort of puts their, you know, they, they really value the five and six big blinds. They know the importance of, uh, Bajikowski, I don't know whether he's, we presume he's looked at both his cards, just going all in. I don't know whether that was a Jack-10 suited, the perhaps. Big surprise, how good was it? Would have been, would be nice to see, maybe ace jack off. I don't know, but uh, yeah, what a position to be in, to be able to, to, to just play an under-the-gun shot. I'm not saying I would want to play a good one. And I appreciate I'm what you were saying, one. Sam, about these guys being masters of, of playing the short stack. I just can't think of a time ever, Joe, leap in if you can remember otherwise, where we've ever covered a final table where the average stack was 15 big blinds. I mean, I thought the FPS yesterday got shallow at 20 bigs average. <laughs> I'm quiet because I'm thinking. 
Yeah, and, and, and all, I mean, I don't know whether I we'll, think no also. We'll, yeah. we'll definitely have to see a, a sort of a double up anyway. I mean, we may we may be six handed, but one of these guys is going to be all in. And all, but also it's it's the fact that there's other short stacks. If if Adrian was on five big blinds and everyone else had twenty, he would be sort of very free to put those chips in. But again, any if Ben's at risk. It, Arta and Adrian are delighted. If, if Arta's at risk, Ben and Adrian are delighted. And here we go. This is a sort of uh, situation we were talking about. Ace-10, five big blinds, two and a half big blinds Seven in the good. middle. Seven. Seven, fine. Okay. And he's taking a stand with Ace-10. <clears throat> I'm pretty happy to get Ace-10 there. Am I dumb? Yeah, no. Okay. Absolutely. I mean, you can't, you can't get called. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can get called by worse very occasionally. It's just nice. Just blocking 10s. 510. Yeah, and Kulev with threes. Again, for chips would just be an easy call, but very weird scenario to find yourself in. <clears throat> Doesn't do much for him if he goes up to 24 big blinds. Still handcuffed by Makita. Yeah. But very, very good price. And will fold threes. You can see that that is a perplexing spot. I mean, what, what would you do there? It's not, not clear to me how the strategy... I, I, I think I would lean to, towards fold, but you can see it's not... No, a big blind less. Perhaps we do want to call. Two big blinds more. Easy fold. Close one. Hmm? Close one. Yeah. I wish he had more. <laughs> and Ben Heath, much needed. You know, it's half his stack he gained there, almost, with the, the, the shove and take it. Pulls a little ahead, a smidge ahead of Arta. Are these blockers good enough? Probably not. 14 big blinds. You see opening into as well, opening into Makita, who can just play very, very wide from the big blind. Arta folding the button and second against first. Kulev forced to relinquish without a fight. It's very important. Coming up on hand 50, the next hand dealt will be hand 48. 13 minutes on the clock. Bodjakovsky closing in on the 60 big blind mark. The second biggest stack is Alex Kulev, who doesn't even have 20 bigs. Same as last time. Sorry? Same as last time, 550. Behind. <laughs> so you know when you shove on me with only two cards, just what well, you're risking. Mm -hmm. Again. Just want to make you aware. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Auburn sort of kept his nose clean. Had the king-queen shove where he forced Alex off the same hand. The ace-queen where they chopped. Not, not really had any big swings. Just sort of chipped down. Adrian in, almost, in essentially the exact same spot as Ben was in. Yeah, and he's going to make... A committing race here. Starts the hand with 470k and 350 of it's just going across the line. And now it's just whether Ben wakes up with something. No, he doesn't. <laughs> Looks like the main event is going on break today, being day 1B of the 5k main, which we will start streaming from tomorrow. Yeah, and, and of course it's it's funny because even just putting in the blind and ante is a significant pot lost. Ben, yeah. you know, Adrian picks up two and a half big blinds. Ben lost two big blinds on that hand, and Ben plunges to the bottom stack with six big blinds. You it's know, an actual quantifiable percentage of the chips in play at this point. Sure. You know, when there's like fewer than a hundred big blinds total in play, uh, having two in there and winning <laughs> two is is a win. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Quarter of your stack gone. Close for Adrian. 
We saw him shove eights in a very similar spot, actually with seven-handed sixes. A tiny bit worse. And will put it in. So why asking? Has Botez entered day 1B of the main? Yes, Alex Botez is playing day 1B of the EPT main. Box office Botez. I, I like Alex. I like what she brings to the game. I like that people are excited about her. But when people call her Botez, it really oh, oh. <laughs> it throws me off. How, how do you say it? No, no, no. I'm not saying it's a pronunciation thing. Oh. It's just such a... It doesn't... It's not the image that I see of her. Alex, Alexandra. Bot is Botez in yet? As long as we're consistent, like you would say, is Mateo still in? Is Heath still in? Is Botez still in? Just because she's female doesn't mean she, she should be referred to differently. No, but there are some people like, is Daniel still in? Daniel that who? Negranu is how oh. people would say, is Daniel still in? Is, is Orpin still in? That's because people, no one can spell his name. Yeah, what I'm saying is some people you think of them by their first name. Some people you think of their last name. Some people. Yeah, you think of them as by their as, screen name. Of both, them. right, screen name. You, you don't ever think of Orpen or Ben by their screen name, but other people, you know. Um, and really nice for Arthur to pick up Ace Jack under the gun. Really great spot to find a hand you can jam. And Mikita can play just a bit more freely for chips. Um, you know, three blinds, actually three big blinds. And also because Arta has to ante, he's actually got to shove, he's got to put in a third of his stack dead, essentially, which can't be doubled up. He's so the most to shove a lot, lot, lot wider than this. So Makita, considering calling with the fours, knows that people won't interfere with him behind too often as they're happy to, to sort of stay out the way of the big stack. Could even just rip it in if he wants to play for Arta's stack. And Makia considering how to proceed. A genuine tank here. I think sixes would be loving it, but I think it will put, well, yeah, he decides to put him into the muck. Uh, he might play it, I guess. There's what, four to act behind? And look at that, Arta just picks it up, and, and that's again, you know, you, you, we say, oh no, he. Did he have three behind? Yeah. Is he more than doubled up? No. Uh, he, mu he must have shoved more than three big lines. It said on the graphics to me that he had three, but maybe he had six. Makes a bit more sense with the folding, folding of the fours. Anyway, Arta leaping ahead of Adrian and Ben, up to nine big blinds. As we say, every spot significant. And we have pit the eight, seven off with this 58 big blinds. Just putting them to work. Look at this. You guys, the, we used to say this, the rest of the table, you're all in. You guys over there, everyone left to act is all in. <laughs> this is a great, great, great feeling. I put the table all in. If you have cards, you're all in right now. Eight, seven, I'm off. putting you and you and you <laughs> and you yes. all in. Yes. Six way all in. Bodzikovsky wins it. Home time. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's 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 just a it's just a. I, I've got to say that's not a jam that I necessarily would have found, but I guess it just makes some sense. Um, Eleven big blinds, the biggest stack, stack. Uh, you know, they're all competing against each other for the next pay jump. Victor's back to remind us that scared money don't make money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Makita taking advantage <laughs> of the, 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 these, the notoriously scared money. Adrian Mateos. And M.S. asking the appropriate question. Anyone playing the mini EPT in a few minutes? 15 minutes it starts, the first event of the day. It's a $3.30 deep stack. Has a 10K guarantee plus scoop tickets added to the prize pool. The first of three low buy-in tournaments running on Stars today for you to play while watching the stream. Maybe these cards are a little bit faulty. I don't think Ben would make too much of a mistake here with the... Obviously, it must be a, an eight or an ace or king, maybe? King, 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 king. 
I guess I'm hoping we don't get to see it. He, he's the shortest. Now, 500. Yeah, uh, well under. Oh, uh, here we go. Just a little one eye poker. Oh. Maybe Adrian's going to put the other card on his forehead. <laughs> and they're going to proceed from that. Okay, now we got that rather disappointing second card. Later. Might be one of those situations where players have been a bit too aggressive with the peeling of these cards, and we might need a new deck. <laughs> when we said these guys w were aggressive, we, did, we didn't mean that. Scared money don't make money. I think, was it? It was a very busy start to the year, and so Something some of the things that happened in Paris and some of the things that happened in the Bahamas kind of all blurred together. But at one of those events, we had a feature table where there was one player who literally broke a card every time they peeled. They were so aggressive with how they folded the card back. I mean, I mean, one thing that can happen is on a final, the sort of tension in your hand means you kind of grip them a little bit more than you should. But uh, that's what you, your frustration at getting dealt a, a deuce again. Open with ace, nine suited. Very beautiful looking hand. See, in the middle of the pack, so to speak. <laughs> 11 big blinds, middle <laughs> of the pack. Yeah, but Third and chips. Could this He's not wrong. And, and, and the only problem is raising into Makita, but perhaps this is one we want to min raise. And open. This, this is why you take your time when with easy decisions, because I think this is a real tank as to how he wants to, to go. it from open and just an open for open yes we're open makes sense i mean we, we want to open aces we want to open kings we want to open queens okay so what are the the raise folds and even the raise folds for makita even the, against open even the raise folds are very strong hands right there's no loosey-goosey nonsense five deuce off Will fold and open, gets it through. I mean, this is just an eventuality that happens. You you want to sort of stay afloat, maintain a little bit of dif distance, not get pulled into that extreme pack of short stacks. And open, getting it done. See, this is the way you want to build your range as a mid-stack. Um, you know, build it around the suited aces. We see all the time how powerful they are at finals. A couple of questions from Twitch. Average by aggregation. So it might be a stupid question, but are the players required to put their cards in the, cards in the required squares to be read? Yes, it is in the T's and C's that they are required to cooperate and show their cards. Uh, Tebler says, would the player get a warning and miss an orbit if they kept destroying cards? They're not doing it intentionally. It's just because the cards obviously have computer chips in to be, to be read by the scanners that if they're peeled back too aggressively, sometimes those chips snap and then we can no longer read them. But... There's nothing malicious. It's not intentional. So some people really like to squeeze their cards out. Sure, and there's a little bit of tension here. You're you playing for a lot of money. A little bit worried. You can kind of uh, grip the cards a little bit, a bit, a bit too it's hard. The only way reason I want to be a high roller is you're allowed to do whatever you want with the cards. <laughs> sure, it's like playing high stack stacks back back Yeah, they just tear rip them, them up, up afterward. Yeah. Yeah, and again, really nice spot for Arta. Picking up a very easy jam with the ace jack of diamonds. Yeah, I mean, it's just sweet, sweet relief to pick up a very legitimate holding there on the cutoff. You know, and, and you know, I, again, just to, just to reiterate, this is what we've been talking about in terms of playing that short stack well. Arta started the day very level in chips, ran sort of bad, ran the top two into into uh, a straight. And yes. it's been be below 10 big blinds, certainly below 14 big blinds. There are a few orbits now through the bubble, just staying afloat, finding, waiting patiently, no loose defense. Folded, I think, the big blind off five big blinds. And then it's picked up a couple of shoves and 
you know, remains in contention, both for the big money, the top three places, or in contention for the ladders, making Ben and Adrian sweat and work for their, for their money. And, you know, of course, you know, an outside shot at, at the title, which I know he'll want very, very much. There's a time bank chip played by Artem Artorosium. And this is because he wants to make sure Adrian gets the big blind before him. He doesn't want to allow Adrian to play the big blind this orbit. This is quite, I've seen this before from, from these top, top guys. Uh, it's not something I, I do, uh, but... Yeah, a little bit of strategy feels it's worth it for the time. Look at Adrian. <laughs> he knows. He's like, thanks, pal. Cheers. Appreciate that. Don't uh, worry. It's only going to be 100,000 for the big blind and 100,000 for the <laughs> NC. It's only going to be a quarter of your stack. Yeah, I mean, look at this. I mean, this is this is some run good. Of course, of course maybe Ben or Orban will find aces in the big blind. But this is just beautiful to find on, on, on the button. Um, this much, all into call. Ben Heath with ace four in the small blind. Well, the, the chat can tell us it's an easy call. What's he doing? Scared money don't make money. You got an ace? He had 32 cards? I mean, we've already established that Ben Heath knows nothing about none of the holes in MTCs. And he's, he's certainly not obvious. super high rollers. No, no. Ben, obviously, the extreme short stack. He will get, you know, sort of the, the free hands to come. Uh, there's going to be some collisions. Yeah. Wow. He's so good. <laughs> And open folds as well. And that is going to take us to the first break of the day. And we have hit the break, Sam, without losing any other players. We did burst the bubble, but we are six-handed. And that means we're going to be coming back with a 15 big blind average in this 100k super high roller. Um, that means only one player has an above average stack. That player being Mikiti Brodjakovsky, who's still got close to 50 big blinds. Everyone else with a sub 15 big blind stack. Two very short stacks, Adrian Mateos and Ben Heath. And Mateos posting the big blind and the ante on the very first hand of the next level. More action from the 100K Super High Roller on the other side of this break here at the Pokestars EPT presented by Monte Carlo Casino. We'll see you inside of 20 minutes. Lines are up to 20 and 40,000 with a 5k ante. Tobias Reinkemeyer looks down at pocket jacks. Will we see the min raise? We will. Justin Bonomo also has jacks. This should be interesting. I think there's little chance Bonomo just flats. Three bets to 190,000. Elki and Antonius fold. Masakagawa, king queen off. Most of the time, this is a fold to a raise and a re raise. I'm worried. He shoves. Now, this might look really bad, but it's actually a pretty good move. These guys are going to be opening and three betting pretty light, even though they happen to have big hands. In this case, king queen isn't doing all that bad against their calling ranges either. Most of the time, you're hoping to not get called. Hold on. Reinkemeyer reshoves. At this point, I don't think Justin can fold 1.3 million more to win 2.4 million. He could very well be ahead of both players. I call. He calls. Kagawa's not in terrible shape. He's a coin flip to win in three ways. I have a chance. You're a slight yeah. favorite, actually. One time. <laughs> Team Germany railing Reinkemeyer. Um, Spade is the best in my power. <laughs> Nate, I need spades. Spade is good. Man. Just run out like a seven high straight and give us all our money back. I'm good with that. Good news for Kagawa's. No one can flop a set. Ryan Kamai is now drawing to a chop. Bonomo's got a backdoor flush draw. Bring a hard one time. Just for, uh, for the thrill. <laughs> at, least, at least one. Just for the fun. 
Don't be so mean. <laughs> Just gonna fun. That takes away the heart draw. One one nine. No, no, thank you. Three of diamonds. Three of diamonds. A nine, a king, or a queen, and Kagawa doubles up. Anything else, and he is out of here. Oh. It's an ace on the river, so Kagawa's eliminated. Bonomo and Reinkemeyer yeah. chop the pot for 350k each. You know, I give Masa Kagawa a hard time for being a rich fish, but in the end, it did take two big name pros to take him out. Not too shabby. He will collect 354,500 euros for his fifth place finish. Boy, that was barely a prize jump at all from sixth place. Top heavy, anyone? Nice doing business with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ace King for Patrick Antonius. Raise it up. He makes it 80,000. The hammer. Fold it up. Jack 10 for Bonomo in the big blind. Easy call out of the big blind. Heads up to the flop. Queen, queen, eight with two clubs. Antonius has the best hand, but Bonomo has flopped a gut shot to the nut straight. Justin checks to the razor. Patrick does not continue. He checks behind and hits a king on the turn. Antonius turns top pair. Justin picks up an up and down draw now. Now Bonomo's leading out. Betting 140,000. Semi bluffing. He knows Patrick's going to have to fold anything that doesn't have a serious piece of this board. Don't see Patrick folding top pair, nor should he in general or specifically now. Patrick will call. And we will go to the river. Justin likely knows the jig is up. Nine on the river gives Justin the straight. There's a few hands out there that beat him, but likely Justin is going to bet here for value. He knows Patrick's got to have something decent. 480k in the pot. Justin makes it 380. That's almost half Patrick's remaining stack. You can't really blame him if he calls here. This all comes down to how often he thinks Justin is bluffing with this line. It doesn't look very bluffy to me. Patrick with just shy of 20 big blinds left behind. 10-ish if he makes the call. He's not calling. He's moving all in. This is crazy. I call. Easiest decision you'll make all day. Maybe Patrick was turning his hands into a bluff, but no, given that reaction, I think maybe he thought he was going for razor thin value. Yeah, we'll win this pot. Let's have a big he also really didn't have much fold equity. Had to be a value shove. Patrick Antonius busts in fourth, collecting 443,000 euros. Justin Bonomo is just running over this final table. Well, the good news for Patrick is that he lives here in Monaco, and the cab ride home sure only cost him about a third of his winnings. Bonomo in action again, raising his button. Makes it 90,000. Jack 10 for Tobias Reinkemeyer. Jack 10's an okay hand to call with, but I expect these guys to start ramping up the pre-flop aggression while playing out of position. Well, it seems that Reinkemeyer is still happy to play flops out of position. He just calls. Okay. Also, where the heck has Elkie been? Yeah, they're not heads up yet, but I wouldn't blame you for thinking we were at that stage. Another pretty good flop for Bonomo. A pair, a gut shot, backdoor straight flush. All looks pretty good at this stage of the game. Like my checks, Bonomo bets. Perfectly fine spot for Tobias to just give it up. There is an alternative. Oh boy. Which is to bluff by check raising to 385,000. I think this is just one of those frustration raises that can happen sometimes when you keep missing flops. I wonder if Bonomo thinks the same thing. This is pretty much a gin flop with a hand like 8 6 off. Don't think you can just give it up. Can I see your chips? I definitely wouldn't expect to see just a call here. I'm 
Come on. Bonomo shoves on him. Big fat semi bluff. Really good shove. Even if he gets called, it's pretty likely he's drawing live. He's got 910 on the button here. There's a stand that opens 90,000. Elkie folds what seems like the 800th hand in a row. Ryan come out with King Queen in the big blind. Surely he's going to three bet this time. Nope, he just calls. And stop calling him Shirley, right? The flop gives Ryan Kamaya the second nut flush draw. I think with such a strong draw and a hand that's going to be good a lot of the time, he should probably try to get some money in here. Justin was the pre-flop aggressor, so the check is fine. Justin bets 140,000. We've seen this pattern before. With 10 high and a gut shot. Now, Tobias has the second nut flush draw and two over cards. It's a crazy strong hand against a button range like Justin's. A raise here would barely be a semi bluff. It's almost a value check raise and baffling. This is just a pretty weak play. The turn gives Bonomo a straight. Reinkemeyer let him get there. A check raise on the flop and this hand is over. Reinkemeyer checks. This is the point where Justin Bonomo normally bets 380,000. I think that's a pretty solid guess, James. Oh, he's mixing it up. He made it 375 this time. Oh, you are so wrong. At this point, there's not much Reinkemeyer can do. Raising here would be disastrous about 80% of the time. He lets it go. A missed opportunity on the flop. He gives up another huge chunk of his stack. And Bonomo is now playing 191 big blinds. Having more than twice average when you're three-handed is, um, good. Justin Bonomo raises his button with Jack-6 off. King Jack suited for Tobias. Rankemeyer's got a very strong hand heads up. We know he's got Bonomo dominated. This is a perfect spot for a three bet. He calls. I seriously do not know why Tobias never three bets. It's bizarre. An eight, nine, five flop with two hearts. Though he has the best hand, this is a really bad flop for Tobias. Bonomo has flopped a gut shot. Oh no, and it looks like he's gonna donk it. He does, betting 125,000. This move is questionable. You're donking into the pre-flop aggressor on a board that's terrible for your hand and also hits a huge part of his range. Bonomo makes the call. Four of clubs on the turn. Puts way more draws out there, none of which Tobias could even touch with a 10-foot pole. Let's see if he keeps bluffing at it. He checks. Nope. It's a great spot for Justin to keep the pressure on. Bet's 250,000. Really not much Tobias can do here. I'm not sure what his strategy is, but it's not working so far. He folds the best hand. Justin Bonomo is having everything go his way today, including his opponent's moves. Tobias still super short stacked, but in a way it kind of takes the pressure off having the odds literally stacked against you. Meanwhile, Justin Bonomo is closing in on the 10 million chip mark. Tobias Reinkemeyer will post the small blind of 25,000. Justin Bonomo the big blind of 50,000. Reinkemeyer will have the button. He'll be first to speak pre-flop. King 10 suited. On the button. Easy raise. So he calls. All right, well, all this deception really isn't doing Tobias any favors. It might be time to change his game plan. Oh boy, wait a second. Bonomo with ace jack. Raises. Puts 125,000 on top. A lot of players are gonna shove here, like almost all of them. Another famous Tobias was a never nude. This one is apparently a never raise. Feel bad rooting for him to shove since he's behind and he'll get snap called, but honestly, that's what he should do. No, he elects to call and we go to the flop. That flop gives Tobias top pair. It gives Justin a gut shot. Well, Tobias has finally hit a flop. Let's see if he can capitalize it all. 
Action on Bonimo. He had the pre-flop betting lead. He continues for 200,000. Now does Tobias just call? There are some straight draws to protect against. He shoves. And with all the giving up Tobias has been doing, Justin has to know he's behind. Still with two overs and a gut shot, putting this thing to bed right now has to be awfully tempting. As it stands, he's not a huge dog. Gives it some consideration, but decides to fold. Good disciplined fold. Statistically, he dodged giving Tobias the double up. There's Tobias's girlfriend, Sabina. A little smile from her boyfriend. Justin has taken complete control of this match. If Tobias needs top hair in order to win a pot, this is going to be an even tougher row to hoe than it already is. Small pocket pair for Tobias. All right, it's heads up. You've got to raise your pairs. He does raise, makes it 125,000. Re-raise. Ace queen. Definite re-raise. Question is, how will Tobias respond to that re-raise? Well, I don't think he can just call with a pair. He certainly can't fold it. So Justin makes it 350,000 total. Justin could easily be three betting super light. Come on. Ryan Kamai moves all in. I call. Justin calls. It's a race and the biggest coin flip of Justin Bonomo's life. He's a slight dog, but if he ends up on top, he walks with 1.64 million euros. Plus the super high roller title and trophy. And there is an ace on the flop. Bonomo takes the lead and is on the verge of victory. Awfully reserved reactions considering the money at stake. Ryan Kamai needs a four to survive. And he needs it on the river. There's a 95% chance we're about to crown a champion. It's a seven on the river. Bonomo is the winner. Was there ever any doubt? He's been in control of this final table all the way. Yeah. Yeah, getting to second without ever putting your chips at risk is pretty impressive. Yeah, I was pretty happy that he busted out here. <laughs> but obviously... Lines are up to 50,000, 100,000 with a 10K ante. And on this hand, we are going to sweat with Mustafa. We will only see can it's hole cards. You can it stop a Mustafa. He's first to speak. He's under the gun. With Jack Eight of Clubs. That's a raise to 210,000. No action from Shemian or Nui. Kurganov folds the small. Easy peasy. It's Ali Reza for Tahi's big blind. We know he likes to defend fairly liberally. We haven't seen a three betting range yet. Call. Cool. He's defending again. Fairly confident he wouldn't be playing anything super slow. Well, the flop gives Canet a flush draw plus a backdoor straight draw, and he has two overs to the board. Pretty great flop for us. You can bet your sweet mustachioni we're going to bet it. 250,000. Raise. Check raise alert. 600,000. First of all, our draw is too good to fold. Second of all, when a guy announces raise like that, like he's kind of annoyed by you, he's almost never got it. It's like his voice is trying to overcompensate for the strength of his hand. We could re-raise, but I like just calling because if we hit our card and he's bluffing, he could keep bluffing. Can it calls in position. The turn card is the king of clubs. Can it now has a flush. Got it. 500. For Tehi bets again. Now we have to just call. And now that I think about it, one of the bluffs for Tehi could have had on the flop is an ace high flush draw. And that's a pretty small bet relative to the size of the pot. If he shoves river, I don't know, but for now we're gonna call.
I assume. Yes. So 2.7 million in the middle. Can it the effective stack with 1.42 million behind? The river is a three, pairing the board. Holy. And for Tay, he quickly shoves. That was so fast. I know he doesn't have a full house. But I'm not convinced he doesn't have a bigger flush. He seemed a little aggro with that all in, too. And I don't know if it's because he doesn't have it or because he's annoyed the board paired. Oh, oh my god. Another big decision for Mustafa. I don't think I can fold. Given the hands we've seen Ali Reza defend with in the big blind, I don't think so either. Can it looking at the pay jumps? He calls all in. Let's see it. Queen I. Fatehi bluffing with Queen Jack. Great call, us. Yes. Can it doubles up? Nice hand, anyway. Good stuff. And the Italian takes the chip lead. You never get check raise and boom, boom. Hello, my babies, and welcome back to the Poker Stars European Poker Tour presented by Monte Carlo Casino. Live coverage of the 100,000 euro super high roller continues. This tournament had 37 total entries, and right now we are down to the final six. The bubble has burst. Everyone is in the money, not necessarily profitable but still 1.2 million euros to the eventual winner. Things very shallow here. I am Joe Stapleton. He is Sam Grafton. <coughs> One more time. Hello, Sam guys there and girls. Is. How's it going? And yeah, when we say super high roller, you know, that isn't just a, a, a marketing shtick in this instance. When you think of the biggest tournaments in the world, you think of guys like Makita, guys like Orpen and Arta playing at the highest stakes for the biggest prizes in poker. And, and, and that's what we've got on offer this afternoon. And very, very exciting uh, final. Makita pushing the action over the last couple of hours. And these guys just trying to stay afloat and, and survive the onslaught coming out of Makita Badziakowski, eighth on the all time money list, as we learned earlier. And I don't know if you could be in a better position to win a poker tournament than Makita is right now. When I said things were shallow, it's a 15 big blind average. Makita has almost 50 big blinds. That means Kulev, second in chips with 13. Yeah, and, and we talked about these guys wielding the short stack. There you saw Arta opening off seven big blinds. Coming in for a min raise off seven big blinds under the gun with the suited ace potentially raise folding that hand uh, to further action and shows you the way these guys wield the stack. And the ICM, it's almost like, because the bottom of your stack is worth so much money, it's almost like you're a bit deeper than you actually are because those sure. last chips are so powerful you want to you know not put that last bit of your stack at risk There's you can you can do you can be a bit more creative you can raise fold off shorter stacks you can three bet fold out of shorter stacks yes because there's also like a, a tacit agreement that that's how we're all going to play yes. um and so yes it is a little bit okay. uh and, and that's why it's a little bit of a shame we lost Santosh, who wasn't playing by the rules. Here again, you see just the power, one blocker, suited hands, put these guys to the test, say, hey, can you wake up with a big hand? And if so, I got spades. I maybe got an overcard. And, you know, one, one way it has worked out for Makita, I'm not saying he hasn't played as we expect exceptionally well. He hasn't really run into it too often. Mm -hmm. Ran into Ben sure. Heath, who was extreme short stack with pocket tens, right? Had the what had, but actually had a seven suited in that instance. Had a very sort of nice 30% equity. But you know, you, you can, I've played before and done these shoves and you just run into hand after hand. Uh, it can be sort of frustrating and, and pull you back. But Makita has been able to employ, employ these, these jams in very, very fruitfully. Three deuce off. Going to be committed to Mateus' stack with four big blinds. Can't raise fold to one of the players. 
And Makita is does still open. gonna find the raise with the wow. lowest combination of cards possible. Wow. This is this is pushing the chip lead to the extreme. Wow. And I wonder if Kulev flats here, by the way. I wonder if Alex just takes a flop. Very often Bajikowski doesn't have an overcard. We can see. Wow, we can see he's <laughs> Yeah, really interesting, Alex needs to decide. It's going to be sort of polarized. We've seen him play shoves, right? So the opens are going to be the very worst hands and the very best hands. Does he want to sort of take advantage of that by, by shoving? No, he uh, doesn't. You, do you, you think go, that pal. makes sense? And, and trapping in a hand exactly like three dudes and protecting the weaker parts of your range. And let's... Geez. Oh, my goodness. Bottom two pair oh my for Bajrakowski. For the moment... Kulev's Kings cracked. What? What? Very good board for the pre-flop Razor as well, by the way. Obviously, Kulev has a few of these slow plays, but very few. Doesn't defend many hands with a three or deuce in them. And we may even see slow play off. This is very, very interesting. But, I mean, it's not over yet, of course. Cards to come. This three deuce can get counterfeited. This is a one big blind bet. Yeah, and, and Alex now deciding whether he wants to play check raise or not. Is a board we could potentially slow play further? Maybe let Badziakowski hit a queen or jack with something. No flush draw to worry about. And a further slow play from Alex. He thinks he's trapping Makita. Can't know that he's actually... Oh, oh there we go. Counterfeited now. Yeah, and... I guess neither player is happy to see that card, particularly Badzikowski. Um, three, the, the, the three still going to be ahead, but kicker now not playing, loses to ace three, um, king three suited and the like. Going to slow the action down. Kulev now 90% favorite. Will he put out another bet to protect against overcards? Badziakowski, we imagine he might check. Just pushing, just nudging his equity, folding out a jack-10 of hearts that called with the overcards at a, a, a king-10 of clubs. With the two eights out there, his hand's semi-invulnerable, really. Why are we looking back here, by the way? Talk to me about that. He's just wanting to, you know, sometimes he's going to think, well, do I have a diamond in my hand? Do, no, okay. Just to, okay. Just double-checking. Sure. No. Yeah, no need to raise now. River card. It's the four of diamonds. Yeah, not a great card for either player. Badziakowski, does he show down for a smidge here? Or not? Seems like if we were going to bluff, maybe we'd be trying to bluff him off a three or two. So for that reason, we don't want to be bluffing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we show down for some percentage of the pot against uh, against an ace two, so against a, an ace queen high, perhaps. Um, and flips, flip flop there on flop and turn in the direction of Alex Kulev, who gains a little bit of ground, big separation. Twice as many chips as third in uh, third stack open uh, and still way behind Makita. Exciting hand, though. Dramatic. <laughs> yes. At every turn, specifically, literally the turn. Yeah, Kulev, as Sam mentioned, does have uh, triple the stack of Ben Heath, more than triple the stack of Adrian Mateos, but that is still only 18 big blinds. Yeah, I mean, Kulev particularly handcuffed. I, I, you know, again, I don't want to it, mention it at the top of the show. Really hard to have Makita acting after him. Very good chip position. Ben with a decent pair here. Five big blinds. Mm -hmm. Two and a half in the middle. But no blockers. <laughs> no blockers. If I had my post-it notes here, I'd be writing down that Pocket 8 has no blockers. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But with uh, fortunately with five big blinds. It's it's kind of it's a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> yes, it is. Indeed. What is it? Five hundred? Five ten. And it gets through. 
So how much do you have He's now? quite lovable, Ben Heath. Yeah. By the way, Kulo. Not quite 50. Kulo keeps asking everyone to stack Scott, but he, he loves to do this. Yeah. You mean the online, online guy here? <laughs> Future of me needs to know everyone's stack at all times. It's, 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 by the way, it's a very, very reasonable. I made a, a significant error uh, very recently w when I didn't, didn't know someone's stack shorthanded. So, uh, it's, it's, I, you know, I shouldn't mock, but I had Ben mention it earlier. I, I play not a lot of poker, Sam, and I will say that the times in my life that I have nine, not nine, asked for a count and made a brash decision, I have regretted it. Oh. And the times when I have asked for a count and then actually thought about it for a second, I've made the correct decision. Well, there you go. There you go. Proof's in the pudding. Orpin, under the gun, ace queen, starts the hand with nine big blinds. Third of chips, tied for third. Yeah, and again, I think we do have raises. Often it works where maybe just the offsuit hand we want to shove again. Um, no, going. Four, four, 14? Oh, no, 450. Yeah, he's 450. putting in the majority. He's putting half stacking. Half stacking. The demi shove. The demi shove. If there's. Oh, no. This is very likely to be the end of Orpin Kisisikoglu. Yeah, very legitimate shove. And Makita, who's run so well on this final with an absolute monster in the small blind. Pushing the stack into the middle, and open. Not excited to be called all in or forced all in here. Orpin has made the call. Domination situation. Yeah, and to, you know, again, it's going to seem like I have something against Bucky. It's not that at all. But I got a root for my boy Orpin, um, big hero of the game. Hard to call him an amateur, Goodbye, but that's up or not? Just wait till the river. No. Was that the move or wait till the river? In this case, you can stand up now. <laughs> the tension broke for a moment. <laughs> it can be late on the flop. Referencing <laughs> Arta's stand up on the river a few orbits ago. Orpin's going to need to get lucky. Jack, 9-7, two clubs, a spade. Not a lot there for Orpin to be excited about. Yeah, I guess. It's Some straight cards on the turn for a sweat. Yeah, no board pair, no diamond, nothing extra to work with. Turn is the eight of spades. <laughs> so that's going to give him... A couple of outs. Yeah, and removes, the, removes the a spades, queen. Obviously, no. Removes a queen. Wow. Oh, and he's done it. He stood up. <laughs> River. The nine of spades giving Bajakovsky a flush. And that's going to be it for Orp the Turk. Eliminated from this super high roller in sixth place. Not yet another big cash for one of the planet's finest poker players. Quarter so, mill ball. Yeah, I mean, again, I don't know whether we call him an amateur anymore, but he's probably the best businessman poker player hybrid. Definitely the best businessman poker player hybrid. Hold on, I got Talal Shakurchi on the phone right now. Let's have a <laughs> chat with you. That's true, actually. I shouldn't forget my, forget, forget my boy Talal. Um, Everyone now guaranteed over 300,000 euros. It's a 70K pay jump that well. the rest of the table just experienced. Yeah, really nice for Adrian and Ben and Arta particularly. Adrian down. Can this be right? Is he down to two big blinds? He has posted two big blinds in this hand. Started with four big blinds. Right. Quick crunch the numbers. Da, 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 <laughs> carry the one. Do you need to, 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 yes. Two left. Yeah, very, very short indeed. Yeah, and as a result, Arta and Alex are going to have to play very, very snug because Adrian going to be in, you know, if it, if it folds to Makita, he's shoving super wide. So, again, you just want to sort of bow out, stay out the way. But Kulev with an ace just ensure, you know, just a blocker to, to, to lessen the, yeah. This is what you want Makita to have. You need Makita to have... 
hot garbage, basically, to yeah. get this through. And having an ace is just going to ensure that a little bit more. Goes for the 2.3x. And Mateus, with so much committed, will shove. Yes. No, has he just called? Has he just peeled? Yes, he's going to see a flop with a little bit. He's just going to try and flop a gut shot, a pair, a flush draw. Something. Anything. Mm -hmm. Yes. Queen, queen, seven. That's something. Yes. That's above average. Way above average. Does he trap check? I think he just puts it in. Corey. Corey. Did he hit the nice flop? Yeah, it's big. Mateos does have to fade. Yeah. A, a, you know, nice aces and eights. A diamond, a counterfeit, two oh, overs. Diamond. That's acceptable. Almost seven is fine. <laughs> You're too greedy, my friend. <laughs> yeah, and again, see the camaraderie between these guys. The nope. defending champion at risk, no less, by yep, the way. There you go. Thank you, Sam. Adding story points as well. Turn card. King of clubs. I was close. King is That's not working. a great card. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not a great card for Mateos. Not the worst card. Is he willing in the river? Is he using psychic powers to... He's not standing. Three of diamonds is clean. Double up Mateos. Seven big blinds. Yeah. You know, and to... But more importantly, two shorter sacks than he is now. Uh, well, I mean, I feel like we've covered this for a few hours, and almost every hand, the shortest stack has changed. Because literally, someone puts in their blinds and antes, Change. they become the shortest stack. Change. Someone gets to shove through, someone else becomes the shortest stack. It's been very, very dynamic um, amongst the, 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 the shortest stacks competing. Uh, yeah, but a bit over, under 1.6. I mean, I tell you what, it's exhausting as well. You I know, was just about to two, say, there is no rest. Two full days of poker as well, late into the night, against the best in the world, 100 big blinds deep, 200 big blinds deep, ICM, final table bubbles, late into the evening. Then you come, wake up early, and, you know, things are changing all the time. Very demanding strategy game. And ace-10 right, off more than good enough. To put it all in on the cutoff. The machine that is Nikita uh, Badziakowski. No. So uh, when you shove ace 10 there, no. and everyone is seven. so short, they're basically even, right? Like yeah. it doesn't really matter who's got five or who's got seven big blinds at this point. How many better hands than ace 10 are going to fold? Some, right? I don't think necessarily ace jack. Folds, but it, it's just you don't allow the big blind to defend. And right. also, you're, uh, I don't know about exactly balance, but right, you're, sh you're shoving your queen four suited, your king seven off. And they can't just call you, you know, okay, great. I, they can't just call you jack 10. They know that you are going to have right. those good hands in the in the shoving range as well. Uh, good, inverted commas. But obviously, it's a strong, strong hand. Sure. Just real quick here. Judy Whitlow on YouTube says, love the announcers. <laughs> More of that, please, Judy. And here we go again. I mean, we're just, this, it's, it's all about Badzikowski, I believe uh, another co commentator calls him the milkman. Not much milking going on here, just power poker. This would be like surgically removing the milk or using a hand grenade. <laughs> yes. Blowing up. And Arta with a decision now. Six, but he's out of there with King Queen. King Queen off, not Wild. good enough. Wild. Again, just the money that Ben makes. Ben wants Arta all in there. King Queen against seven eight offsuit. It's absolutely fine mm -hmm. for Ben Heath. Absolutely great news for Adrian Mateus. Ben Heath now has the dubious honor of being the shortest of the short stacks. We got about eighty five big blinds in play total. Repping the animal equality hoodie as well. One of the charities. Ben supports. Do you know that Ben is such a serious vegan that he doesn't even believe in flopping anything with a face? 
It's just beautiful. All low cards for him. I hope we've got a lot of viewers for this guy. You know, eight, by, eight, see? You don't, even, you don't even hold that back for, <laughs> you know, there's some premiums. <laughs> Look, by, by the way, I, I, I just said ben, was, ben traditionally picks up something under the gun. I feel like, is this, is this a glitch? Didn't we see this exact moment? We yeah. have, yeah. Yeah, it's eight under the gun yet again. Do not adjust your TV sets. He's all in, right? Yeah. And he's going to get the call from, from the dominating hand. Uh, from the hand he dominates, rather. Great spot for... <laughs> Great spot, but eight. still eight. stressful. Yeah, last time I had eight as well. Ben knows he's done his job. Down to the poker gods now. Both players pretty relaxed. One of those unavoidable confrontations. Jack, queen, eight, the case, eight. Makes things a lot simpler. Just a king or a ten. I guess an ace, ace. Though I don't think that could possibly happen. Sam, don't do it to him. Queen, queen. He's way out in front now. Queen, Turn queen is a seven. That's it. It is. Call it. It's over. over. Double up Ben Heath. Yeah, love to see it. Ben Heath. Um, yeah, one of the most talented poker players in the world and one of the nicest guys as well. Don't know whether he has has a 50K buy-in bracelet. Won two 25Ks at the last... Well, Prague was at the last EPT stop in Prague. Um, he has not know, won one of our 100Ks, but I feel like he might have won another one. Yeah, hasn't won a... I don't know whether he's won a 100K, but certainly hasn't won an EPT super, super high roller. Not that the sort of top, top one that we offer. It was on this final table, I believe. Well, it was certainly on the Barcelona final table, Mikita one, whether he made this final. I think but it was a know, quick exit for Ben on that one. A lot of seconds, a lot of thirds. Would love to see him take it down. I remember um, texting Ben, good luck, and then he went broke on the stream five minutes later. Sure. So then when I, curse. when I texted him, good luck, he'd already been eliminated. Yeah, <laughs> and I brought it up. I'm like, he's such a nice guy. And he goes, yeah, I didn't want to spoil it for you. <laughs> like, that's what his sweetheart he is. He wasn't like, I'm out already, you idiot. <laughs> he was just like, oh, no, 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 let's let Joe. That's very typical. Live in the, live in the moment. I walked in with my eyes closed, so I couldn't. Couldn't see any spoilers. <laughs> nice. Here he is. It's all Gucci. Hey, Deuce suited into the muck. Alex forced. And we, this is very familiar. Bajikowski, we we've seen it so many times. <laughs> Heath, nine big blinds. This is a unnecessary balance. Just puts the money in. And what can Heath call Ooh, with? Play along ben. from home. Ben! Ben with ace eight. Arta with six. Adrian with seven. He's actually third in Makes chips. Makes the call. call. Ben Heath going to be the slight favorite. This one is real sweaty. Yeah. Would love to have seen some, a hand he really dominates or, or two unders. It's going to be occasionally. Queen 10, very, very live. Another big all-in for it's Ben Heath. Too well. live, if you ask yeah, me. I'm not great about this one. <laughs> <laughs> My hand just doesn't look nice. Let's see. Bajikowski is the player that needs to hit to eliminate Heath. Jack, oh, no, four, four Trey, two, two clubs. Three straight. Three flush. Maybe, was it? maybe it can redeem itself. Turn card. Is an ace. And just a gut shot now for Bajiakowski. King you are good. required. <laughs> You're good. River card. Not a disaster. Not for Ben Heath, at least. Ben doubles up a gain. Yeah, and that's a uh, that's big separation. That one counts. That's big separation. Ben leaping into second in chips. Right, two all-ins and wins against Bajikowski. Twenty-one big blinds, acting after Makita as well, which is really, you know, really nice table position. Not handcuffed as Kulev has been when he's been second in chips. 
And, you know, we'll have to be mindful of getting involved, but really puts him back into contention. And the, and the nice thing for Ben now is, is McKee has got to just tread a tiny bit more carefully because they actually would swap positions. If Makita were to double up Ben again, Ben would go to 40 and Makita would plunge down to 20. It's not going to handcuff Makita, but it means he needs to tread just a little bit more carefully. So very significant double there for Ben Heath, who makes the big call with, with the ace eight off. We saw him fold ace queen, of course, earlier to uh, Makita. I heard someone ask for what the payouts are currently with five players remaining. It's big. Fifth place, 323,000. Fourth, just over 400,000. Third is over 550,000. Second is over 800,000. And the winner gets 1.2 million and another 38,000 on top of that. Sometimes we just say 1.2 when really the rest of it is still a significant amount of money. Sure. Gonna have some fun with 38K. Yeah, and McKee, uh, you see, with the 21 big blinds, a lot of those open shoves drop out, and nice spot for Ben in the small blind. Gonna be incentivized to shove here very wide, and with actually a very good how hand, so just a little bit of acting almost from Ben to balance. You don't want to fist pump before you get it in here. Yeah. Makita, five big blinds, checking out Arta's stat. Probably some kings are calls here. Is king three gonna make the cut? Five big blinds. I mean, you don't dominate any kings, but occasionally you can be against a 3-4 a suited queen three. Really difficult spot for Adrian. And again, in the bank, what would you do here? I'm bad, so I'd probably shrug my shoulders and be like, yeah. If you're ever in a position to make 150k by folding, you, you're going to fold Joe Stapleton. I think this is my prediction. I've, I've done it for I way mean, less. Look at it, look, <laughs> this is how tough final tables are, by the way. This is this is a great tournament poker player, unsure what to do. You know, where people say, oh, it's a solved game, etc. Et it's so dynamic, so difficult. I, mean, I think with Arta so close, probably is a fold with the offsuit king. But who knows? Obviously, would be very live against Ben. All in and call. And neither way are super happy with the situation they find themselves in. Ben would have really sort of, The only person really happy with this is Arta, I tell you that. Arta, very, very happy with this situation to see Mateus all in. This would really clip Ben Heath's wings if Mateus were to double up. Playing for the win. Queen, 10, deuce, ace high, still holding for Heath. He managed to dodge everything on the first all-in. Dodged it all on the second all-in. So Can he go three in a row? Someone always makes a pair, mate. Seven on the Someone turn. Someone always makes a pair. It's a three or a nine, I feel, on the river. Mateus at risk, defending champion at risk with one card to come, by the way. Fifth and final card. Mateus willing it into existence. Not a king, not a tray. Another all-in battle won by Ben Heath, and that's going to do it for the reigning Monte Carlo Super High Roller Champion. Yeah, and we can just say once again an amazing performance from Adrian. Mainly, you know, didn't see the great man in action too much. A lot of folding, but such tenacity to go again we have like come million now? within four places of retaining uh, that title. Sure, yeah, almost. Yeah. 
Almost exactly. In just a superstar of the game. Exiting and fifth. And Ben Heath, I mean, it's not been easy. You've got to win three all-ins in a row, by the way. Shot up the chart from five big blinds with those pocket eights under the gun to 29 big blinds here. And Arta also in a, a much more favorable position. Four big blinds. I mean, Kulev and Heath are going to have to watch themselves, particularly Alex. Arta now free to get these four big blinds in. You know, can't really outweigh anyone. In fact, he's in the big blinds. My goodness. 450. 450 behind. Yeah. Kulev with the blockers. But Ink is pro... Well, I imagine you've got to fold this. I don't know. Just four players remaining now. Everybody guaranteed over 400,000 euros. Alex is aggro, by the way, though. But he's going to come in for a raise here. 220. Wow, does come in for a raise. And we'll see what Makita on the button with four times as many chips makes of this. Yeah. Oh, he's... He's on the car for the, for the button here. Oh, it's big blind only. That's, that's what's happening here. Got, and Ben behind him with 30 big blinds is going to keep Makita in line a little bit more. In line with about half the chips in play currently. I wonder if, I wonder if we could peel there with eight deuce. 20 minutes. Hmm. <laughs> Arta having a yawn. <laughs> so another day at the office. Yeah, it is, but it is when you're Arta Martirosian, that's for sure. And, and, and there, by the way, you just see Alex's bravery, basically. Just, you know, I think a lot of people would have just let that Queen Jack go. You've got two bigger stacks, you're really incentivized to play snug. Comes out with the raise, sticking up for himself, picks, finding a way to nip and tuck, f make chips where others might not have. I like that, calling folding bravery. No, sorry, uh, Alex, Alex, raising under the gun with the queen jack off. You know, raising into the two bigger stacks in position. Um. Ben Heath with another monster hand forehanded. So, got the button. Don't get to play many flats, but maybe at 30 bigs, they're close enough. Badzikowski has to play in line so much that we just want a flat here. Um, obviously, it's just, you know, I mean, ace 10 of hearts dominates a lot of the opening range. Wow, wow. What are you playing, bro? Three million. Wow. And a potential, potential cooler shaping up for Kulev. 12 big blinds. I think if Alex were deeper, we might even see a flat hit. But Makita going to be opening very, very wide. And so he's going to just put it in. And 1.350. Might Maybe a bit more. get through Ben here. Ben, Ben's got to flat some very strong hands here. So Ben may have tens, may have jacks, may have ace-queen suited here. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. ace-ten not... And Kulev isn't going to be goofing around. Right. I, and you can see it's, it's close for Ben. And again, it's going to be about the individual. I think you can see maybe he's leaning towards a fold here, by the way. Um, yeah, Ben in agony, by the way. Not an easy decision. Is there is there ever some King Ten suited here, right? It, it, do we, it, can, can he just can ever he, probably maybe? But is there a lot of them? Okay, yeah, but so it might, particularly when it's suited. Hand, is there is there is there an ace? What, what's Kulev going to do with Ace Nine off? Right? Is that enough combos? But of course he has Ace Kick. He just shoves Jacks. He just shoves Queens. There's no mm -hmm. three betting from right. Kulev, right? If Alex, if Alex Kulev has kings, he just goes all in. If he has ace king, he goes all in. And th this is, r again, just you see how difficult the decisions are on these big final tables. 
a lot of money out there. And ben lets it go. Has been running pretty pure the last few hands. Does not decide to take a fourth run at the all-in situation. Yeah, and, and, and you know, you also see just the power of putting the money in. We saw open shove king-queen and get king-queen to fold. There you get nines, and you get the ace-ten suited, the two overcards, the flip to fold. Um, again, you know, we know this about Alex Kulev, not afraid to put the chips in the middle when he, the strategy suggests that you should do it. And really nice pickup, by the way, picking up you know, five, six, six and a half big blinds, up to 18 bigs. Now it's King Jack for Ben Heath. Yeah. Oh, so you have exactly 400. Yeah. Exactly 400 is four big blinds. Yeah. 250. Three, 250. 250. Yeah, opening slightly bigger into Makita's big blind, wanting to avoid confrontation, just giving a slightly worse price on the defend to the covering stack. And Kulev with the ace six suited. Do we three bet all our suited aces here? Do we, do we have a three bet fold? Do we shove? Do we just pass? Let's keep our nose clean. Wait till Arta busts. All options, this is just all options open and depends on your yeah. personal strategy. Is there, is there something, I, I doubt as much we can exploit in Benning's game, but do we know anything about him that could push us in one direction or the other? I, I like that you call this as all options open rather than trying to make a prediction. I think that Five, that's a, yeah. And this is, yeah, I mean, this is something I think we, we see. And, and you're targeting the offsuit hands, right? You're targeting the offsuit hands that can't flat the blockers, and tiny three bet, by the way, two, 250 mm -hmm. made it 575, mm -hmm. such an efficient sizing. Uh, and you see what makes Alex left. Kulev uh, such a strong three, three behind. poker player. And Kulev four, actually four. overtakes yeah. Ben yeah. with that yeah. pickup. So a lot of times you'll hear, oh, that was a small three bet, and uh, I was getting a really good price, so I had to peel. Does that exist at this point right now? No, because basically on finals, you just do, you can't bluff catch as liberally. You can't put the bottom of your stack at mm -hmm. risk. You just have to keep your nose clean a little bit more. It's much more of a pre-flop pre game. You don't get to float flops or, or, or play the streets in quite the same way. So Makita now 39 bigs versus 23 bigs. We're not in that quite as much of a, well, actually. Choo choo, here we go. Yeah, Big raise nine. from Bajakovsky yeah. with the off-brand Grafton. Oh, he's, he's, yeah, he's on the button with, um, uh, that makes sense, with Arta in the small blind. With, uh, Arta in the big blind. Easy. Easy hand, easy game. Well, Arta, what did Arta have there? Poor guy. Put half his stack in the middle and had to fold. It kind of had much. And now has to put half a stack in the middle again. Yeah, I forgot about Arta there, how, how handcuffed Ben is. Two big blinds for Arta Martirosian. Not quite chip in the chair time, but getting close. I mean... In fact, it might be one physical chip after this, Yeah, it right? could be. <laughs> I mean, I guess there isn't a 200K chip, but uh, what if he puts one in for the small blind next hand? Ben would have loved some, some suited. Right? Suited Nothing. Qualities here. The Marty McFly is going to do it anyway. And we are going to run it. Ben Heath's 8-5 against Arthur Martirosian's drum roll. Queen three. It's big. 
bequeath. Well, maybe not that. It's live. 42%. Ben had a little bit of a tricky orbit there. A few difficult hands. Can he put Marta Rosi into the sword? Ace, eight, five. A yeah. pair of eights for Ben. And that's a that's a strong flop, right? No back doors <laughs> for Arta. Chance, Goodbye, just, guys. well, I guess there's a wheel, but uh, just the queen we'll overcard. Yeah, really tough. Oh, some more stand-up <laughs> magic yeah, being no, attempted. No. I'm staying neutral here. <laughs> you know, I like the ensemble a lot better with the jacket on. Wait, well, he's ready for the bad weather as well. Turn card is a deuce. Hmm. Yeah. That's some more <laughs> outs. It's gone from three out, not <laughs> three outs to six outs. Wow, he's, he's wandering off stage. <laughs> That's too much. Not he's too like, much. I'm, I'm really going. I'm leaving. River card. There's a five. <laughs> wow. wow. It works again. Uh, this is tough of oh, yeah, look at Arthur. Oh, off it uh, comes. Smiley. You should start thinking about counter tricks, you know? <laughs> He's owning us right now. Double up, Arthur Bonarosian. Now back up to six big blinds. Yeah, he just won't be killed off this man. And you see, sort of, uh, you know, obviously, this is someone we think of as, you know, hard. You're Strong yeah. poker, three bets, four bets, aggression, can't do over it now. bets. And, but actually, we see just another side to Arta Martirosian, which is tenacity, fighting, making the, this tiny stack and joy. work for him. Yeah, well. How about a little joy in there? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, you know, just, yeah, and, it's, and it exemplifies what we know about all these players is, you know, whatever the stack size, they're going to play it, play it well. And also, I mean, the pace doesn't let up. No gamble, gamble. <laughs> <laughs> the pace doesn't let up. Four-handed poker, off, very demanding. I would go all in every hand. <laughs> With that walk, Kulev jumps in front of Ben Heath. I like four big blinds effective. That's, yeah, that's yeah. your specialty. Yeah. <laughs> you go sick, you don't know what to do. I know what to do. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, I mean, particularly Ben doesn't want to double up Marta here, right? Pull him almost level with Ben Heath. He doubled through Ben. And King Queen from Martin Rose in. Sight for sore uh, eyes. Yeah, exactly. King Just Queen on the button. Aces by another name. Yes. Six big blinds. Again, two and a half out there, each and every hand. Oh. Kulev out. Lajikowski, queen four, also out. Alligator blood. <laughs> for the Russian. International crowd. How much you have now? 1.93, including the big. There it is from Kulev. Take a drink every time Alex asks someone stack size. Um, but make sure it's water <laughs> because uh, we want to be hydrated and not dead. Yeah, responsible gaming. Uh, Makita with the Ukrainian flag also coming out of Belar Belarus. Kulev uh, with the Bulgarian flag. See, also sort of one of Ireland's finest, much revered in the Dublin poker scene. Ben Heath with the UK flag. Also, a Madrid resident and part of, uh, I don't know, whether part of the Spanish poker scene, but uh, connoisseur of Spanish wine, let's say. <laughs> Very international <laughs> crowd. Arta, of course, Great. with the Russian flag. EPT Sochi winner. Who have lace for suited. Ben Heath in the big blind. 18 big blinds to start the hand. Yeah, and covered, but in a situation where Kulev can't go wild against him, it's going to allow him to defend that bit more. Nine seven off, not very appetizing though. Kulev, of course, opening sort of a lot of the opens begin at nine x, 
uh, going to be dominated. You want kind of maybe lower cards than 9-7 in that exact situation. We'll put it into the bin. And it's been going well for Alex Kulev. Obviously, that pocket nines pick up, forcing the fold from the very beautiful ace 10 suited. 26 big blinds played. A kind of snug strategy with Makita acting behind. Picked his spots. And stayed afloat, sort of maintaining, actually, a position of second in chips. Mm -hmm. Here he goes. Uh, checking in. Big, slick energy for Alex Kulev. First to act, second in chips. Deciding whether he wants to open to a bigger size here, I think. You kind of don't want Arta to, to necessarily peel eight, nine, suited or six seven suited you want to semi commit him got makita acting after him does he want to go two and a half x is there a three x or a four x open here does he want to just min raise and keep his his whole range the same size Sorry, 245, goes goes for 2.4 did that right off the top of your head huh oh boy hey quick fold from ben heath with the ace deuce Short on time bank chips, by the way. Three, put one to work there, down to three. Four hundred K guaranteed for each and every one of these players. Playing for that big one point two million. And you know, but as I said, you know, the, you don't get to this level in the game without a ton of competitive spirit and will to win. It's not the money is very meaningful to these guys, of course, to backers, to swaps, you know, to their own bankrolls. You know, you go on a downswing at these stakes, it can really, really hurt you. Yeah. Important to pick up wins and seconds and thirds. Yeah, but, of course, that super high roller title, whether it's a first, a breakout moment for Alex Kulev, or whether it's a, a you know, a coronation and a, a continuation, someone like Makita, the super high roller Barcelona champion, um, will be very meaningful. Doodle Zombie says, amazing. Sam grafting the commentary once again. I'm going to allow that. You are grafting a lot of knowledge into the uh, into your speech here. Pleasure to listen to his insights of hands. Agreed. You made me blush. And yeah, true. <coughs> ben Heath. First to speak, ace 10 again. Yeah. And again, similar to the King Jack off, just sort of functions as two blockers to tens to the ace kings to the stronger holdings. Um, not super exciting hand. Uh, very, very clearly going to be an open for Ben Heath. And, and, you know, nice to get dealt on open, but not a, a sort of premium despite the fact that we're four handed. Obviously, nice to have a hand that you can comfortably call Arters all in. I think that's that's something you want. And Bajiakowski, King Jack, suited in the big blind. This could be wow. go time. Could just go for a shove here with the suited version. Could defend as well. Will dominate on occasion. Yeah, this will flick it in. It's going to be a defend. Two very, very live against the ace-10 off. Jack right in the window. Jack, seven, deuce, two diamonds. Heath does have the ace of diamonds. But as it stands. Yeah, Ben going to have way the stronger range on this board. Ace of diamonds working for you will get check raised less, less frequently, better run outs. Can also check behind. Um, being sort of in the middle of your range and continue on diamonds. Turn bricks off. And this is going to give Makita a very strong indication that the jack is best here. Quite often, 
going to be up against a pocket tens type holding or you know an ace king or the like can go for value here and now probably going to use a sizing which allows him to bet a seven and five also perhaps on the on the smaller side keep his range together i don't know just goes big with the, with, the, with the top with the toppest of pairs makes sense as well really strong from makita recognizing the bends perhaps a little bit capped unfortunate for ben heath at least uh, you know a lot of people would have been tempted to see bet that might have lost a little bit more and ben Back in trouble a little bit now, down to 13 yeah. big blinds. Not worked out too well for him. Uh, you know, just getting jabbed out these sort of middle of the road hands. Obviously, that's bad river with the 8 5. Could prove very significant in, in how the money. Of course, it seems insignificant for like two additional big blinds, but actually, uh, it's the elimination of a player. And like I said, uh, when there's 70 big blinds in play, two big blinds is a, is is not nothing. By the way, check this out for Marta. Min raising of of six and a half big blinds with the queen ten off. Ben Heath getting an amazing price in the big blind, but is this just? I mean, is this just aces and kings, right? And 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 you're just going to run into it too often. That's, by the way, very cheeky little raise from Arthur, by the way. Going to raise fold there, the Queen-10. Is that how that's going to go? Really see these uh, short stack strategies, you know? I mean, a few years ago... Seems pretty balanced to me, Sam. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to do it with aces, you got to do it with Queen-10. Well, I'll just maybe overdo it a little bit. If I had to, if I had to guess. <laughs> There's a lot of off-suit broadways that you can start to min-raise. But, yeah, why not? You know, put that, put that stack to work. 12 and 7 big blinds. Ben back into that range where it's a lot more comfortable for Bajikowski to shove on him. The king is a significant card on the button. Does he want to put it into raise fold or do we just rip? There we go. Power poker. It's been the most common sight of this entire broadcast. Nikita Baziakowski putting his opponents to the test. This entire final table has been ICM Jail and Makita, the warden. <laughs> the sheriff of Nottingham. <laughs> Get in the dungeon, boys. The ICM dungeon, <laughs> manacled <laughs> to the walls. Serving hard time under Makita's watch. You're lucky he change you up right side up jailhouse rock <laughs> and king eight for makita we go again Here we go again <laughs> yeah again kula 26 big blinds gotta be aware a little bit harder to shove on the cutoff gonna want to play more raises Ben Heath, who's had such a troublesome time over the last few orbits, picking up a very inviting look at Ace Jack. We know how wide Makita's going to be opening this spot. Really, really nice to pick up a semi premium. Twelve big blinds. One point two eight. Ben Heath, all in. Ace Jack. Jack. No Hollywood for Makita. Just checks the stack. And Ben picks up a crucial pre-flop pot. Still third in chips, but seventeen big blinds. He's got a little breathing room. Yeah. It's Marta Rosian yeah, who I, is. I, and also, the, these six are slightly different to before. At least. 
you know, obviously when we're seven-handed, you had, okay, you put in your blinds, you got your six big blinds, you got five hands to, to, to before you start putting the money again. Now, obviously, you only get sort of two free hands before your stack is eaten up again. So Arta got to keep up the pace, find the shoves, or find the de defense, find the, the cards to put the money in with. And Jack-8 suited on the button. Looks very, very pretty with six big blinds. But what about fold? You make money if you fold. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, puts it in the middle. Not been too many. Wow. <laughs> and Zikowski. But see, we can see it is a domination situation. Also serves Mickey a little bit to keep the bubble going. Although, if he, if he, you know, obviously, if he knew what Martirosian had, he would be in there like swimwear. Obviously, Makita finds it's close. No, there's going to be some nine-seven suited, some some Jack. Exactly what. Martirosian has. There can be some, you know, 10 9 off could well be in the shoving range. Mm -hmm. But if Arta has ace jack, he plays it just the same. There's mm -hmm. no, not much else going on with the top combos that, you know. Are all of the other jacks uh, well, queen, playing this way and dominating Makita? Well, he's not queen shoving. Queen jack, king jack. Yeah, but he's not shoving, and he's not shoving jack deuce off or jack right. three off, jack five off, you imagine. So Makita like forced no, off no. the best hand. Clinging on for dear life, Arta Martirosian. I mean, everyone except for Makita has been shorter than this at some point. Arthur's probably swimming in it right now. By the now. way, this is big stack for Arthur. He's probably That's what I mean. Yeah. He said... Be, Six and under for the last hour. He's got nine. Luxurious. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's his day. Maybe it's his day. And there it is. The Grafton makes its appearance. Oh, beautiful. Let's go, Arthur. Let's let's go. Under the gun. Min, min rays call off. Induce. Make your Uncle Sammy proud. There we go. Look at this. Right, Dressed in black. What can, what can go wrong? Unless you're getting, I mean, nothing. We, look, we want to call. We certainly do want to call. We, the audience. He fights on closing the gap on Ben Heath. We are only a few minutes away from the blinds going up. And actually, Alex and Ben can, can, can hurt Makita. Um, this chip lead, significant, but not entirely unsurmountable. A queen on the button. Again, maybe we want to just raise this one to balance against the the stronger hands. Hmm. Nikita working through. Can he just jam? What 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 does their calling range look like? Does go for a raise. Yeah, you're a little. I think that's nice. Sam, you're in their heads. No, but I mean, look, look. This is, by the way, this is just very sort of run good. You don't notice. You have queen six off on the button. You're getting shoved on by X number of hands, and they just have seven deuce off and three deuce off. Right. It's just a very, very delightful outcome. I mean, you must have some idea, right, that they aren't folding monsters to you. No, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's you get you get you need to shove plenty. You want to, I mean, you want to play eighty-five percent of hands or something. So some of those need to be shoves, wow. um, and then some of them. Some of them are going to be raises, and the, and the raising range is sort of polar between the, the traps, right? I'm going to snap you off with jacks. I'm going to snap you off with ace king suited, and and the kind of trashier hands. So, so what you do is just shove a lot of suited combos and, and, and raise these kind of offsuit. Lines are going up in just a couple of minutes, too, by the way. Then now with jack nine on the button. 
covered by Kulov. Again, a bit of co collision effect if he folds, can let Arta... And he, oh, by the way, talk about Rumbat. Arta, it's folded to him in the small blind. Right. He's had to walk Alex about four times in a row. This is another hand that's not exciting to play. Maybe a queen good enough. Nine bigs. There's two and a half out there. Is it good enough? Oh, well, you weren't asking me directly, right? Because I, I don't know. I, no, I, I have just, no idea. This, this is what he's Rhetorical. Thinking. Okay, good. He, it limps. Oh, it was good enough, turns out. We're going to see something fruity here. <laughs> How do you know? It, How do you know? Cool. We could see anything here. This could go raise, limp, jump. This could go raise, fold. This could go check. These two, like, just imagine these two sick individuals, by the way. Just two sick, sick poker players. Checks the five deuce. All right, let's play some street poker. Okie dokie. First flop in a while, seven, six tray. Both players flop a gut shot. Yeah, good board for, for Alex's range, right? Arta, not gonna be limping as many of these low cards. But as we see, Arta with some nice interaction, spade and mm -hmm. gut shot, dominating Alex. Might be nice to attack now. Just fold out, mm -hmm. uh, a, a, you know, a, a sort of a, a queen deuce suited that Marta Rosian might have. What does Marta want to do? Do we go into check call mode? We're ahead of the eight tens and, and nine tens and the random, you know, a jack five stab. Oh. Does check call. I mean, we haven't seen many turns this entire day. Yeah. Six on the turn. Board pairs. Can we lead here? Kind of likely that Kulev actually bets any piece of this board that he has. Uh, and for that reason, Arta checks. Kulev trying to assess. There's some, I mean, if Arta had trapped with two high cards, can we get them to fold now? Vars again. Not much has changed. Obviously, there's a small percentage of the time now that the, the queen is just, is just dead uh, to a six. And we'll fold the queen five. Alex Kulev getting it done. And Kulev, one of the halves, not Hals, one of the halves. He has chips, has 22 big blinds. Bajakovsky with 33. Heath and Martirosian, the have nots. 12 big blinds for Heath and six for Martirosian. Now, y'all are a little late to play the first EPT mini happening from Monte Carlo that started at 315 today. And my guess is we may not be on the air by the time the next one starts. But they are running. 315 currently running. 615 kick it off in just a couple of hours. And another one at 815 today. Scoop tickets added to the prize pool of all tournaments. And the mini main event coming up later in the week. Gets you a scoop ticket, a 1K scoop ticket for everyone that makes a final table. And the winner of that gets an EPT Barcelona package. I can see that uh, one of my co-commentators has arrived for the day. What's up, Nick? Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me. Hello, Sam. Hello, bruv. How's it going, buddy? I thought that was Hargan, you know. But he's stuck <laughs> in there. Hello, <laughs> mate. We're back. We're back. Oh, shot clocks in force. I like the little black shot clocks we got now. Those are kind of cute. Actually, yeah. Uh, actually, if the whole place blows up, that'll, that'll survive <laughs> and, and record. If we, you know, if, if if there's an explosion on the main stage, it'll reveal to us Makita's whole cards as the bomb went off. <laughs> we'll know exactly who is on, no matter what, oh. black box style.
and blinds have gone up. Yeah, 35 bigs for the chip leader, not a huge stack. 35 chips and half the chips in play. Excuse me, 35 big blinds, which is half the chips in play. And Makita, again, the suited combo, just all in. Ben did wake up with Ace-8 one time and make the call. But it's been a very profitable spot for Makita all day long. The way that sort of chip lead compounds on itself. That hand with Ace Jack early on just propelled him to the chip lead and he's taken full advantage of it. Position on the very aggressive, very talented Alex Kulev, keeping him in line. And just been able to open into these short stacks willy nilly, if you like. And number 87 now. I mean, uh, Makita's played like 62 of them, by the way. <laughs> ben Heath now. Here we go again. Here we go again. Four-handed poker. You know I love it, Sam. Yeah, and, and nice to pick up a king here, by the way. In, in a spot where you know you're getting called a lot. Much nicer than the 8-5 off. Yeah, yeah, indeed. And obviously being out of position here, probably just a jam. What do you think, Sam? Yeah, I mean, Arts has got four big blinds. We're just going just gonna to windmill it in here. And sort of just hope Arta doesn't pick up. Wow, oh, here we go. Oh, wakes up with Ace-8. That's actually a oh boy. very significant wake up here for the recovery. Marta oh, Rosian doubled you know, through yeah, Heath before. I don't know about this one. Maybe and one he time I will be high on flop. I don't want to stand up every, every while. Favorite to do it again. Will he stand up again for the stand-up equity? That was magic. I saw that one just as I walked in. Love to see it. Still alive and well. Yeah, and, I mean, this is part of tournament poker. A bit of gambling for the boys. Ho, oh, ho, hello. King on the flop for Heath. Going to put him way out in front. 84% against Martirosian's ace high. Not a whole lot of backdoor situations either. Got to find running cards for a straight. <laughs> Or find an ace. Drawing dead this time. Drawing dead. Whoa. Drawing dead. Another king on the turn. That is going to be lights out for Arter Martirosian. Fought valiantly, clawed and scraped, and worked the short stack all the live long day, but finally succumbs in fourth place for just over 400,000 like euros. Mar Arthur exiting with grace and class and 400K. Yeah, great play from the big man, Arta Martirosian. He will be back. Pro I mean, he'll be jumping straight into another tournament, uh, probably into the main event. He's a such time. a grinder, such a talent. Oh, and a very worthy fourth place finisher. And Ben Heath does manage to knock out Martirosian on his second try. Ben up to almost two million in chips now, which is good for almost 16 big blinds. Yeah, and it's game on. Of, co of course, Makita, 35 big blinds. It still yeah. remains yeah, nearly just, just a smidge under, under half the chips in play. Of course, a big favorite, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, the shorter handed we get, the less you can leverage uh, that short stack. When you're taking directly from the chip leader and, and potentially flip-flopping them, you can, you, can be, you can fight that bit harder back against them. So, you know, this, this chip lead, not quite as powerful as it was full ring when there was four big blind stacks and five big blind stacks. And, you know, Alex Kulev, Ben Heath, very, very talented players. Makita the favorite, but this is anyone's tournament still. Ben is shoving from the button. Threads up poker has begun. What's, what's it, what do you have here? Yeah, I like to see this from 16 bigs. Kind of suited. Jack nine suited. Jack ten. Suited. Little mystery is good in life. Oh, I was small blind actually. <laughs> no, he was already small blind. But fun. No, maybe it was. Was it big blind? It might have been. I think it was big blind only. I think it was. Yeah, one point nine nine. Is this a guess, Hayden, or is this uh, inside information? Yeah, 
for. Yeah, obviously those shoving ranges highly affected by the fact we still have our big blind anti in play. An extra big blind in there does make a significant difference. Little blind be blind now. Yeah, now we're going to get back to, to, to seeing some flops. Um, we already saw a little confrontation between these two where Alex whipped out a quite cute limp re-raise with the ace-deuce off, forcing Makita out of the pot. I think we see quite a lot of calling here, Sam. Do you guys want to know what Ben Heath had there? Sure. Queen Jack offsuit. Wow. There he was. I was about to say Queen Jack offsuit before, and then they told me the answer, and I was like, give me a chance, guys, because yeah, I'm course. probably going to get that. But yeah. You knew it was, it was some sort of offsuit forward way. It felt like it, yeah. More of a feel guy. Mm -hmm. Ace-Ace-10 ace, on the flop. We are going to see some flops. Queen high holding for now. This is an interesting board, isn't it, Sam? It's one of those that probably you just, a lot of players just stab, super dry, Ace-Ace-10, ace, not that much action pre-flop, but when you get to this level, You'll find a lot of players finding the king high floats, the queen high floats, even just some air ball floats to try and take it away on later streets. So I, n I would expect Kulev to just check it here a lot of the time. That's kind of a level one mindset. Yeah, the SBR is pretty deep here, right? Yeah. We're playing, you know, 360 in the middle and 2.39 behind. Don't get that much done with a one big blind stab. Yep. And, and also just aggression goes down when you're playing against the chip leader. Kulev, again, deciding whether to stab or delay a bluff to the river. Can, can force out some, even just for, forcing out some, some dominating fives is quite nice. But Badziakowski, queen high, not certain to fold. Yeah, definitely a consideration Over card here. to a 10 is kind of nice. Yep. The queen high is kind of nice just in itself. Will come along. Kulev six high. Going into the river. So flush comes in. Ten makes a boat. Two is counterfeited. So Badziakowski, you know, if he had a five do suited or a, a, an eight do suited is sort of counterfeited. Eight deuce, of course, would, would still, the eight would play. So Kulev may feel with six high here, obligated to bluff. Does he want to randomize in some manner? Nice to have a, a spade in hand. What size would you go if you had a 10? What's your value range look like here with ace 10? Yeah. Right using a time bank chip. And one thing to remember is Alex doesn't have many time bank chips. Got to be very careful. Do we, do, we get, do we bet every six high, five high, queen high, counterfeited two? How do we control our, our frequency? And what is the sizing? What's our worst value bet? What size would we go with a flush? Is there a smaller sizing or is it just a pot sizing? If I had an ace, what sizing am I going? What do I want to match up with? Am I repping an ace? Am I, re uh, am I, am I do, a, do a 10 and a flush? Goes, and he goes Ooh. for the over bet. Makita with a bluff catcher. Nine is, is nice, I think. Don't, doesn't bluff nine high as much as five high and six high and seven high. Queen, queen three would be a much worse holding here. Mm. Would rather, but he has queen jack. He has king highs. How does he, doesn't have a spade in hand. What, what does he want to have here? Does he ever check back an ace on the flop? How many tens does he have? What frequency does he have to call with the queen nine? Really tough spot versus a brave, brave play from Alex Kulev. And we're, we're seeing... 
two top poker minds go to war. This is such an interesting spot, Sam. It's really, really tricky to know what to do here. And obviously, Kulev absolutely capable of bluffing in this spot. Yeah, as we as we see. Yeah, suddenly, suddenly, Queen High just actually starts to look like quite a tantalizing call here. I mean, M Makita's a combinatorics guy. I mean, he he learned his poker not with solvers, with pen and pad, and he will be working through the problem from a mathematical angle. Can he pick up anything on Kulev? Is there a live quality to this? Queen Jack would certainly be better to have. Queen Nine with a with a spade. Perhaps spade doesn't go over bet. Is there anything we could sell? Would, would Kulev, if he had a ten, just go bigger than this? Probably not. Alex is gonna gonna. I'm on number three. Gonna balance and and it's, this is a big decision for Makita. It's a huge swing as well, by the way. It would really push Alex down to the short stack if he can make this call. And Makita would be back to shove. Uh, yeah, that's shove true. Toshi. And he lets it go. Wow. Alex Kulev gets it done. Nice work. The first real swipe we've seen anyone take at Bajovkovsky in quite some time. Kulev narrows the gap between himself and Bajovkovsky. Yeah, and, and that is high stakes poker. That is execution. Nerve, courage, study, coming yeah. together on the biggest yeah. stage so for the break? young pretender. It's one thing to do that in the Big 55. It's another to do yeah, it with Makita Bajikowski. Wow, Makita needs some water here. Long levels. I mean, there's, by the way, such a demanding form of poker, three-handed against the best in the world. Um, Makita in each and every hand. Ben, what do you play? Two point... I had 2.23, so I have 2.11. Yeah. One one. yeah. I appreciate the honesty between these guys. So much respect. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. we've, all, we, we've all been there, Sam, haven't we? You're sitting at a live table, and you're like, how much you got? And they don't even want to show your chips, and they got yeah. their hands in front of them. It's just like, there, come on, there, guys. There's a nice vibe at high stakes now where... Where people, it's like we all just say, and we're not we're not asking to get a read or right. something like this. We're just, I want to know, you want to know. And Bajikowski with the trap now, coming in for a limp for the first time. Oh no, he's sorry, he's gone for a raise. I, I, I apologize, he's gone for the polarized raise into Ben. Again, going to balance this with some junk, and with the big hands like pocket nines. Ben, with a suited 10, deciding how to proceed. Yeah, it probably is a defend, right, Sam? <clears throat> yeah. Not much fun. One overcard to the nines. Not the worst flop in the world, though, to try and get away if you're Ben Heath. Bajikowski with a very strong holding on Queen A Trey. Even yeah. though, of course, he's going to be sweating the Queen a little bit. You're going to have the best hand here a pretty overwhelming amount of the time. So I expect him to find a continue here for like one quarter, that kind of thing. Yep, they're even smaller than that. Yeah, it's very tricky at the SPR. Ben going to have all the gut shots, the Jack 9s, the Jack 10s. King Jacks with an overcard. So this is also the kind of size, Sam, where you could consider floating with the backdoor hearts, the backdoor straight draw as well. I mean, you just need to defend a lot versus his size. Yep, absolutely. Maybe gives him a bluff on a nine or jack. Sure. Wow, that is a very spicy card. Bajikowski obviously more confident that he has the best hand when the board pairs a little bit. But he's now with the draw and still the 10 over card here. That's a big equity swing there. 25% going to the river, but also the opportunity to bluff if he chooses to do so. Yeah, and we're seeing some real street poker now. What weird SPR, 1.6 million behind, 1.4x pot. Badziakowski 
betting again for protection and value, particularly targeting the 8x and 810 suited and 87 suited, which is drawing very, very thin against pocket nines. And Ben in a position where he cannot fold. Big River incoming. Pot 1.8 million and 1.2 million back for Ben Heath. Brick. Yep. Complete brick. Now, Bajakowski obviously has a bit of a decision here, right, Sam? Does he try and get max from the eight, possibly a three, possibly weaker? Does he slow down at this stage, give Heath the opportunity to, to bluff at him? Possibly kind of a bluff catch situation. Your hand is so strong here, though. And the sizing, obviously, intended to leave Heath with less than one um, one pot behind. In fact, 1.25 behind in a pot of 1.8. So if he wants, he can go for all of it here. Yeah, and it's really close for Makita. Deciding between block, shove, check. Is there a small sizing on the river? Yeah, really interesting here. Two hands in a row, super, super tricky spots from some of the best in the world. Kind of not a great buff catch up with the, with the hearts and blocking the 9, 10, and 9 jack. Goes small, goes for 400K. Yeah, really cool little blocker situation here. Obviously getting paid by the Ochos, by the trays, and the like. Possibly thinking that Heath... And, and you see Ben doesn't... I mean, Ben, one presumes, is just thinking, can he get a, a shove in over the top here? Yeah, it's so... So tricky to know what to do in these situations. Yeah. And will fold. Makes the fold. Yeah, very unfortunate for Ben. Worst hand pre-flop. Made a very close flop float. Picked up equity and then bricked. All right, guys. So yeah. it appears that the players will get that impromptu break that they yeah, requested. Yeah. So they're going to head off on the table. We're going to do a quick review. There's the wide. Let's take a look at some chip counts. Mikita Bajakowski at the top. 42 big blinds. Alex Kulev, 24. Ben Heath sitting at the 10 big blind mark as we've seen a couple exchanges as soon as they've gone three-handed. Ben Heath, the one at risk. Ben Heath, the one in the danger zone. Still a lot more to come here. Three-handed poker, you guys know I love it. Yeah, and, and it's really ratcheted up since we've gone three-handed. These guys forced to battle it out, blind on blind, wide ranges, bluffing and bluff catching yeah. down the streets. You know, and a real change in the dynamic from the pre-flop wars and pre-flop battles that made up the majority of this final table. Very exciting to see. Yeah, two really interesting pots there, guys, resulting in Ben Heath being at the bottom. But anything can happen at this point. Threads up, as Stapes loves to see, loves to say. And let's take a look, guys, at some payouts in just a moment. Let's see what these players are playing for here at the Super High Roller final table. There we go, winners taking home 1.2 million euros, runner up 800K. And our third place finisher will be taking home half a million euros, just a little bit more. Some seriously big money here in this 100K situation. Yeah, and, and Ben and Alex obviously looking to get their first I don't want to say first super high roller title, but really, you know, a, a gem in the crown of any poker player's resume to win the Monte Carlo 100K. Such a long list of accomplished winners um, in this tournament. And Makita, the Barcelona champion, looking to add a further title to his resume. Going to all be very, very hungry to take it down. Yeah, absolutely. Super prestigious situation to find yourself in. These guys absolutely want it very, very badly. Speaking of recent super high roller champions, let's take a look at a few. 
Timothy Adams, Prague, 2021. Adrian Mateos, of course, Monte Carlo, Monte Carlo 2022, 1.3. Nikita picking up the 1.9, Sam. Yeah, these are the post-COVID champions, right? <laughs> these are the big boy ones. Yeah, they've been getting bigger and bigger. I mean, yeah, and, and I mean, it's, it's no surprise, really, given the quality of the players. But Mateus and Makita both back on this final table. But you know, what a list of players. The, I mean, one, one of my favorites, the great man, Henrik Hecklin, Rodrigo Seiji with the first Brazilian Super High Roller title. Ike and Chris Brewer in Paris. Yeah, absolutely amazing to see how much money has exchanged hands here. Obviously, big buy-ins, big payouts. Obviously, main event day 1B has been underway today. In just a moment, we're going to take a look at a couple famous faces who have joined us here in Monte Carlo, who will be taking part in this main event. Potentially, might be seeing them on this feature table throughout the week. Let's take a look at some famous faces. This is Manic Loiser, our 2019 EPT Monte Carlo champion, of course. Big legend of the game. Absolutely. I was commentating on him when he took it down. Yeah, just an outstanding poker player. Long-time player veteran. Oh, uh, wow. Alexander Shilko. Fresh-faced PSPC champion. That's right, PSPC champion. Absolutely loves it. Having a great time there out in the field. Boyish. Maria Lampropoulou, 2018 PCA champion in the mix. Love to see it. One of Argentina's finest. And of course, Look. Dimitar Danchev, <laughs> 2013 PCA main events champ there. Grizzled warrior. Martin Jakobsen, the ever present. Does he ever miss a stop? Let's be real. Just the pro's pro. And the of course, poker player's poker player. The one and only Alexandra Botez here Box in the mix. Botez. She, <laughs> loving it, Sam. Flashing the grin. Absolutely. This is her second bullet, but hopefully she can get to a final and to a feature. Let's see how we get on. And that is the wide shot there, guys. Big clocks, big money on the line, Sam. Yeah, I mean, one of the nicest places, tournament rooms to play poker. They opened up the, the curtains yesterday with a view of Monte Carlo Bay. Just remarkable to see um, such a glamorous venue to play cards in and, and really, really nice stop. We're sort of spoiled. We almost take it for granted. Had it for so long. Uh, you know, everyone gets excited about new stops, but Monte Carlo, just an outstanding place to play poker each and every year. Big prizes uh, up for grabs. And Makita will relinquish a rare, rare fold on the button with the queen four off. Um, and Heath, nine big blinds. You need to veep it a lot with so much money out there. Limps and shoves in play. Only no one of his whole cards. Will. How much fat. Just one point, one point two five to start the hand. Yeah, comes in for a call. Yeah, it's interesting when they have those exchanges as well, Sam. Everyone just chip tracking so well. Just absolutely knows exactly how much they're in. Not, not eyeballing one chip, just going exactly 1.25 from the start of the hand. And, of course, when you're looking at those charts, it's what you start with that counts. It's those starting at chips that will indicate what kind of lines might be suggested. Kulev in the big blind, obviously significant advantage. Two to one chip lead over Ben Heath. Probably just want to take one here, Sam. Probably take a flop queen four off. Probably not great at this ultra shallow effective stack depth. Yeah, not sure. Uh, Alex is going to know it, know it well. I think certainly a king four and an ace four. We want to just rip. Maybe queen four doesn't get there. And again, you see this board. Obviously, we don't know heat's holding. Could it be a six seven of spades, uh, or the like? Um, you know, but nine nine five, almost like a flop. I, I don't want to say a flop didn't come out, but you know, only two cards on the board. Again, going to be a lot of this high card on high card. And Ben will put out some chips. Yeah, you might imagine Ben will have something like six, seven here once in a while. Yeah, I mean, six, six, nine off might even be a 
old priest. So actually we know he's not. And, and Kula in the position we saw Makita in. Queen high has some, going to be the best hand some of the time. Yeah. Needs to continue pretty wide. Yeah, I think I, I think this is a call uh, for the most part. You're definitely going to be facing a lot of bets on this ultra dry flop. Queen high does become a float here in position. See how it goes in the turn. On the turn, five of clubs, double paired board. Actually not bad for the queen X here, Sam. Yeah, and now any bet would be very polarized from Ben. And again, it's just keeping track of your range. Again, strong players, making sure you don't have too many bluffs. See, six, you know, there's some chance Ben has a boat here. Um, if he has a checks over to Kulev. And again, what do we want to do with the queen four? Can we sort of protect the queen high and force out some equity? Do we just want to check this down? Does our, our range become two face up when we check back? We want to keep the nuts in our range a bit more by betting. Just checks back. And a queen comes off. Great card for Alex. Ben Heath. Does he just have a 6-3 high? In which case he may, the same as we saw with Kulev, feel obligated to fire at this river. If so, what's the sizing? 480. Yeah. And Alex gonna feel obligated to call. Ben turning over six, three. Wow. How do I know, by the way? Wow. It's too sick for me. Too sick. Too sick. Well, I'm, I'm just, I'm just gonna do a mic drop. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> and after that, guys, we do see. Ben Heath take a huge hit to his stack now from nine or ten big blinds down to four. So he is in the ultra danger zone. Well, I'm going to play one of these one these days. Show these guys what's up. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to yeah. just read that, by the way. <laughs> Can somebody clip that for Sam, please? Too sick. Too sick. Too sick. Nice read. Um, and Ben, yeah, as you say, four big blinds. Really tough spot. Obviously a little bit unlu unlucky. Right, it, it, the river comes a brick, and if the river came a seven, really hard for Alex to make that call. I think we would see the same from Ben on a whole host of river cards. Sort of went for the sizing that he, he would he would if he'd had a 1. queen. 1.5, 1.6, and uh, 3.2. Kulev, Alex Kulev chipping up to 30 big blinds, competing with Makita for the chip lead, and Ben Heath. You? Gonna uh, on five, the button. Five, five. Gonna need to. One, gonna very likely either shove this button or be all in from the big blind. Not not always, but very very often. So we're gonna see a slightly wider, well, a very wide mm -hmm. shove here from Heath. Would would love to see a good friend of mine pick up some playable cards, but straight into the muck. And again. Alex in a position where he has to tread very carefully. Uh, like 530. Against the covering stack. There we go. Take a drink, guys. Take a shot. Going to be put through a limp here very, very often. Might even play no raises here. 450. Well, I'm completely wrong. There you go. There you go. Maybe, I don't know, maybe Phil's going to play tighter, so, so gets to, to play raises. See, Makita can't go wild against Kulev because it would switch positions if Makita made a misstep. King 4 off does have some 3-bet bluff potential. Kind of proceeding cautiously against what should be a reasonably rare open one imagines. Though again, don't want to uh, pretend I know this spot better than than uh, Alex Future and Mikulev. Ben Heath now, guys, 
Two big blinds. Yeah, not, not fun. No, not ideal. Not a whole lot of wiggle room here. I think we're going to see some action. Can Ben Heath find the run to develop a stack here and get back in the mix? Both players, Makita and Alex, are going to be definitely sweating that pay jump there. Very significant three-handed, of course. Pulev on the button, King-5 suited, and of course, our friend Ben Heath in the big there. So he's got about two big blinds in front of him, two big blinds behind after he puts it as big blind ante. Yeah, suited King. 275. Definitely a hand that you want to play. Ensuring that Ben can't sort of call and then get away in some fashion. Makita, I believe, folded. It doesn't look like he has cards in front yeah. of him. Uh, this might be a spot where Ben is pretty much priced in, right? I mean, especially with Queen 9. Yeah, Ben's going to take a second to be sure about what he wants to do. Yeah, high stakes, definitely worth a consideration. Queen 9 actually not the worst wake up here. Definitely a hand that has pretty good equity, even sometimes will be the best of it. And there you go, we're in. And guys, we're going to the races. This is for Ben Heath and his tournament life. Currently, Kulev out in front, but only very slightly, Sam. Yeah, I'd love to see Ben uh, stick around. Obviously, easy to okay. guy to You're going to do the sleeve when I actually have to leave. Okay. <laughs> and a little kidding around after Arthur's <laughs> miraculous comebacks. I mean, if it works, it works, Sam. And, and you take any edge you can get. We're That's going to a flop, ladies and gentlemen. Heath at risk. And that is a very, very damning flop for Heath here. Kulev, not only with a pair, but also the king high flush draw. How does he have 40% equity? Yeah, they were nice enough. Wow. Can that be even be right? No, no there 17. it is. 17, I was going to say. There we go. There we go. There we go. There yeah, we go. there we go. So the turn, the deuce of diamonds. Heath not dead yet. Queen is looking live, guys. Put it out there. One time for my boy Ben Heath. Somehow, he should stand up. It's a mistake, Ben. Stand up, Ben. Stand up. He's not taking his edge. You got to yeah. take every edge you can get. This is a high roller, buddy. Going to the river. To get heads up. The deuce of clubs, and Ben Heath is eliminated in third place here in Monte Carlo. Taps table. Taps table, indeed. And we are heads up, ladies and gentlemen. One of the, the nicest guys in poker. All heart, all talent. Ben Heath out in third for very respectable wow. half a million dollars. Yeah. Half a million euros, rather. Um, yeah, claps in the chat, please, for our friend Ben Heath. Absolutely um, class really act. Like Stellar that. poker player. <clears throat> Looks like uh, we're just going to get some stage direction here. We're probably going to position them in the classic heads up sure. scenario. Of course, you got to do it. Of course, a little miss on scene. Can't have them bunched up together when we're playing. Maybe even, maybe even the trophy on the table. I mean, that that surely is an option. I don't know who the stage manager is. I mean, if it were up to me, mate, we'd be pulling the euros out and putting them, covering the table in them, as if it was Benny Binion. Yeah. So let's take a look here at the chip counts after we see the exit from Ben Heath taking home. Half a million, just more, a little bit more. Yeah, and these guys have been one and two for nearly the entirety of the final table. Makita continually putting that chip lead to work, putting guys all in, shoving, raising, three betting. And credit to Alex Kulev with the chip leader on his left, survived to get heads up very, very close in chips, just two big blinds less than Makita Badziakowski. Yes, indeed. So 37 big blinds effective. Could be a very interesting heads up battle here. Two of the best in the world, if not the best. We're definitely have, gonna have a battle on our hands. Let's take a look at uh, some payouts here. We obviously can see there that Ben Heath took the half a mil, 556,400 euros. Let's take a look at what they're playing for now. 1.2 million for a winner here. Super high roller, final table. Yeah, and of course, you know, I don't want to be dismissive of what Alex Kulev has achieved, both in the live round, particularly 
on in the online realm when he's on, on a hell of a heater, tearing things up. Very, very well-respected player in his own right. But in some ways, we do have something of a battle between a young up-and-comer, a little newer to the high roller scene, without that sort of very obvious live title against the force that is Mokita Bajikowski. Barcelona super high roller winner, a whole host of uh, titles, super high roller titles, yeah. bracelets, online cash game success. You know, this would be a remarkable so story to see sort of the underdog in some way, Alex Kulev, come through and claim his first title. Absolutely. We're getting back to the table in just a moment, guys. And this is it. We are going to be playing for the win here as we return to our feature table here in Monte Carlo. In fact, our final table you need a phone? here at Monte Carlo 2023. Look at that trophy, Sam, that golden shard. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful trophy to, to win. These guys, maybe even a little bit looking at numbers. And, that, and by the way, that just shows you... Um, the esteem or, or the way these other guys view Alex. Of course, poker, live poker success is just that much bit more in the public eye. The photos, the blogs, yeah. the, the trophies that you win. Um, but, you know, amongst the top guys and all poker players, you know, online success in many ways, even harder to come by, to consistently do it on the online on the online felt in the way that Alex Kulev has done over these last few years, um, you know, emerging onto the scene, sort of a little bit pre-lockdown through the COVID years to, you know, become one of the top poker players in the world. A young lad with a lot of confidence. Yeah, interested to see how this pans out here, Sam, as you say, look like they might have been looking at numbers there just very briefly. Of course, if anything happens regarding deals, we need to make it official. It will go through Toby Stone, our tournament director here in Monte Carlo. He will help us assess how they're going to do the chop. So both players agree when we do it all on table, of course. Yeah, I mean, it looks like maybe, maybe they didn't. But, you know, what I'm saying is, uh, yeah, I mean, might be a little bit of a newer name to... Uh, to people that just follow the live game, but uh, say the future of me versus Fish 2013. So what's the trick here, Sam? Your head's up, this moment of anticipation, because when you're in the flow of it three hand, all of a sudden you have to stop and you have to, you I know, mean, like reassess the tables. So dynamic, these these uh, these final tables switching, four-handed, three-handed, you know. Now, obviously, essentially ICM doesn't exist. Uh, once you get heads up playing back to playing pure chip EV. Um, see, there's no one else at the table for a big stack to leverage you against. You're taking directly it's from your opponent. It's close. I have 4.5 here. Little discussion there with the rail, of course. The ever-present rail backing up our players here on the final table. Yeah, I mean, super high roll is not, not as much of a a rail ethos just because the way the poker schedule works now it's just non-stop um guys jumping into day 1b very very juicy 1b of ebt monte carlo definitely one of the the best ebt main events alex by the way with two time banks and that you know, might not become a factor, but might prove significant. Certainly, he won't be wanting to relinquish one unnecessarily. <laughs> what are they saying to him? Didn't quite hear it. There he is. Speaking of tournament directors. Sorry? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can, can look at the numbers. Looks like they do want to look at numbers. So if you want, I can put the, I can show you the numbers for an ICM. I don't know if you need that, but or you can just talk a deal here on the table. It's entirely up to you. So I can help you with that spreadsheet if you need or not. Yes, you 
to play for around 40,000. So that's the important number there, Sam. Players need to play for at least 40k. They can make a deal for the cash otherwise. Would you like some help with their numbers? Or? Uh, I mean, we could, could you just divide it to stakes or what is it? Just yeah. Take a look. Yeah. yeah, they're going to want. They're going to basically ask for the chip chop numbers, uh, and I, I, I guess just looking at the way they're approaching things, in all likelihood, there'll be some kind of deal agreed. Yeah, and of course, guys, just a reminder: Makita thirty nine bigs, Alex Kulev thirty five. So really, they could do a pretty even chop here. Yeah, I mean, Makita will be getting his four big blinds worth of e of EV. Right, but. Um, just taking a little bit of time while we're waiting for that to happen guys let's take a look out in the field we're going back to the we're going back to, we're going back to take another look at this here um, no, again just worth emphasizing uh, what a stacked final table this was and see we you know we were treated today to actually watching the bubble play out uh, our boy santosh exiting in seventh in a uh, flip nines against adrian mateus's um, ace jack suited that put us all in the money open exiting in sixth ace queen into the makita's ace king suited out for two and a half uh, times the buy-in adrian mateus next to exit calling off with king high against ben heath Artemo Tarosian battled the short stack throughout the final table, finishing in fourth. And as we just saw, Ben Heath leaving us in third after a run of bad cards. And now we're heads up. Makita versus Alex. Once again, another look at the payouts. Can't be understated how much we're playing for here in Monte Carlo. 1.2 million for the winner, 800K for the runner up. Such a significant amount to exchange here. Of course, these guys coming in with the big buy-ins, the big payouts are here. Yeah, and, and of course, again, you know, the, these guys will, will play this out and, and both, I'm sure, will be desperate to add a further title to their resume. You know, one would imagine, particularly for Alex Kulev, I mean, I, I know I got second in, uh, in the Barcelona 100K. At the time, I didn't really mind, but I really I sometimes wish that I had that <laughs> title. Don't we all? All right, guys, we're coming back. Let's take a look at the state of play. We have the official right, laptop out, Sam. All right. So I want to see numbers. Just want to come here. Should be reasonably straightforward, one would imagine. Toby so this get. is your chip stack. Okay, Alex, 4510. Yeah. Makita, 470. Okay. Uh, I see I'm chip chop is the same now. There's a two of your left. This is what you have to play for which is 10% of remaining. Now I can adjust this if you want. I can make this 100 grand, I can make this anything you want, and that will adjust the, uh, the ICM. So currently, Alex, this would what you would get if you just did a straight split <clears throat> right now. Mikita, that's what you'd get, plus the winner would get this. So, um, could you show us the numbers out of this like 400, sorry, basically like how we divide in this uh, 390,000? Is it, or is? I'm not sure I understand. So the now we have to, to yeah, remaining is four, four thirty, right? Mm -hmm. So four yeah. thirty minus forty three is like three ninety, uh, three ninety, right? And could you please show me how is this three ninety being divided? Because like what we already, you know, what we already received Aren't, for a second yeah. place, it doesn't matter. It's already like settled. Yeah, well. But I want to see uh, how much we actually, like you know, could get uh, on top of it with the deal. Or like basically, what is? Sorry, just just tell me what is the second second price, so we can basically. So here's the first price. Here's the, the second, price. second price. And, and we've taken, we've added this up, and we've taken two of them off. Yeah, um, okay. So uh, what is the difference? Can you get? Can no? Okay. Can you, no, no, no. Can you get back to the previous page? Sure. So. It's and, like uh, after school with your maths. Yeah, <laughs> so basically, yeah, nine, carry nine, the one. Nine, six, you do what nine, you do. Nine, six, Excel for wow. Seven thirteen mm -hmm. minus. Up close and personal. Seven, the say? official Seven deal maker hundred. spreadsheet. So he gets 189, and I'm getting like 10,000 about this, right? So we could play for. We 
Nikita, just trying to establish, okay, what is my, how much more is my stack worth than Alex? Do I want to sort of trade in this chip advantage for the extra 10K or extra 15K or whatever it is and then play for the 40? Or do I want to just play out? And I guess in this exact instance, Alex, somewhat more junior player, just, just keeping Sturm and letting Makita decide what he... Okay, uh, no disrespect, but I feel like for me, it will be better to gamble it off unless I have like a small incentive not. For me, I see like 4K, which is uh, what, like 1% of the extra money is something I could agree on dealing. And it's totally fine if you prefer to play. So you want 4K more? Yeah. Than this? Uh, so like more or less 1 million and 10? Yeah. And 4K from here and playing Just 43? Bit. Yeah. Something like that. So significant. Okay. One percent of development the price here. Prices. Otherwise, I would feel like I have small edge. And he just I mean, wants the extra 4K, just just to indicate that he has a slight edge heads up edge, on top of the split in chips. So you get 4K more, and then we play for 40,000. Yeah. And the trophy. Yeah. Yeah, we could take the 4K from here, put it here. I, I mean, thought, just, I thought no, what you were saying no, just, was just, just 4K it from here yeah, to here. Just, yes, exactly. And that's play what for that. Yeah, that's what so we're talking about. It would be, so for you, it would be 992713. Pretty interesting, Peter, actually. One, really interesting. Oh, one, oh, okay. three, five, three, what about 3K? Playing for this. Just to make a deal, 3.5. Okay, 3.5. Okay. All right. There we go. Chip chop and an All extra right. 3.5 is the deal. So, should be. Nine, nine, so six, let's just double check the numbers here. Seven, one, Toby seems three, happy. Minus I think he's happy because usually this takes much, much longer, Sam. Actually, That's the thing. <laughs> no, it's, it's nice to see. And also, by the way, just to nine, emphasize, three, sometimes it can seem like these guys are, three, oh, they're also two, rich, no one cares, like blah, blah, blah. But yeah. you see how seriously three, they take their edge. You know, they know this is a, a game of small edges, one, and they're not willing zero, to really zero, concede six, anything. Three, five, um, obviously, three, very amicably done. Plus, and no, Three thousand five hundred, and no shame, by the way, in in, in, in one, buying two, out if, nine, if you do feel your opponent has a eight, tiny edge and, and nine, passing that money. Three, I think again, I, I, I sense, and this is not something I would say I know. I think for Alex, no, we're guaranteed this amount. The, yeah. the title yeah. okay. is is what really really okay. matters yeah. here, yeah. and right. he's Thank happy to give up three k and then just okay, let's put uh, Makita to the sword when we play. All right, guys, so just to be clear, that has been agreed. The final deal that was made here, Sam. How many Sam, of those do you have? Alex Kulev wants 993,213 euros. Mikita wants 1,009,853, and they're going to play for 43,074. Great. So. Also very nice. If Alex wins, he gets over a million. Makita already guaranteed over a million. Right. The winner will get the most money. Yeah. Right. If Alex overcomes Makita here in the heads-up battle, he will finish by taking the majority of the money, which is something I, I don't know, maybe it's a bit old-fashioned, but I do always love to see. And, you know, we're in for a treat. Uh, these guys playing for a significant amount of money, 40,000 euros. But more importantly, this super high roller title, yeah, and I think I really, really appreciate what you said there about the, the three and a half case. And a lot of people in the chat now going, oh, nickel and diamond, these guys are worth millions. Like, it's three and a half grand, guys. And it still represents a portion of the prize pool, which he believes might be the edge that he deserves outside of a pure chip chop. Oh, just a moment. Yeah. I mean, I'm happy. I believe Makita has just requested they shorten the levels to 15 minutes. I love this. Ready to get it done. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so once they've done that chop, it's pretty then, close. Uh, no, she's going to change it to 15 minutes. Okay, okay. So both players agree they're going to reduce the clocks to 15. They're going to get this done. Yeah, and um, now to the serious business in hand. 35 big blinds deep. Yeah, I mean, also, it's worth remembering that the way that we view these tournaments, right, like when, when you sit down and, and play a $100,000 tournament, you're not just looking at it being like, first prize is a million. I'm going to make 900K if I win. You think of it as, I have a 5% ROI. I have an 8% ROI. I have a 3% ROI. We play some of these tournaments for very, very yeah. small edges. Very small edges. So, you know, 
if you're if you're playing every time you sit down and play 100k, even if you were to say have a 10% edge, which would be the very top players in the field, you're making 10k. So to to make an extra 3k in this tournament is a significant amount of money when you look at things from the long run. And Alex here with the 52% equity, but nice flop for Nikita with those very well those nutty nutty outs the six and the jack to make a straight and this is one of those difficult things in heads up poker with the wide ranges of how you approach the king three forced to defend with the backdoor flush draw in play And we could see maybe some big sizing on the turn here with the 9-8. Do we want to just check back and realize our equity, keep the pair outs live? Or do we really want to pressurize, force out maybe some dominating hands on the turn, knock out a two, force out hands like king three, which actually, of course, has 68% equity in this exact scenario. 900. Yeah, and we go for 1.5x pot, putting many hands of Alex's range into an indifferent situation. And first blood to Makita Badziukowski. Shades on, all business. Just to say again there, guys, on screen, the actual and advertised payouts playing for that 43,074 and the trophy. And as Sam always loves to point out, that trophy so meaningful, that title so prestigious here in Monte Carlo. Sure. I mean, they're just going to spend the money on girls and pizzas and, and pastrami sandwiches here in Monte Carlo. <laughs> girls and pizza. <laughs> you know, just going to blow it on bananas and taxi rides to Nice. So, those, those bananas so expensive. Yeah. And Makita, considering whether he wants to do something with the 8-4 off, Versus the limp. Checks. You know, of course, these guys are going to be using some processes of randomization to control frequencies. And a good board, you would imagine, for the limper. Alex, of course, with the best hand. The nut deuce. 120. No need to sort of check back, try and err towards showdown. Just want to, you know, if we force out two overcards here, we force out two overcards with a heart, all the better. Your hand, you, you know, Makita, you know, if that was checked all the way down, entitled to 26% of the pot, mm -hmm. and you just take 100% of the pot here and now. And obviously, after that discussion regarding regarding the um, the extra three and a half k that was agreed during that deal making, Sam. Obviously, these guys now playing for that forty three thousand uh, all still contributes to that edge. So these guys are still going to duke it out here. And of course, that trophy right there, we can see it shiny as ever, looking beautiful. I mean, it's a treat for us to see these guys uh, go to war. Absolutely, and the the agreement uh, to shorten clocks as well means we're going to see some action. Guys, you need to play for it right here, right here, right now. Queen 10 suited, very strong hand, heads up for Wojciechowski. We are on the deeper side, right, Sam? So we're still about 34 big blinds effective here. I think limping this is fine. I think raising this is fine. It's probably about 50-50 split at the stacked up, heads up. This surprises a lot of people. They see, see, see Queen 10 suited, they go to strong hand, heads up. But in many cases, what you want to do is call, prevent your opponent from pushing you out of the pot by three betting. You realize the equity of a very playable hand, but not just that. 
when you limp with hands like queen 10 suited, the big blind checks, you're forcing them to play ATC out of position, right? Where you could have them dominated. They're going to be forced to defend certain hands where you would have a very nice hand that improves well and uh, just generally is a great hand to play from position. Here we go, dealer. Four of clubs, eight of spades, three of clubs. Actually, a more favorable flop here for Kulev, really. Bajakowski definitely has one of those combos I think you like to check on 8-4 Trey. Queen high just going to be the best hand here a lot of the time. You don't necessarily need to be barreling this flop, but either is probably okay depending on your plan for later streets. Do expect to check here from the GTO wizard that is Bajakowski. Ten of diamonds in the turn. Very nice. Yeah, nice outcome for Makita. I think Kulev probably does lead here some of the time. Ten of diamonds obviously an over card that might be checking on the flop. But um, you do need to sort of semi-bluff your draws. A lot of the time, if your opponent misses a flop bet here, they will have combinations that don't connect with the 10 that are still high cards. Some king highs, some ace highs, some queen highs that aren't queen 10. So I do expect him to bet. He does. 360K, probably on the chunkier side if you're going to bet here. After a missed uh, flop bet from position. Yep, very chunky indeed. Love this sizing. Bajakowski now. Really, really nice opportunity for him to make some chips. Yeah, very, very strong top pair. Alex, very polarized with the sizing. Sort of representing a two pair type holding or a strong 10. Yeah, I mean, the fact that Kulev leads for such a large amount, I think you're happy just to call here. This isn't a spot where I don't think, it's not a spot where you want to raise, I don't think. Yeah, and Alex. Looking for a two or seven. Ooh, it's one of those interesting ones, Sam. He improves in a way which very frequently might give him the best hand. Yeah, I think yeah, it's outdrawing jack nines, outdrawing. I mean, it seems unlikely someone would have ace five of clubs, but outdrawing queen jack, for yep. instance, yep. is nice. I think Bajakowski can still have some 4x, some 3x here when we're playing heads up that he might check on the flop for fear of being check raised. I think probably we see Kulev slow down on this river and try and get to showdown or maybe a blocker bet. Yep, there it was. There's the blocker bet after all. And this is interesting now. Bajikowski's hand here. Definitely seeing that blocker bet sizing might be tempted to try and extract some more value from his 10x. I mean, anything could happen here now. Really, absolutely. We could see Ray, we could see Ray shove. We could say see call. We could. I mean, this is an intricate river spot with very wide ranges. Just a call. Yeah, makes a call. The polarized turn bet means that doesn't want to sort of raise the one pair hand. Um, and Yeah, seems good. Another big hand, by the way, for Bazikowski, stretching away a little bit from Kulev. Still deep, 28 big blinds for Alex. Because um, even, obviously, these over bets, this is starting with three big blinds in the in the middle. But, again, a nice hand for Makita. And, and, you know, again, just sort of card distribution. You, you flop an open-ended in hand in position and Alex doesn't improve yep Alex flops an open-ended straight draw and you improve to top pair yep it's, you know that what while there are edges in heads up poker as in all forms of poker you know they are small and uh, with two top players who runs best is gonna be a big big factor in in where the title ends up yeah absolutely I think both players doing exactly what they're supposed to do there just one of those distribution issues and no improvement for our friend Kulev after that big bet on the turn. Now, obviously, dealer big blind flip-flop. Kulev now has position. Starts with a raise with a 6-7. Start of this hand, 26, 27-ish big blinds effective. Neither player really connects Kulev with the betting lead, having raised pre-flop. I think probably a pretty clear continue. Now that we're around the 25 big blind mark, Sam, we probably see some more smaller continuations, don't we? Something in the region of a quarter here on these drier textures. There you go. Just under.
Yeah, and again, King High going to be good pretty often. Would rather, of course, have a club in hand, some kind of backdoor equity. But forced to continue very, very wide versus the small sizing. Yep, definitely got a call here. King High just the best hand way too often on this kind of a texture against that wider range from the button. Yeah, and a lot of good turn cards here for the 7-6, a 4, a 3. And it's quite quite interesting because, of course, we saw blind on blind, very similar hand, an ace, ace, 10, and a 9-9-5. Nine, nine, Alex navigating successfully both of those hands. The club now a kind of negative card to have. You would want to sort of, I don't know, actually. But uh, 7 high. He knows Makita's going to have a lot of this king high, queen high type holdings. How frequently do we want to fight? Five fifty. Goes five fifty. And it's 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 really really tough for Makita. Again, you just feel like, well, king high got potentially a little bit stronger on this turn card. Of course, now draw, drawing dead to the five x. What properties do we want with our king? Bring king jack. Maybe we would have raised king nine, king eight. Ace highs, but flushes just forced to let it go. Alex Kulev getting it done. We saw him get it done on that ace, ace, ten, ten board with just six high. Getting it done here with seven high. Forcing Makita off the best hand. Taking advantage. Of having slightly the stronger range when, or the more polarized range when Makita just check calls on that board. Alex just managing his stack. 30 big blinds to 43. Ireland's finest. You know, one one thing I'll just re-emphasize. You know, not Alex. I don't know whether he's been on the stage in the live arena too too often. Not seemed at all overwhelmed by the situation, by the lights. You know, obviously, technically. We know his game is going to be very, very strong. Um, just because he will have played these stakes and for, for, for big, big money online and against the best in the world before. But still 40. doing it in the live 480,000. Here, ISOing with, for 4X with the pocket fours out of position. Bad Ziakowski with some kind of king. Some kind of king indeed. I think um, you think we're a little bit too deep just to ship the fours pre Sam. Are we just a little bit, a little bit on the deeper side to just have the pure rip with these smaller pairs? A little yeah, bit too risky. Yeah, you'd rather see a, a raise and, and you can shove over the raise. You can't, can't. I don't think we can just open. Risk or reward is is not good enough. Yep. Basically. Yep, I would agree. I think once we get shallower, of course, a lot of these smaller pairs do play better just as the ship. But we are going to a flop here. And this is the difficulty, <laughs> this is sort of the, you know, I sound like an amateur here, but I think it's the same even for professionals, the sort of nightmare scenario. I've done this to, <laughs> I sewed Makita's limps before myself uh, from like a small blind or something, and you get this board very hard to navigate, particularly with the pocket force. I mean, don't get me wrong, Alex will have some board coverage here. And, uh, you know, a 10 would be very strong, but three overcards is going to happen very often. No heart in hand. We'll just check. Makita. Does he have a king seven, a club, so king eight? Where he wants to start betting now. Stoic. Controlled. 
Checking back in position. And what are we really looking for <laughs> as Alex? Not <laughs> a nine of spades one wouldn't imagine. Yeah. You know, maybe a deuce, obviously a four, <laughs> ideally, would have given you some indication that maybe the fours are good, but very dynamic card, opening up flush draws, improving the equity of king jacks and king queens, and, you know, obviously a lot of those would have raised, but all 8x making a straight. One million in the middle. Yeah, I think this speaks volumes to the playability of these small pocket pairs, which is why, as we get shallower, we do see these played just as a pure all-in. But obviously, as Sam was saying, risk-reward pre-flop at this stack depth, just a little bit too high. Okay, it's very difficult. It's a very static equity, of course. Yep. Uh, don't, don't improve Eight down the streets or have barrel, barrel qualities. And now... You know, we don't know whether he has it or, or, or not, but firing out a bet. Kulev, four over cards. Will release. And not run too well so far in this heads up battle. Well, obviously, we saw a few times at the final the camaraderie between these guys. Obviously, play a lot, a lot of respect between them, but quite silent, quite quiet, getting on with business, um, you know, waiting patiently for the next hand, want, not wanting to expend any mental energy on quips or banter, you know, needing all the sort of computer power to be focused on the combinatorics, on the hand selection, on the stack depth. So many moving parts to each and every hand at the top level of poker. We just saw, once again, guys, if you've joined us, we have had a deal. Kulev now guaranteed 993,213 euros. Makita guaranteed just over 1 million euros. They're playing for 43,074 euros. Makita getting the guns out. One of the producers requested. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Giving us a little, wow. What? Wow. We got a little time in the gym. Love that. We got a little sum for everybody here on the European Poker Tour. Wow. I'm envious. He already had my admiration. Never didn't realize there was a six pack. <laughs> we won't, we won't, I'm not going to be vulgar. We're not going to. We're not going to linger on that. But look, look at these. Look at these. These guns. Jack right. ten of clubs. Big big hands. Yeah, big hand here in the big blind, guys. Starting this hand about 25 big blinds effective. Yeah, we can we can just shove this. I'm pretty sure. Oh, he's gonna maybe even three bet call is that is that right? No, what's, what's, he, what's he going for? Yeah, yeah does go for the three bet nine hundred sixty, yeah. and there you go. Very you quick. Get an fold. extra time bank. Yeah, so yep, yep. we do get an extra time bank. Obviously, our friend Kula is sweating that doesn't have any left there, or many left, I should say. Um, as we do see the blinds increasing. One fifty, right? Our great technical team. You know, one thing again worth mentioning is so many something very close. amazing technical staff, and uh, you know, as well as the tournament team, go into putting on these amazing wow. events. So many people working behind the scenes to get this level of production out to you guys. Big shout out to all of them who keep things flowing for us so Three seamlessly. So hand number 100, guys. You can see their blinds now. 80,160,000 with a 160,000 chip ante. That's I think this is going to be the end hand. I know it doesn't look like it with queen six. 100 <laughs> hand. My prediction is going to limp. There's going to be some kind of insane cooler. It's going to all... This is... Stay tuned, guys. We're playing 160 already. 350. Comes in for a raise. This is how the car crash begins. Yeah, it's a, it's a perfect setup. It's, it's a per perfect it's storm. A, it's the perfect storm. I got to play Jack Four Spades. I can't fold this. He's going to exploit me. I call. It's coming. Jack Six Four, Queen on the turn. You heard it here first. <laughs> you heard it here first. Yeah, mandatory defend here with the Jack Four Spades, of course. Makes the call. We're going to a flop. Here it comes. Well. Running Queens on their way. Running Queens. You heard it first. Queen of Hearts, Queen of Spades. Good flop for Kulev. Again, one of these uh, 
I mean, it's a reasonably dynamic board, but only sort of only two cards dealt often as the preflop raiser just want to put out a small bet, force them to make uncomfortable defense. Yep, nice and small. About one quarter pot to continue. And uh, Kulev, interesting situation. I think I think we want to continue through check raise the vast majority of the time. Yeah, I think check raise is probably the line you're going to find most here. But of course, these guys are going to balance that very well as well, Sam, right? You know, Four, six, a lot of players going, why would you ever check raise here? Your hand is so strong. You want him to continue. But these guys will also have the check raises you don't expect here, too, as a bluff. I mean, if Makita knew it was going to come running queens, as I predicted, <laughs> he would, of course, continue. <laughs> One unfortunate thing is no gut shot, no heart. Yeah, it's just a kind of... Even though you know you're getting forced off the best hand there sometimes by a 10-8 by a or a, a queen X with a heart, uh, it's just very hard to continue with the, with the, you know, such, again, sort of fragile equity, kind of junky hand way, way behind some of the time, as, as was the case. So we will go into the second century of hands here at the EPT Monte Carlo, Carlo final table. These guys playing for a further $40,000, uh, 40,000 euros rather, and that amazing trophy and title. Makita Badziakowski, uh, Barcelona super high roller title winner. And Alex Kulev looking, ooh. Heads up. Yes. And 22 people on the effect of A-Shack of Diamonds. You're loving this spot. Yeah, and he's coming for a raise, I think, the last two small blinds as well. One where you can sometimes race get shoved on by the the lower aces. Yeah, I think we usually see ace jack suited almost always raised in this position, and then maybe ace jack off is a combo that you might want to consider sort of limp raising versus an iso or something of that nature. Yeah, and Makita with pretty strong holding himself in the form of king nine off. There is no stakes behind, right? No. So like three, three, three point five, three point five starting. Yeah. Thank you. Pretty evenly matched hands, of course. Despite Alex having this sort of uber premium. Wow, great flop for Bajikowski here. Kulev really needs to just find an ace at this point to improve. No backdoor hearts, potentially backdoor diamonds. I mean, he's just going to have the best hand here a ton. I expect him to probably see that this board really small like we've seen. Just seems like a great spot to put in, you know, quarter pot here. Just take it down right here most of the time. Yeah, you don't want to allow six, seven of nothing to back into a straight somehow. Or, right, right. Or something to just hit a pair uh, yeah. and free roll. Yeah, there's so many turns here where your opponent, you know, just picks up a straight draw or just spikes a, spikes a pair that they think is going to be good. Of course, the defend range of the big blind here, and very, very wide heads up. I think with the nine kicker, maybe we do want to go for sort of a check raise for, for the value. Yeah. And it's just, again, you know, we're not at a stack depth where an eight matters too, too much, right? Occasion, the times we're beat, we're, we're getting taken for the lot. And could have not, you know, not excited to see this check raise. Of course, uh, Ace Jack going to be the best hand still a whole bunch of the time. But, you know, Makita saying that he's got ace high beat. And that is a complete brick on the turn. Shouldn't interact too much with the hands. Makita's going to check raise bluff. One point eight in the middle, two point seven behind 17 big blinds. And with the nine kicker, two pair, Makita elects to check. Gonna have just some gives up, give ups, right? Like let's say he has a sort of a, a, a seven five of diamonds that he elects to check raise. Gonna wave the white flag with that. Gonna decide to play the king nine as a check. Feels like if he goes bet, bet all in, might be just too much of an overplay. And Kulev will check back. Needs an ace. Oh, and wow. does find the Barry on the river. That Barry on the river 
Savage. Bajikowski's got to be aware of the fact that when he check raises King 8 8, he will get looked up by some ace combos, absolutely. Obviously, not blocking the ace of hearts here. Yeah, Kicker doesn't play. Um, and Bajikowski doesn't even go for a block back, really senses that Alex going to have something like, you know, a, a flush draw or like a queen jack high. That a queen jack high, he might just check down, uh, you know, or, yeah, it just doesn't feel good about the king. Um, and Alex going to go for value here on the river. What is his sizing? One million. One million targeting that King X. And Patsyakowski with a bluff catcher. Could Alex play a king like this? Is it ever a chop? Does he need to look up Kulev with all his kings? What properties does he want? Is the is the heart significant? Does he want a heart? Does he not want a heart? And the glasses come up, and, and we've, we've seen this in, in Barcelona. We've seen this in Monte Carlo. Makita coming alive as the cogs tur start to turn. <clears throat> Having the nine of hearts here, obviously not great, right, Sam? You'd love him to have a hand like nine, ten of hearts here where he floats with the flush drop of bricks and tries to rep the ace. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Might, might even... Check down the 10 eye. I don't know. Yeah, and, and Makita also thinking through what he knows. He does feel he's got to pay. And that's sort of a mark of, of, of what he thinks of of Alex's game. Just feels like the King 9 is is just too good a bluff catcher. Uh, that, that Alex is going to wind up on the river with a with a delayed a delayed bluff. And for that reason, has to pay. And am I right in saying that switches the chip lead? Is that what just happened? Kulev actually going into a commanding lead there. Of course, it was a raised pot, then check raised, and a very right. chunky river bet. And these guys flip flop, um, playing a pretty yeah, fast okay. blind structure. And. Makita on 22 big blinds. Of course, as we saw with the final table with, um, you know, these top level players finding creative ways to play the short stack. You know, there's there's hands which can go in, but with limping strategies, there's, there's also room for play. What are you playing? Yeah. A shift in the chip lead. Kulev now 33 blinds, Makita with 22. Alex, just Six. work out how much you have and take it off the deduct it from the uh, average stack. Come on, mate. <laughs> yep. Limping in with the 10-5 diamonds. 10-5 of diamonds, also not the craziest raise from this position. Do you see a lot of these weaker suited combinations coming in as a raise heads up at the stack depth? Check, check. We are going to a flop. Limped pot. Queen, deuce, tray. Check. I expect to probably see a bet here from Bajikowski quite often. Seems like a board you're probably just going to bet. Try and take it down right here right now. 480k in the middle. having a genuine think about whether he wants to continue here. Can't really back into a straight. No spade. A lot of not great qualities. Especially versus a range bet where they, you know, they can be betting A7 and, and, and King 7 and such like just for protection. And so forced to fold the best hands. It's just uh, the nature of these wide range spots where no, defending enough against the small bets so you don't get run over is part of the art, part of the strategy. 
So hand number 103, guys. I'm just looking at the tournament clock. Two minutes remain. This might be our last hand before the break. Of course, we are going to be playing this out to a champion. Very likely to see that in the coming levels. 20-minute break oh. coming up very shortly as we see Kulev limping the button. Pajikowski, 9-4 off. Very trashy in the big blind. Makes the check. We're going to a flop. Good flop for Kulev. A lot of aces ruled out of Makita's range. It's kind of like a like a top pair almost. Pachiakowski with the very unpromising nine four. One way to look at it is a three straight and three flush. Slightly larger sizing on the the coordinated texture with the, I don't know, actually just one big blind, the, the minimum that you can bet, actually. But uh, I guess it's third pot in actuality. And Bajikowski does continue. And so there's some, I mean, there's some interesting turn cards here. King, not really one of them. Does weaken the turn a little bit. Yeah, you can imagine some King X combinations sneaking in here once in a while. So we might see a slowdown from Kulev. Or potentially, he thinks he still wants to get value from the 8X. He still wants to get value from some weaker 10X, potentially. Yeah, I think the Queen is very significant because you can yep. just back Great. into the nuts. Yep. And uh, you can improve, and you've got the nut 10. So yep. it's just enough. All right, Sam. So that means we are headed to a break, guys. These guys playing for significant sums, both of them guaranteed at least a million or just shy thereof, but we are playing for that trophy. Let's take a look at our chip counts. This is the leaderboard as it stands. Alex Kulev now 28 big blinds, 5.7 million. Makita 3.4 and 17 big blinds. We are playing all the way down to, to winner today, guys. Stick around, we're going on a very short break. Join us again, 20 minutes time, Poker Stars European Poker Tour, presented by Monte Carlo Casino, back in a bit. Five handed now at the super high roller final table. Ooh, you have more now. I have 20 bigs. I it 20 bigs? Mm -hmm. I think so. Jason may just stuff it home here, small to big. All in. He shoves on Ultigar. Snap call. Call. Max does call. And <sighs> Jason is dominated. Just like America in the World Cup. He's out kicked too, I just realized that. Boom. Uh, sorry, Jason. Siva and Watson among the high rollers watching from the rail. So far, so good for Ultigar. Well, he's doing better than America. They're usually out in the first round. Just a 10% chance that Mercia hits a three on the turn or river, down to 5% with one card to come. Yeah, it's not looking good. Looking great for Altergat, though. He's home and dry. Unlucky spot for Jason, but shoving any ace there is standard for an aggro player into a short stack. Well, Mercia and Altergat are now almost even after that double up for the Austrian. But Mercia does still have the chip lead. And I'm here preparing for months. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't going to play either. Yeah? Did you decide the same day? The night before I decided to I'm sell. I'm the only one who knew I was going to play this I don't thing. even know if I was going to play Monte Carlo. You guys need to start planning ahead. No, that's for suckers. <laughs> Gotta live off the rush. We're sweating with Sorrel on this hand. We'll only see his hole cards. He raises his button with 8-7. Altergott in the big blind. Altergott defending here is like getting a runaround from a cabbie. Standard. He calls. Let's see what the flop brings. 
Jack 9-9. So Sorrell has a gut shot. Altagot playing in flow. Checks to the Razor. We can continue here, but if we meet much resistance, I don't know how many more chips I want us to commit. The continuation bet is 140,000. Altagot is calling. Yeah, I'm ready to be done with this hand. Well, let's see what comes on the turn. It's a six. So Sorrell is now up and down. I will admit that sometimes it does take two barrels to get something like this done. We're going to get floated a lot on the flop with nothing. Also got his check to second time. Looks like Sorrell will bet a second time. Sorrell's an aggressive player, and that's going to win us this pot a lot. And this is a big bet. 465,000. But Altagot is not folding. I am really, 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 really ready to be done with this hand. Altagot calls again. We go to the river with 1.6 million in the middle. It's a six on the river. Sorel is now playing the board. I am 100% certain we can only win this hand with a bluff, and I'm only 4% certain that a bluff will work. Sorel. Booby, give it up. He's counting out a bet. And thinks better of it. He checks behind. Altagot shows King Nine for a full house. Wow. God, I play good. I guess it could have been worse. <laughs> Think he was going to call you? <laughs> well, maybe if I move all in, I could rub the jacks. <laughs> Yeah, if you go all in, I, I totally, I totally think about it. I was gonna bet, and then I saw like a little twinkle in your eye. Oh, just, really? I just stopped myself. Oh, yeah. Don't lie to me. You have twinkle tells. You're not good in it. Well, right now we're gonna flip reverse it and sweat with Max as he and Sorel go to the flop once again. <laughs> Round two, ding, ding, ding. Yeah, it does kind of seem like they want to get sweaty together. Who's gonna deliver the knockout blow? Altigot defended his big blind against Sorel's button open. It's a 10-4 deuce flop. Bottom pair for Altagot. He checks to Mitzi. I don't hate this flop. It's a world of possibilities until the turn is a non-heart, non-low card. Sorel continues for 120,000. Sorel's going to have to continue with most everything, including all of his airs, so we could be good, and we've got backdoors. Altagot calls. And there is one of those backdoor draws. The nut flush draw for Altagot. He checks a second time. Yes! We have a sweat. Mitzi. He's betting again by the looks of things. Yeah, 350,000. Again, we could have the best hand. And if a heart hits, we'll almost definitely have the best hand. What I'm saying here is call. He does call. 1.4 million in the middle, and the river is a brick. No! Sorry. Probably shouldn't have reacted like that. <clears throat> Altagot checks a third time. We could still have the best hand. Just check, but please. Uh, that is near enough a pot size bet. 910,000. Oh, that's so much. Honestly, I think Sorrell's going to turn up with a bluff here a lot. All the flop draws miss. He was raising for the button. However, unfortunately, I think some of Sorrell's bluffs are going to be beating us. We can call if we're feeling saucy, but I'm not going to lie. I'm not a very saucy player. Not today, my good man. I'm not feeling saucy. <laughs> and Mitzi was bluffing. Oh, they got us. That's why I said we should call. <laughs> <laughs> not as much as you, bro. Nervous laughter is not the same as laughter. Believe me. I know. Under the gun race from Altagot with ace-eight. Pocket nines for Timothy Adams. See you at the river. Come on. He shoves for just 10 big blinds. How much is it? 810. I call. Altagot calls. Adams in a pretty good spot. This isn't even a race. Altagot with just one over card. You guys want me to stay in? Or? Awkward silence alert. <laughs> 774. Good flop for nines, no ace, low likelihood of counterfeit, barely a straight draw, and whoops, I guess he still had the ace draw. Yeah, now Adams needs to hit a nine to survive. 
And he doesn't. Uh, good game. All right, ladies, don't tune out just yet. There's still yeah. Max Altergott. He's like a poker playing River Phoenix. Mitzi and Mercia in the blinds. Altergott on the button, first to speak. He's got pocket jacks. Incredibly strong hand, three handed. He raises to 200,000. Sorrell has king queen. Hold and he shoves. Here we go. Call. Also got calls, and we're off to the races again. I had a jack. That's good news for me. How do you wake up with a hand there? Whoops. Mitzi needs to hit to survive. It's a low flop. I got a diamond. If running diamonds hit, Mitzi's queen eye flush would be best. The turn is the three of spades, taking away any backdoor possibilities. Mitzi needs to hit a king or a queen. He's got six outs. Gonna need a pair. It's a full house for Altergaard. Look, guys. Mitzi exits in third for 679,000 euros. Nice hand. All right, play great, buddy. Give me the hug. All right, good game, buddy. Altergaard's got queens. He raises. Mercia looks down at King Seven of Diamonds. Jason, a big dog, and it doesn't look like he's folding. Well, they say attack is the best form of defense, but his timing's a little bit off here. It's a three bet to just over half a million. Ill-timed at best. And Altergaard responds with a four bet. One million straight. Max has given Jason a really good price, better than three to one. Jason calls. His immediate odds were good, but his implied odds aren't great. Jason flops, bottom pair. So he's probably committed to calling at least one bet here, but he can't be very enthused about this flop. He checks to the pre-flop aggressor. Altergott continues for 700,000. Jason, with 25% equity, Calls. Tough to fold a pair heads up. 3.4 million in the middle. The turn card is a diamond. Jason's equity increases as he picks up the flush draw. So he can't really fold here either. Maybe if Max makes a huge bet. Mercia checks a second time. Altergott with an overpair to the board. Will bet again. 1.21 million. This bet is big. And the stacks aren't really deep enough to just call this off on a whim. How much you have behind? They're on three. I think it's very unlikely Jason just calls. Fold or shove? On. He shoves! Jason knows he's gonna get a fold here a lot, and in general is gonna have a lot of equity against most hands. He is repping huge. Call on. Altergott calls all in. He is currently ahead with Queens, but Mercia can win the title right here with a king, seven, or diamond on the river. 14 outs for Jason Mercia is more like 25 outs. Science. The river card. It's a brick. Queens holds. Altergott gets a massive double up, becomes monster chip leader, and Jason Mercia is crippled. His stack has been absolutely decimated. We like to say anything can happen, but it'll be tough to come back from this one. 280 left. Not even three big blinds. Jason is in big, big trouble. He's gonna need to double up about five times to get back to even with Max. And remember before when I said Jason was gonna be the favorite heads up? I changed my mind. Mercia was the favorite coming into this final table. He was one card away from that EPT triple crown. You'd be foolish to bet against this guy right now. He's on the button in the small blind. I assume we're playing this hand face up. He falls. Two seven. I don't blame him. Take my chances next next time. When will it end? And on the next hand, Jason will be in the big blind, which accounts for half of his remaining stack. Alter guts already raised blind to put Jason all in. I'm not folding. Yeah. 
I'm one. not I'm not falling to <laughs> Oh you put it in? Yeah sure. Okay. Two twenty. Two twenty? Two ten, sorry. So Jason Mercy are all in before any cards have been dealt. Can you beat it? No. Not yet. You have to beat it first. I beat it. 10-6. Ten, 10-6 six. Ten, six of diamonds, the hand for Mercia. Jack-9, the hand for Altergaard. All uphill from here. Six on the flop. And it begins. <laughs> Don't call it a comeback. OK, I won't. But Jason is a 75% favorite to double up. The turn card is a seven. Max picks up four more outs. Interesting. Altergott looking for a jack or a nine, or an eight to make a straight. The river card is an eight, and that will do it. Give you yeah, man. Played really well. Jason Mercier's EPT Triple Crown hopes are dashed. Altergott is the super high roller champ, and he wins the max, more than 1.7 million euros. What a debut for Max Altergott. That's what they call bursting out of the poker scene. So we kick off day two of the super high roller with blinds at 3,000, 6,000 with a 1,000 ante. Alashemian first to speak. He's got queens under the gun. Oh, hi. And that's a raise to 14,000. Paul Newey has ace-king suited. First hand, and we are already headed for a collision. Newey counting out a re-raise. He three bets to 40,000. Round to Mike McDonald in the big blind, who's got kings! <laughs> OMG, this is just a sick, sick cooler. Owen. Mike shoves. And I don't think all can fold, having both these guys way covered. Shemi and five bets, enough to put Newey all in. Paul's got about 20% of his stack in the middle, and I don't think he's supposed to fold this. Offsuit, there's an argument. Suited, I think he's got to try to triple up here. He calls all in. Paul's not the most experienced player at the table, but he's got the bankroll to play just as fearlessly as the rest of them. That's exactly what I thought was going to happen. Yeah. Got the ace. Mm. Ace going to come, I guess. I definitely deserve to lose one of these eventually this year. Mike's having a pretty good year. You owe me an ace from the last, from the PCI. <laughs> Paul bubbled that tournament. Awkward. A three-way coup to start the day, and kings are holding on that flop. Could have spied, though. Knew he's the only one who even flopped a backdoor. The turn card is a nine. Knew he's looking for an ace on the river. Shemian needs a queen. It's a ten. A triple up for Timex, and Paul Newey is out. Oh, guys. The ace didn't come. We saw. I'm getting Paul. Aw, oh, Paul Newey. He always loses with grace. He's a class act, this guy. Ah, uh, can't fault. Action has been folded to Shemian in the small blind. He has aces. See, now this will probably be standard. Ola just keeps picking up big hand after big hand. He's had more big hands than the Foo Fighters Everlong video. He's setting a trap with this one. He just calls, and Jason Mercy has ace king in the big blind. That's not going to be good for business. That's not going to be good for anybody. Except probably Ola Shemian. Mercia responds to the limp by raising. A total of 26,000. How many clicks does it take to get to the center of a cold deck pot? A one. A two. And this is a three bet to 78,000. A three. Jason Mercier. Four bets to 168,000. A four. All in. Shemi and five bet shoves. Five, five clicks. And Mercier calls. Just a very unfortunate spot for Jason. Merce dog is a huge dog. <sighs> and he knows it. That wasn't a sigh, that was a sad bark. They're counting it out for me. Hmm? They're counting it out for me. Some folks think that's lucky. Oh, Not much hope for Mercier on that flop. 
You have more, right? A little more. Not much. Jason likes to be drawing dead on the turn. Sure enough. Okay, good luck. Good luck, guys. Mercia is eliminated, and Ola Shemin will move up over the 1.1 million mark. How much was it there? 561. Oh, yeah, it could be really cool. close. Always sad to see the Merce dog go, although not as sad as Marley and me. Six set up. Welcome back to Monaco and the Pokestars EPT presented by Monte Carlo Casino where we continue our cards up coverage of the final table of the 100k super high roller where they are heads up and a deal has been agreed. Alex Kulev has locked up 993k. Mikiti Bodjakovsky is guaranteed just over a million. They're playing for 43 grand plus the trophy. Kulev has the chip advantage right now at the 100,000, 200,000 blind level with a 200k big blind ante. I'm James Hartigan alongside Sam Grafton. Hello, guys and girls. Have you enjoyed what you've seen so far, Samuel? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Of course, some of the top, top poker talents in the world, bunch of nice guys, and now we're battling it out for the title and the last bit of money. And the narrative of this final table has been, it's been quite shallow. It continues to be shallow, but Kulev with near a two to one chip advantage right now. But of course, that doesn't mean victory is guaranteed. One double up, the situation's reversed. Yeah, exactly. And of course we have the big blind ante. So that means there's just as much on offer at the table, each and every hand, as if we were full ring, eight-handed or seven-handed, like we started the day. So the chips are gonna get in the middle at some point, that's for sure. So this is the first hand of level number 24. And those like are the really deal numbers about. that were agreed yeah. when they got heads up. Bodzikovsky um, got a little bit more out of the deal, but Kulev will be the biggest How winner if he yeah. takes it down because there's still 43,074 like right euros up for grabs, plus the trophy so and title as we hit hand number 104 yeah. of the final table. And you're playing yeah, like and <laughs> Take a drink. Alex Kulev asks for someone's chip down. It's like there's only two stacks. <laughs> Take your stack from the total number of chips in play, Alex. But, um, yeah, and, and actually it's quite fitting these two guys are heads up. Makita been the chip leader from very early on in the tournament. Actually, Alex took the chip lead, I think, in our very first hand, and then Makita took it right back off him in the next hand. These guys have been one and two. Uh, Alex... Na navigated very successfully, um, you know, in a very difficult spot, having the chip leader to act directly after him, fought very hard. Makita pushing the action each oh. and every hand, seemingly with a combination of raises and shoves. Completely understandable that these two would get heads up. And of course, James, Makita started with a, a decent size chip advantage after yeah. Alex, which through a combination of good play and a bit of card distribution, Alex has chipped away at and has the comfortable chip lead. That ace-jack hand, ace on the river, uh, allowing him to value bet and get called by worse by Makita. Kula <laughs> with ace-10 of diamonds on the button. Bodzikowski, the effective stack with 14 bigs behind. And we play a lot of limps and jams here. Um, 400. Does come in for a sizable, uh, for a min raise. Bodzikowski. Obviously. Oh. Ace Jack, it's a domination situation. And this is what we talked about. The prospect of the reversal. Bodzikowski doubling up through Kulev. Yeah, unbelievably strong holding. Very unfortunate situation for Alex Kulev. Snap call here oh. from Alex. Ace yeah. 10. Wow. The all in and the call, and this could change the dynamic once again. If Ace Jack holds, Bozyakovsky will be the chip leader, and Kulev will have a 14 big blind stack. Uh, on the other hand, if Diamonds come in or Kulev outdraws Makita, we will have. Hmm? You couldn't have Days do so. Alex bemoaning his luck. A little Let's bit of a smirk. First. Bodzikovsky, a 64% favorite as we go to the flop. That flop, ace, five, three. So a few opportunities. Bodzikovsky now a four to one favorite to win.
return card is the three of spades. I'll take it. A king, a queen to chop, a ten, a three. River card is a 10, Whoa. and that will do it. Domination yeah. rotation, river style, and that will see Alex Kulev take down the super high roller title here in Monaco. Mikita Bodzikakovsky is the runner up for a seven figure score, just over a million euros. But Alex Kulev from Bulgaria gets the 993K that they locked up in the heads up deal, well plus the additional 43K, yeah. yeah. plus it's he will get first. to lift the oh, yeah, trophy. Yeah, we will add him to the yeah, list, Sam, of champion. Super High Roller champions. Yeah, a very worthy champion, one of the outstanding online players of his generation, now crowned a Super hey, High Roller champion. I know he's going to be over the moon, a very worthy winner. And this is just the beginning for Alex Kulev in the high roller scene, sure. I believe. Yeah, it's a very accomplished player online, plays as Future of Me on Stars. Has started putting up some live results recently, none bigger than this super high roller win here at EPT Monte Carlo. So the sums being confirmed, what they will cash out for, the official payouts. But crucially, there can only be one winner and that champion no is Alex Kulev. So let's recap what happened at the final table of this 100K Super High Roller. Took over an hour for the bubble to burst. It was Santos Sivana who went out in seventh place, losing a race against Adrian Mateos, the last player to leave with no cash. Orban Kisakoglu, next man out, bested by Mikiti Bodjakovsky, cashed for 251K. Adrian Mateos, the defending Super High Roller champ, then eliminated by Ben Heath. A fifth place finish in 2023. Artem Arterosian tried the stand up to gain extra equity trick. It did not work and he was eliminated in fourth place. Good laddering from Ben Heath, by the way. Played the short stack nicely, earning himself a third place finish. When we got heads up, we saw the deal negotiations, the agreement between Kulev and Bodjakovsky, and that 10 on the river gave us our champion, Alex Kulev. So that concludes the 100K Super High Roller here at EPT Monte Carlo. Let's head down to the floor. Let's hear from our winner. He gets to speak to Joe Stapleton. Alex, like most Super High Roller final tables, this one was pretty stacked. Uh, you don't have the same level as Super High Roller live final table experience as the rest of these folks. How did you feel coming in? Underdog, favorite? Uh, I don't really want to rank it like that. It's, it was filled with players which I respect a lot, uh, but I felt comfortable. Um, I'm playing against players who I learn from, who I respect, but I, f I feel they're, that they're my peers so that I can compete with them. Fantastic. And this is uh, by our records your biggest live cash ever biggest by about 4x uh talk to me about having booking a live win uh just extremely grateful i've, I've been looking forward to doing something like this and uh, i've had few opportunities before but couldn't take it down and doing this doing it here i'm very grateful and delighted with the with the result excellent finally uh, your online handle is future of me what do you see for the future of you right uh, now in the short term, just, you know, playing the game I love, travel, see new places, uh, play with people which, you know, I find challenging. That's, that's what I see. All right, guys, let's give it up for super high roller champion Alex Kulov. So here's how it finished in the super high roller. The players who cashed, all because the Koglu, just over a quarter of a million for sixth. Adrian Mateos, 323k for fifth. Artem Arterosian, just over 400 grand for a fourth place finish. More than half a million for Ben Heath in third. The deal agreed between Bodjakovsky and Kulev. A million for the runner-up, just over that for Alex Kulev for the win. And now he gets to receive the Champions Trophy. 
Welcome to the trophy presentation for the 100,000 euro super high roller at the Poker Stars EPT presented by Monte Carlo Casino. Here on stage with me to help present is tournament director Toby Stone, associate director of live events for Poker Stars, Cedric Billow. Besting a field of 37 total entries to take the title and over 1 million euros for first place. Please give it up for Alex Kulev. <laughs> So we started things off here in Monaco with a couple of final tables. The FPS is down, the super high roller is done. That means we're going to switch our focus to the main event. Day 1B being played today. Updates and stories on that available at the PokerStars blog. And of course, live updates courtesy of our friends and colleagues at Poker News. And from tomorrow, we will be streaming the main event. Join us for day two. World famous bubble coverage will be coming your way from 12.30 Central European Summer Time. But thanks for watching the Super High Roller. And for now, from Sam Grafton, Joe Stapleton, and me, James Hartigan, it is good night from Monaco.